In this what if Ichigo is sent Akame G.A. Kill to show him the horrors of war and the value of life, Ichibai sends Ichigo to a dimension with an empire in the midst of a civil war. Will his resolve hold, or will the darkness of the empire break him? Find out in this video. Hope you guys enjoy and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel now on with the what if. It was the middle of the night, the clear sky glittered with thousands of stars with a moon that was bright and clear. A single massive castle similar to Russian aesthetics, surrounded by walls, towers both pointed and domed despite a crumbled tower on the right side, topped with jade and gold on the roofs, stood serenely protected in the center of an even larger city. This time with tall regal buildings of a more central European aesthetic, a section that was protected by even higher walls that only the castle stood higher than. Outside of those walls was a sprawling city with various canals for rivers and streets for land transports, homes and businesses, some still lit with the inhabitants awake, others dark for the peaceful rest of the night. A serene picture of the city was destroyed as three figures broke through a section of the castle, heading for the walls surrounding the city. Damn it! A young orange-haired teen cursed as he flew further away from the castle, a woman riding on ice and a man cloaked in electricity chasing after him. The teen wore a slim black robe, lined with light blue on the edges and a series of black excess going down the front to keep it together. On his arms were several bands ending in claw-like gloves. Inside those robes was a high-collared white shirt with more blue edges, and black pants. On his hip were two katana and a pentacle bracelet with a skull in the center on his wrist. He landed on the wall and was about to jump off the other side when a lightning bolt struck in front of him, revealing a man. End of the road, he growled, you will not threaten the peace here. He was a tall, middle-aged man with spiky blonde hair and blue eyes in dark gray armor. On his arms were a pair of golden gauntlets that had piston poles on the forearms that cackled with electricity. Behind the teen was a beautiful woman with long icy blue hair, light gray military apparel, a tattoo on her chest, black crosses on her cap and belt, and a huge rapier blade. Is this really a god of death? She asked, leveling her blade at him. I'm disappointed, Ichigo Kurosaki. The teen traded looks between the two foot, never looking concerned, only annoyed. His mind raced back to how he got into this situation. Exposition and flashback. It all went back to that rainy day in July, he was just a kid walking home with his mother. He thought he saw a girl by a raging river and ran to help her, only for it to be a monster known as a hollow. When that thing attacked, a pillar of light struck his mother and she lost consciousness. Ichigo's powers awakened that day and saved his mother's life, though now she was in a coma. From there, he learned his heritage as a soul reaper, a Quincy, a Hollow, and about the villains that threatened existence as he knew it, Aizen and Yawach. Desiring to live up to his name as a protector, he trained. Trained in everything he could and become as strong as he possibly could to stop his enemies. Eventually, he made his way to the Soul Society, where the Soul Reapers concentrated their power, and warned their leader, Genryosai Yamamoto of Aizen and Yawach. Aizen was a captain-turned-traitor that sought to rule all the afterlife and sacrifice any in order to do so. After a long time of consolidating their forces, Aizen waged a war with Soul Society, ending in Ichigo's victory over the traitor and absorbing his powers. Now only Yawach remained. Ichigo continued to train and master everything his masters had to teach him, but he lacked only one thing. Experience. Which brings him to a conversation with the leader of the only group outside of Yamamoto's command, the Zero Squad's Ichibe Hayasub. Ichigo, I have a proposition for you lad. The old monk said to Ichigo over the phone. Answer this, what is a soul reaper? Not thinking too much about it. Ichigo gave the answer that was drilled into his head for years. A balancer that safeguards the equilibrium of souls in existence. And can you keep to that duty? He suddenly asked, throwing Ichigo off slightly. Can you focus on that duty and not interfere? Can you be a soul reaper? Here's a test for you, remember the Valley of Screams? 
The dimensional pockets in the void between dimensions as a result of billions of souls and their energy concentrating there? Ichigo guessed, it had been a long time since he needed to have any concern for those spaces. Sometimes they form their own worlds, even become populated as an alternate, living world to the one you live in. He explained, surprising the hybrid with the knowledge that alternate realities could exist. We found one such world that is in the midst of a war. Your mission is to go there and be a soul reaper. Don't use your powers for one side or the other, do not directly interfere with their affairs, and reap the souls of the dead. Some might have potential to join the Godii, others will simply wish to pass on, but you are to not interfere. Am I going to have a Jagai? Ichigo asked, already thinking about the endless possibilities of the world he would see. Ichibe laughed kind-heartedly. No, a Jagai won't be necessary. Something else. He answered. A new set of clothes are being made to restrain your Ryatsu so these people won't disintegrate from being too close to you, and something special. A ring that will give you a physical form when worn, but will return you to spirit when off. Granted it will weaken you by some degree, but think of that as extra training. He said jovially, this sounds like it'll be more trouble than it's worth. The hybrid said dryly. Maybe Ichigo, but you lack life experience as a man, soldier, and soul reaper. What do you say? Ichigo thought about for a good while. Soul society could handle things without him and there is nothing wrong with more experience. Besides, he's fought against would-be world destroyers, murderous psychopaths, and went to hell. What could this new world possibly throw at him? Bring it on. Entering the new world. Armed and carrying the gifts of his teachers and wearing powerful seals on his being, the hybrid went through a specially made dangai leading him to the new world. The run took him hours, many uneventful hours, before reaching the end and coming to his destination. True to form, he was in the inconvenient and dangerous place to come out of. Thousands of feet up in the sky. Of course this is where I end up. Ichigo thought bitterly as he began to fall, the wind ripping at his form. Well, it's not like I'm not used to dash, he continued until he noticed his ring began to shine. Almost immediately, he felt his entire body tighten and his heart seize before feeling his strength leaving his body. Granted, it will weaken you by some degree. The words of the old monk replayed in his head. Are you kidding me? I feel like my body is made of lead, with multiple tons of weight on my hands and feet, with what seems like twenty times natural gravity. How weak am I? He thought worriedly, trying to muster up his Hirenkiaku to slow his descent. The moment he connected to the ratio of the world, he felt like throwing up. It's like the soul of this whole world is toxic. Just what the hell is happening here? He thought as his vision began to blur as vertigo set in. Fighting to keep from blacking out, he saw himself falling straight towards a majestic castle and what seemed to be hundreds of hollows appearing before fleeing just as quickly. The last thing the young soul reaper saw was the tower he slammed into. Ow wow dot. Ichigo groaned, smashing through floor after floor of the tower, until he ended at what seemed to be the lowest level. This could have had a better start. He said, pushing himself up out of the crater he was in with debris falling off his body and all around him. He shook his head in an effort to get the world to stop spinning and get his bearing. He saw many spears, swords, axes, even rifles and cannons. Did I land in a renaissance era or something? He asked before catching a new scent. Is that, gunpowder? He looked over to a barrel that was cracked open, with an oil lantern hanging above it. Then the lantern dropped. Shit. He said, just before the lantern shattered and the room exploded. Inside the throne room. Chaos reigned in the throne room, a young child on the seat of power looking scared and confused, a large rotund man with a thick white beard demanding answers, and a spiky blonde man issuing orders. The chaos began when they suddenly saw weird creatures appear throughout the castle, phasing through the wall like they were non-existent, and their unearthly howls sending chills down everyone's spines. They were there and then gone, but the people inside demanded answers. 
General Budo, do they still have nothing? The child asked, barely keeping his tears at bay. The blond man bowed to the boy and spoke, with regret coloring his voice. Still nothing my liege. For what value it holds, it doesn't seem like the revolutionary army is attacking. That's all that we have. The general said, giving the child some relief, until the fat man next to him spoke up. All that you have at your disposal and this is all you have to tell? He said rather condescendingly, palace security is supposed to be your responsibility. Not that it would have done any good. A blue-haired beauty said, marching into the room with three men dressed in black following her. They couldn't be harmed or touched. Nothing we did was effective. She reported, shocking everyone in the room. Truly generalist death. Surly you jest. The fat man said, begging for it to be a joke. But the woman shook her head. It's as if they were spirits honest. She answered, sounding bored despite the situation. Just then, the palace shook as if something hit it. What now? Honest yelled out as the child emperor tried curling into himself, hiding from the terrors attacking his home. It's death. Take a contingent and find out what that was. I'll stay here and protect his majesty. Budo ordered, with his death nodding. You lot, come with me. She ordered a group of soldiers, bearing a smirk that promised pain for whatever prey she could find. They ran out to the armory and munitions building, one of several in the castle, reaching it just in time for another explosion to bring it crumbling down. Well, there goes my fun. She thought in disappointment, not sensing any attack or opponents to fight. Start investigating. Find out what happened. She ordered, the men scrambling to obey. Seconds later, she heard the movement of stones and wood that wasn't from the soldiers digging away at the tower but from deeper underground. Show. She heard someone speak before the massive pile of debris was blasted off, revealing a young orange-haired man. Definitely one of my rougher landings. He groaned out, getting to his feet and pulling out bars that were stabbed into his body. He treated the tower collapse like he was getting out of bed, stretching and shaking as if to wake up. The teen looked up to General. Yo, my name's Ichigo Kurosaki. Where am I and who are you? Back to the throne room. Welcome Ichigo Kurosaki. The Prime Minister said jovially. After introducing himself, his death brought him to the throne room and reported exactly what she found. A teenage boy fell from the sky into the munitions tower and survived the explosion before freeing himself from the pile of debris. Everyone in the room was shocked, but Honest decided to capitalize on the chance. Welcome to the seat of power of our mighty empire that has held strong for over a thousand years. I am Prime Minister Honest, chief advisor to our great emperor. He gestured to the small child, who seemed very excited by Ichigo's presence but still held himself as regal as possible. This is our Lord Emperor Makoto, the great General Budo at the foot of the stairs, Budo nodded in acknowledgement while glaring at Ichigo as if to dare him to try anything, and you've already met Generalist Death. A pleasure. Ichigo said, giving a cheerful smile to each and every person in there, not in the least bit concerned about his safety. I'm Ichigo Kurosaki, Shinigami. He said, earning small gasps from the group. Shinigami, as in Death God? His death asked, more and more interested in the boy. I prefer Soul Reaper. Ichigo answered. I guide the souls of the dead to their afterlife. Are those what those monsters were earlier? The emperor asked, surprised that any human could become such monstrous creatures. Souls? Well, yes. Ichigo said, scratching his head in embarrassment. There are two kinds of souls, pluses and hollows pluses are the ghosts of the departed, still wholly conscious of who and what they are. Hollows are what happen when they give in to hate and despair, becoming starving beasts that live only to devour other souls. So they're dangerous creatures? Is death guessed, very intrigued by the idea. Hence your blades? They can be, 
but I've yet to encounter a foe I couldn't beat. Ichigo returned, still bearing that confident smile. Unbeknownst to the hybrid, the general's face was burning and she felt her heartbeat go faster. Why did you fall out of the sky? Budo asked, making Ichigo's mood sour in response. Urahara. The soul reaper growled with enough venom that even his death felt the need to back away, then the teen shook his head. Sorry. The reason why is because of an asshole I know. Mr. Ichigo, if I may ask, could you lend us your power? The child emperor asked, earning surprised looks from the adults that shifted into anticipation. Right now, my country is plagued by a civil war that threatens to tear it apart. I've tried to lead as best as I could, but they seem to want nothing more than the destruction of the nation. If you could help, then maybe this country might know peace much sooner. He begged, and Ichigo felt how genuine he was. This kid wanted to be a good leader for his people, but how did it get so bad? His eyes shifted to honest, and just looking at the man told him how vile and black his soul was. He didn't need the judgment of a Zampakuto to tell him this man was going to hell. I'd love to help, he said, causing the kid to brighten with a smile, but I can't. The look of heartbreak nearly crushed him. This is a matter of the world of the living. My concern is with the dead. I'm merely here in a corporeal state because I need to live here. But I can't be directly involved in the affairs of the living. He turned to leave, missing Honest telling some of the guards to intercept him. But if I can offer any advice, stop trusting that prime minister of yours and see the state of your empire for yourself. He said before walking through the gates. With Ichigo. Well, that was something. Ichigo thought as he wandered through the halls, quickly noting that he was being followed and surrounded. And now this. He sighed before stopping. Let me tell you here and now, this is a bad idea. You might want to turn back. He waited for all of one second before the group tried to attack him. The result was instantaneous as to the outside observer. Ichigo didn't move an inch but the entire group of twenty would-be assassins ended up embedded in the walls and floor around the hybrid. Almost there, still feels heavy though. He thought to himself, before smelling ozone and feeling his hair stand up. He turned to the side, just in time to dodge an electrical punch from Budo. God or not, I will allow no violence in the palace. He roared as he threw lightning fast punches at the hybrid none of which connected. They were fast and strong but they were also sloppy and undisciplined, suggesting that the man had almost no or any recent battle experience. Ichigo, having sparred with a woman that was nicknamed Flash Goddess for her speed his whole life had little trouble dodging the man. Still moving too slow. He thought again, slowly getting used to the restraints on his body. During this time Ichigo took the chance to analyze the gauntlets on the man's arms, sensing that they were the source of the electricity he was using. Those aren't ordinary gauntlets. What are they? Ichigo asked, chancing that the man was naive enough about combat to tell him. This is my Taigu, a Dramalek. He answered, Ichigo not even believing his luck. It allows me to control lightning as I see fit. So I repeat, God or not, I will allow no violence in the palace. Ichigo disappeared from his sight and Budo felt a hand on his neck. There's a difference between allowing something and actually being able to do something about it. Ichigo scolded, spying an energy gauge on the gauntlet. And from the looks of things, if you didn't have this weapon, you'd be nothing. You're lacking in battle experience. He does, but I don't. He heard a sweeter voice say before sensing a series of icicles flying at him. He let go of the general and dodged out of the way, his death marching toward him with a raised hand. I was hoping you'd start something, fighting a god of any kind sounds like fun. She said with a smile. Now this one might be some cause for concern. Ichigo thought, getting a familiar Kenpachi vibe from the icy general. Can't fight in here, too crowded. Ichigo dropped to the ground, placing his hand on the floor. Bakudo number 21, Senkienten. He quickly chanted, 
creating a massive explosion of smoke to distract the two. He then reinforced himself with his blood and he arrow and jumped through the rest of the palace, spying the wall surrounding the city district. Current time. Now here he is, his strength limited, in an unknown world, with two very powerful individuals trapping him between them, and they want to either capture or kill him. Neither of which was something he was going to allow to happen, but he needed to be careful. Lightning and ice, brute force and a creative combatant. He'd say it's like fighting Yorochi and Toshiro at the same time but he doubted either of them were as dangerous as his Shinigami allies. All the same, his head was still spinning and he hasn't felt like he was truly used to his restraints just yet. Before we do this, tell me. Ichigo started, planning out how he was going to do this fight. Are you two the strongest the Empire has to offer? I'm known as the strongest in the Empire. Isteth answered. He's known as the great general and personally protects the palace for a reason. It was then that she noticed that Ichigo's hand was glowing with a swirling yellow energy. Good. Bakudo number 4, Hainoa. Ichigo quickly said, flicking his glowing hand at his death who was ensnared in a rope of light. As he did that, Budo charged like lightning to punch Ichigo, only for the hybrid to disappear from between them. The result was him striking his death and sending her off the wall. I've got a feeling you've been out of the game for far too long. Budo felt his blood boil at the thought of a teen, god or not, humiliating him in such a manner. You little brat. He roared turning to the soul reaper and charging a ball of electrical energy. The second he shot it, Ichigo flashed next to the man and kicked him in the stomach. He was pushed back dozens of feet, feeling the air drained from his lungs, before gasping and roaring in anger again. He charged at Ichigo and began throwing punch after punch, black thunder clouds forming above the two, with Ichigo dodging and blocking every strike. You need to come up with a better strategy. Ichigo said before catching Budo's wrist and throwing him over the shoulder into one of the towers on the wall. You've seen that I match you in speed and in strength. Why do you keep using strategies that don't and will not work? Budo got up to glare at him, before smirking and making a lightning bolt crash down on the Soul Reaper. Ichigo had just a single second to look up and react. I admit, I've grown rusty during my time protecting the palace. Budo said as he made lightning continue to fall on Ichigo. Thank you for showing me this folly in my actions. I will work on that after you're dead. It was then he noticed that Ichigo did not scream one time. He was growling and a ball of yellow light was forming in his hands, the lightning concentrating there. What the dash? Hado number 63, Raikoho. Ichigo called out, firing the energy back into the sky and dispersing the clouds. Budo gaped at the man, someone that completely redirected his attacks and still stood strong. Nice try Budo but I know how to redirect lightning. The great general brought his arms together, attempting to use his trump card ability, but Ichigo flashed in front of him again and Spartan kicked him in the chest. He was sent flying again and crashed through the debris pile from earlier. Tell me, are you on the prime minister's side? He asked the man as he dug his way back out. I know what Honest is doing to this nation. Budo answered. As soon as this rebellion is over, I will kill him and his death. He promised, readying to shoot another ball of lightning, only to find a Dramalek was no longer on his arms. The gauntlets were on the ground behind Ichigo. And they know this? Ichigo guessed, Budo nodding his head while trying to think of how to retrieve his taigu. You really are an idiot aren't you? Ichigo said, picking up the gauntlets and giving them a closer examination. Tell me Budo, what is the reason behind this rebellion? Budo found no reason not to tell him. If the Shinigami was going to be neutral, maybe the god of death could offer some wisdom. Widespread corruption at the hands of the prime minister. The general answered. He controls his majesty like a puppet and does as he pleases, squeezing the life out of the empire. His death protects his rule and his corruption ensures another fight for her amusement. If that's the case, then why not work with the rebellion? 
Ichigo suggested, which enraged Budo. I serve the Empire. I will never turn against Dash. He roared before Ichigo punched him on the head. You are doing nothing. Ichigo scolded. While you stand there, feeling pride in keeping the palace safe, the empire you serve is dying from a parasite. That is worse than rebellion because you have done nothing to save your empire. Ichigo roared, making Budo think back on his inaction. At least do something to try and save it. Get that kid away from Honest, supply information to the rebels about the most corrupt officials, just stop doing nothing. The Soul Reaper pleaded, and the general felt ashamed. How much damage was the result of his own inaction? He found his taiga tossed to him, looking up to Ichigo. Put those back on and grit your teeth. The general quickly obeyed while Ichigo raised his palm to the general's head, and soon the general passed out. Inamuri, you are such a useful keto. Ichigo said before sensing that his Hainawa was finally broken. Your turn now. Ichigo said as he ran along the wall, sensing that his death was following him. That was mean of you. The icy general said after chasing Ichigo for a kilometer along the parapet of the wall until he stopped. Tying me up like that and then running off to have fun with that geezer Budo? I suppose only someone that's unfamiliar with me could be so audacious. Ichigo turned to face the woman. You truly are fascinating, Soul Reaper. Not many people can fight with Budo. I assume you have a weapon similar to his? Ichigo asked, looking back on the damage from fighting the other general. A few buildings were trashed by the lightning and the section of the wall itself seemed to be on the verge of crumbling. She's definitely a more experienced fighter, likely meaning that when we fight the damage will be a lot worse. What's more, I know that glint in her eyes. Kenpachi has the same look of battlelust. He thought as he tried to think of a way to keep the damage to a minimum. That, weapon, you speak of, is called a taigu. She answered, placing a hand over the tattoo on her chest. There are many different kinds of taigu that only go to whoever is compatible with that taigu. Budo's Adramalek can command lightning. I can control ice. To emphasize that point, she created several floating ice shards and aimed them at Ichigo. I see. Ichigo said, raising his hands. This means that there are weapons in this world similar to Zanpakuto, and every Zanpakuto was unique to their wielder. Meaning that every taigu should be a unique weapon. She fired the icicles at Ichigo, who swerved around the barrage and flashed into Estetha's guard. She merely grinned in anticipation of the fight before Ichigo shot his foot upward, which she blocked but was still sent flying upward. She winced from the throbbing in her arms from the attack, but she's never felt such elation. He's strong, stronger than anyone I've ever met. She thought as she summoned as giant pillar of ice. Hegel sprung. She called out as she threw the ice at the death god, who was waving his hands about very quickly. Suddenly, four glowing lights appeared around her. Ryubi no Jaman, Kigai no Jaman, Koko no Jaman. Hoyaku no Jaman. Ichigo chanted, surrounding her with a white gate, a black watermill, a green scale shield, and a red ring connected to an obelisk above her, all of which formed a large black box. Shurju no Simon. The Soul Reaper finished, trapping her inside. She did not growl, merely glared in annoyance, as she tried using her ice to break out. However, the barrier held despite her efforts. You're only getting out of there when I'm done. Ichigo said, floating by the cube before opening one of the gates and entering inside. If you so want a fight, I'll give you one. He said, unsheathing one of his two Zanpakuto. Shatter, Kyoka Suijetsu. The blade pulsed with energy and his death grinned in anticipation. Come then, god of death. She said, drawing her massive rapier. If I best you, will you be mine? That last one threw him off. Wait, what? He asked, looking at the girl he was certain was insane. It was merely a passing fancy at first, the idea of falling in love. She said, as if talking about weather. 
Could I fall in love? Who could I possibly love? I even began thinking of a list of qualities I would need for my lover. Powerful, fearless, came from outside the capital, you even had a nice smile. The only thing out of place is the age. She said with mild disappointment. I was hoping for someone younger than me, but I can work with an ageless deity. I'm fifteen. Ichigo blurted out, surprising us death. I may be a Shinigami, but I am a teenager in human years. As for the other requirements, I may be holding back but rest assured. If you are the Empire's strongest, none are more powerful than me. He said as his death felt an intense pressure on her very soul, and she could only grin in excitement, this strong and still holding back. She needed to make him hers. Then let's go Ichigo. She roared, raising her hand and sending a wave of ice spikes toward the man she desired. Ichigo raised his own hand and made his counter. Heido number 33, Sokatsui. He calmly cast as a massive torrent of blue flames burst from his hand, the fires matching the ice. Ye Lord! Mask of flesh and bone, flutter of wings, ye who bears the name of man truth and temperance, upon this sinless wall of dreams unleash but slightly the wrath of your claws. He said as the flames burned even hotter and fiercer, now easily overtaking his death as ice. Seeing no way to dodge, she created a thick barrier of ice and kept reinforcing it in the hopes of limiting the damage. For a reaper of souls, he has plenty of power. Hollows must really be powerful monsters. She thought with a growing smile. What I would give to hunt them. The collision of elements ended with a final burst of flame that shattered her barrier but also quickly dissipated, with Ichigo charging at her with his blade ready to cleave her in two. She brought up her rapier to cut him, or at least knock him aside, but Ichigo blocked and slid down the length of her sword while bringing his elbow to her gut. She caught it with her free hand and began to freeze him, but Ichigo quickly punched her in the throat and kneed her in the stomach. As suspected, she thought in ecstasy, only an equal would satisfy me. She slammed against the wall of the barrier and was getting ready to retaliate when she noticed Ichigo already in front of her, Ikatsu. He whispered before punching her in the gut as the barrier broke apart. This needs to end. Ichigo thought, his vision getting blurry from the strain of his seals working against him. If it wasn't for his ridiculous amount of ratio and stamina, he'd be on the receiving end of this fight. Hope you had fun as death, but I'm calling it quits for now. He called out, the ice mistress already back on her feet. You think I'll let this end? She asked, still smiling madly despite holding her ribs in pain. This is the first fight I've enjoyed in a long time, give me more Soul Reaper. Maybe later. Ichigo said, knowingly angering the woman. I'm done for today. Bye. He said before charging off toward the north. I won't let you get away. She shouted before charging after the image of the Soul Reaper, never knowing that the real one was still on the parapet of the wall. Damn, she's as crazy as Zaraki. Ichigo groaned, grabbing his head in a futile effort to keep the world from spinning. I need to get somewhere safe, need to. He stopped when he found a long raven-haired girl with red eyes in a black sleeveless dress and a blonde scantily clad woman, both looking at him in shock and amazement. And what do you two want? Illustrated Guide to Assassination In the labs of Soul Society, one man in particular was tinkering away with his latest device while thinking of what kind of things his pupil would learn and was glad he managed to condense a Rasher 3D printer down to such a size for the hybrid. Then he suddenly sneezed and felt a chill go down his spine. I think Ichigo might be mad at me. Well, I already know that the Empire is in a state of civil war. Ichigo answered, going by what he was told and what he figured out for himself. I know that the Prime Minister is likely the main culprit and the Emperor is nothing but a puppet to him. Nagenda nodded, showing him that everything he just said was pretty much the truth. I'm guessing Night Raid is a faction of the Revolutionary Army? Assassination, reconnaissance, any dirty job that needs doing to weaken the Empire. Nagenda responded. 
and I suspect you know what I'm about to ask of you, whether or not I'll join or how I manage to fight his death. He said, gambling on the possibility of enacting his plan to escape if necessary. When Nagenda nodded, Ichigo put his plan into motion. Well, in reverse order, I fought his death using this. He unsheathed his keto blade, only Akame heard him whisper, shatter. Kyoka Suijetsu. The blade pulsed in response. My blade, my Zanpakuto, was the key for that fight. It allowed me to create the illusion that let her run off after I said the fight was over. And that other sword on your hip, Akame started, is that also a Zanpakuto? It is, but that sword is strictly for fighting. He turned his attention back to Nagenda. Every Shinigami has a Zanpakuto and every Zanpakuto is unique. Some are simple weapon changes while others rival and exceed the most powerful Taigu, at least from what I've seen from his death and Budo. Ichigo thought back to some of the other Zanpakuto he's seen from his allies in the Godii. I'm familiar with ice manipulation, and the man that trained me controlled fire. He's said to have the strongest offensive might of any soul reaper, so there are other Shinigami? Nagenda asked, processing the new information while the others questioned how believable the story was. Yes, but I am the only one in the Empire. The hybrid answered before getting to the next point. And no, I will not join you. He said, making the other members either angry, sad, or disappointed by the rejection. This is your war, I will not fight it. Well, we can't let you go freely. Lubbock stated. Not when you've seen our base. Oh really? Ichigo said, suddenly behind Lubbock as he released his hypnosis on the group. His hand was around Lubbock's throat and held a blade under Nagenda's. Akame's blade. Would you like to tell me how you plan to stop me? Before anyone could react, Nagenda shouted. Nobody move. All the assassins froze in place, the general keeping them under control. I apologize for my subordinate's rudeness. I assume the emperor also asked you to join him and you said no? She asked, remaining calm despite the instant kill blade under her neck. What do you plan to do? My orders are to reap souls and not involve myself in your war. Ichigo answered, that's my only commitment here. And why are you flesh and blood instead of spirit? She asked, finding it odd that a spiritual being would be here in the flesh. Technically I'm both. I'm still driven by the need of sleep and hunger but I can't eat human food as a spirit. So you'll need a place to live? Ichigo nodded, making Nagenda smile. Then you can live here. She said, surprising everyone. I won't ask you to fight our battles or join in our assassinations, but you will have to defend the place if attacked. Sound fair? She asked, making Ichigo mull over the idea. The others remained silent, figuring that she had a good reason for this. I have one condition, he returned, are you planning to kill the emperor as well? He may just be a puppet, but the people may not be satisfied with just Honest's death. You're not killing the kid. He's just as much a victim. Ichigo returned, releasing Lubbock before walking over to Akame and handing back her sword. Ichigo, that's not up to Dash, she started before a crushing pressure brought them all to their knees. The kid lives, that's final. Ichigo repeated as proceeded to walk out of the base. Time skip, back in the capital. Days and weeks passed as Ichigo acclimated to his new life. Within a week, he carved out a training basement under Night Raid's headquarters to serve as his base. The following week was spent trying to understand Kisuk's gift, a portable lab that seemed like a simple briefcase. Ichigo had access to virtually anything he would need to research and experiment with, engineering, chemistry, biology, Kisuk even managed to create a 3D printer that relied on Rasher. Everything in that kit was powered by Rasher. Something that Ichigo had in great abundance as he powered it up and made the first thing that came to mind in the Shinigami tools section. A soul visualization device, which resulted in a brown slug-like thing with purple spots and a mummified head with an eye in the mouth. 
He tested its effectiveness with Akame and Mine when revealing a hollow he captured for the test. Mine screamed while Akame asked how it would taste, getting disappointed when told she couldn't eat it. The rest of the month and the next Ichigo spent studying the history of the Empire, the Taigu, lore books, the various danger beasts in the world, and sending the occasional spirit to the hereafter. Hollows have been steering clear of the capital, likely ever since Ichigo first appeared there, and only rarely show up. Ichigo had been disgusted by the amount of death that was in the capital, Budo was facing a lot of ridicule for his loss, that fat prime minister was sticking close to the child emperor at all times, and his death was currently gone. The only upside was that Budo was training himself to make up for his loss. The capital was waning on Ichigo's patience, always arriving to souls crying out about the injustices they suffered, the cruelty of their deaths, and the hate they all felt at their fates. It broke his heart, he wanted to strike down everyone that was doing the killing, but that would be a slippery slope. Yamamoto warned him against taking justice into his own hands, knowing that doing so was an easy path into becoming a tyrant. How can I help these people? He asked himself, begging for some kind of answer. Do some good while staying within the rules that were set out for him. He sensed an angry soul coming from within the noble district in the capital and went toward it, finding a girl with long black hair and black eyes. Her skin was a pale yellow and she was wrapped in chains, chains that wrapped around the shed on the mansion's property. A bound spirit. He noted as he got closer to her. You vile bitch. I swear you'll get yours one day, don't you dare hurt Tatsumi. She yelled out in anger at being unable to make her voice heard and sorrow that someone else she cared about was about to meet the same terrible fate she did. Tatsumi run. I'm sorry to say, but he can't hear you. No matter how loudly you scream. Ichigo said, making her turn to face the soul reaper. Her face had tear stains and the hole on her chest was close to opening. Is he a friend of yours? He asked while examining the house. Didn't Leon talk about a mission earlier? He thought while remembering a discussion about a wealthy family masquerading as a charitable family, only to torture people to death. He is. The girl admitted. We were supposed to come to the capital, find employment, help our village, but we got separated during a bandit attack along the way. Myself, Tetsumi, and our other friend Ayasu. Ayasu and I got tricked by those monsters, they tortured me until I died while drugging Ayasu. She started crying again, pointing to the shed. He's still alive in there, suffering. And now they have Tatsumi. She said before collapsing to her knees. Ichigo didn't know what to say, until he felt six very familiar presences appear. Well, looks like your friend is saved. Ichigo said, looking up as Night Raid appeared. Just sit back and watch. The assassins got to work, clearing out the building, making Tatsumi and a blonde girl named Arya, both named by the bound spirit, run out to escape the attack. Tatsumi was a young teen with brown, spiky hair, green eyes, and a penchant for short swords and Arya was apparently the one that tortured the spirit to her death. They continued to watch as Tatsumi faced off against Akame, was stopped by Leon, and shown the truth. Seo? Hey Seo! Seo! Tatsumi called out desperately, begging her to answer. Ichigo tuned them out, recognizing only a tenth of the victims inside as people he managed to get to. The rest, probably became hollows or were eaten. How many more victims were out there? How many more murderers? In that moment, Ichigo knew that he needed to step up his efforts. Only he can help the dead. Seo? Seo is that you? He heard someone say as a boy with spiky black hair, brown eyes, and a martial arts headband appeared. A chain on his chest showing that he was a soul. Ayasu. Seo called out hugging her friend. That sight brought Ichigo some comfort, then he saw Arya meet up with who he guessed were her parents. Hey, stay here. Ichigo ordered before flashing in front of the reunited family. Time to go to hell. He said coldly, 
taking one of his zanpakuto and tapping the pommel against their foreheads in rapid succession before they could even react. The judgment of the blade made itself clear as they grasped their heads in pain, where the marks glowed a fiery red. Suddenly fire erupted from their skulls until a massive set of doors appeared, held shut by two giant skeletons. The doors opened, fire pouring forth as chains sprang out and attached themselves to the family. They all screamed helplessly as they were dragged away into the realm of eternal torment. With that done, Ichigo flashed back to the two friends. Any last requests before I send you two off? He asked, making them look to the reaper in fear. Don't worry, you two aren't going to hell. Unless you were really awful people, but I doubt that you were. He said, calming their nerves. Well, if you can, Seo started, could you help us say goodbye to Tetsumi? She asked, Ayasu nodding in agreement. Ichigo looked to the storehouse full of corpses and the chain that kept Seo bound to it. Hado number 54, Heian. Ichigo called out before throwing a purple orb of energy to the storehouse, causing it to erupt into flames that burned it away in seconds. To ensure Seo's freedom, Ichigo swung his blade and cut the chains that attached her to the storehouse. Hang on you too. Ichigo ordered, taking hold of both of them and flashing back to the night raid base. He made the trip within seconds, beating the assassins by a large margin, and stood them outside the base. Wait here. He said before dropping down to his training basement and recovering the soul visualization slug. What is that? Seo demanded, freaked out by the creepy contraption. And I thought that storehouse was freaky. Ayasu muttered. This is what will let you say your goodbyes. Ichigo answered, seeing night raids return. He took the ring that would let him exist in the living world and slipped it on, appearing out of nowhere to the assassins. Tatsumi? He called out, gaining the kid's attention. Here. He activated the projector, revealing the two souls to their friend. Illustrated Guide to Assassination Hollow Concerns Hey Ichigo! Leon called out to the hybrid while he was reading the book on every known taiga that Night Raid had. Hollows are a huge danger right? How can we stop them from attacking civilians when you're not around? Don't worry about it. Ichigo responded offhandedly. Humans aren't normally worth eating anyway. I know none of you are. Leon wasn't sure whether to be confused or offended. Why Ichigo isn't going to train Tetsumi? Hey, Mr. Ichigo. Ichigo looked up from his journal that he started writing to record possible recruits for the Blood War, and to keep track of any and all possible threats in the world. Tatsumi was running to him with a blunt practice sword. I heard you're incredibly powerful. Could you perhaps train me? Ichigo merely stared at the boy, closing his journal and standing up. Stop this. Ichigo ordered, tossing his journal into the air. The very next instant, Tatsumi was on the ground. Were you even able to follow that? He asked, Tatsumi unable to say anything and still trying to grasp what just happened. You're way too weak to be training with me kid. The book fell back into Ichigo's hand. Come back when your league's stronger than you are now, Seo. Ayasu? Tatsumi stared at his two friends in shock, swearing that he just saw their dead bodies, and the orange-haired man dressed in black that called to him. He ran out to the two, passing through as he attempted to hug his lost friends. Wah. But dash. You can see them, but you can't touch them. Ichigo explained, the boy looking at the soul reaper while on the verge of tears. This is so you can give them a proper goodbye. The two souls looked to Tatsumi with sad smiles. Sorry Tatsumi, that's all we can do. Seo told him. It's up to you now. Ayasu said, putting on a confident smile. Sorry to leave our goals to you alone but if anyone can pull it off, it's you. Seo turned to the members of Night Raid. You wanted to recruit him right? She asked, Leon stepping up to the ghost. Yeah, he's got what it takes. 
she said, thinking back to how Tatsumi handled himself earlier that night. He's going to need some training, but he's got potential. You'd better take care of him. Seo warned. Or I'll haunt you guys. Ichigo coughed loudly, letting them know that it was time to pass on. Who are you? Tatsumi asked, finally remembering the Shinigami after seeing his friends. Ichigo Kurosaki, the Empire's resident death god. Bullet said, his voice filtered through the armor. Tatsumi practically lit up at the news. A god? Then maybe dash, he started, only for Ichigo to shoot it down. They've died Tatsumi. He sternly said, taking out his Zanpakuto and tapping Seo and Ayasu on the head with the pommel. Once you've died, you do not come back to life. Not like how you're thinking. The pair said goodbye one last time as they glowed a bright white before flying away as black butterflies. You don't get second chances. But, you're a god. Tatsumi weakly argued. I may be Shinigami, but the official title and duty is Soul Reaper. Ichigo explained. I help the dead pass on. And I may be pushing the limits of what I can and can't do already. You should make your peace. He said, Tatsumi dropping to his knees as that last bit of hope of seeing his friends alive truly disappeared. He began crying, clinging to Sheil as she embraced him in a gentle hug, mourning the loss of his friends and the cruel reality that the Death God made clear. Time skip, the capital. It's been three days since Tatsumi was brought in by Night Raid, two for him to recover from his loss and the last he spent talking to the members of the assassination group. He also badgered Ichigo about the afterlife and asking questions that Ichigo just did not have the answers to, especially since he knew nothing about the dimension's religion. The kid made a point to camp out in Ichigo's personal room beneath the base to talk to the Soul Reaper. Ichigo eventually learned to find comfortable roofs to sleep on, expecting to spend days in the capital just to escape the kid. More than that, he spent his time helping every soul he could find to help pass on. It never ends. Ichigo sighed, performing hundreds of Kanso on so many dead. Dead with anger and hate for the corrupt and sadistic of the Empire. Even the small percent he could help find closure paled in comparison to the numbers he forced to pass on, the ones that demanded vengeance or justice. On the hollow side, dozens kept appearing from souls he couldn't reach before the transformation and ended up slaying without mercy. At times, he wondered if he should forego any sense of niceties and just conso every soul as fast as he could. Before Ichigo realized it, he was walking on the palace grounds. Been a while since I was here. He said to himself as guards walked around. No one noticed the Shinigami, he was in his spirit form and thus invisible to those without sufficient spirit energy. Might as well see what's going on here. Maybe this might help take my mind off things. Willing to bet that fat ass is still hovering over the kid. He said as he phased through the walls. Much to his disappointment, he was right. Honest was still hovering over Makoto's side, smiling as the kid sentenced a man to imprisonment and congratulating him. But for the briefest instant, he thought he saw some small measure of doubt in the kid's eyes. Nothing is going to change unless that kid gets some independence. Ichigo thought as the prime minister guided him out of the room, discussing lunch plans. Ichigo's hand twitched, imagining just how easy it would be for him to kill that fat bastard, but he forcibly stayed his hand. That was not his decision to make, who lives, and who dies. Not even where he sent people was entirely his choice. He released a sigh of frustration before sending out a pesquisa pulse. He sensed the taigu in the vault and on their users, an incredible presence under the palace, a man with thunder in his soul on the training field, and found out how strong Honest was. That last one surprised him. While surprising, I doubt it's anything to worry about. He thought as he began walking to the training field. I should probably warn those night raid guys about him. I may not be fighting for them, but that doesn't mean I can't offer any advice. Now, why can't I sense his death? He wondered as he reached the training field, 
where he found Budo sparring with what he assumed to be members of the royal guard. I said, come at me with the intent to kill me. He roared as he sent a man flying with a punch, tossing around his sparring partners with some small effort. Ichigo reached out and manifested spirit ribbons, grabbing onto Budo's and putting the general on alert. That's enough for today. All of you get some rest. He ordered, something many of the guards were relieved to hear as they left. Soon, the only people were Budo and Ichigo. Are you there, Soul Reaper? He asked as Ichigo put on his Jigai ring, as he took to calling it. I see you taking some of my advice to heart. Ichigo said as he manifested into a physical form. Budo didn't say anything, but looked to a window above Ichigo and giving a silent warning. The hybrid nodded and disappeared again, only to reappear where Budo indicated and found a soldier looking confused. Ichigo brought out a memory modifier and clicked it in front of the man, who passed out and began talking about Budo seeing his wife. It'll do. He thought before flashing back down to Budo. Honest has his agent spying on me after you bested me. The general informed the Soul Reaper. He has his paid drones watching me while he hovers over the Emperor like a damned hawk. I would be doing something, but I've been unable to do anything. The only time he leaves the Emperor's side is when the Emperor is too occupied with something other than state affairs, like when he's bathing or sleeping or just being a child. Budo growled, frustrated with his lack of ability to do anything with the current situation. How severe is the watch? Ichigo asked, scanning the area around them for any more possible spies. Is it just one at a time or completely random? Budo shook his head. I'm under constant watch, he answered, now was just one of the few lucky times I only had one person watching me. He looked the soul reaper in the eye. I know I probably shouldn't ask this of you, but Honest is looking for any reason to have me dismissed and executed. If you can, can you take the Emperor and show him the state of the Empire? Ichigo thought for a moment, debating whether or not he could or if that was in violation of his duties. One idea did pop into his head though, he just needed to make the right tool for the job. I'll consider it. He said as he got ready to leave before realizing something was off. By the way, I can't sense his death. What's going on with her? You can sense people? Budo asked, surprised for a second before scoffing. Of course you can. She was dispatched to subjugate the northern tribes. She hopes to find you there since she last saw you heading north. She'll be disappointed then. I never left the capital. Ichigo informed him. There's so much death here already, I'd need a whole squad to cover all the souls here. Besides, I'm not getting involved in the war. Then can you stop a massacre? Budo suddenly asked, surprising Ichigo. Is death loves battle, lives to fight, nothing brings her more joy than the suffering of her enemies. After crushing an army, she'll let her soldiers pillage and rape to their heart's content while she makes any survivors watch just on the chance that they'll grow stronger and challenge her again. Ichigo was shocked, even Unohana at her worst wasn't this bloodthirsty in her days as the first Kenpachi. She was going to need more than Ichigo's Kenpachi treatment, she needed to be humbled. The question of could and should didn't come to the Soul Reaper's mind, he was going to stop her from attacking civilians. We'll have to find out. See you in a few days. Ichigo said as he removed his ring and traveled back to the night raid base. Night raid perimeter. Here we go, hopefully Tatsumi will lay off and, hmm. Ichigo said, flashing back to the forest around night raid's base and feeling more presences in the area. Let's see. Shiel, Akame, Mine, Bullet, Lubbock, Leon, Tatsumi, Nagenda's back, and another eight people in the forest. I'm fairly certain they weren't invited to join Night Raid. He stretched his body, bones popping all over, as he got ready. Time to earn my keep. He said before disappearing in a flash. The first stop was by the river, finding three of the people. 
They were dark-skinned and seemed to dress similar to African tribesmen back on earth, all were on guard like they knew they were in enemy territory. Ichigo was standing high above, on solid racer, out of their range of awareness. Soon the group began to look around, as if they were seeing things, but collapsing onto the ground. Hakufuku, you are such a useful spell. The hybrid said before tossing down a single tendril of orange and yellow energy from a horn spell, tying up the scouts and hoisting them up to his level. Now let's move on to the next. He flashed to a new location, deeper into the forest, with another scout running directly into him. He fell as Ichigo forced himself to stay upright, immediately throwing the horn tied group into the scout and making him join the bundle. That's four. Ichigo counted off, while another scout appeared behind him with the intent to cut his head off. Make that five. He said, instantly grabbing the scout's ankle and throwing him into the bundle. Who are you? One of the bigger guys demanded, before Ichigo held a hand up and his mind went blank. Best hurry. The hybrid said, sensing that Night Ray just found out that they were being invaded. He grabbed the bundle and flashed to a new location, a clearing in the forest with another scout looking to be on the retreat. Tossing aside subtlety, Ichigo threw the Kido bundle into the scout and tying him into it as well. Two more. He said, looking to his right and finding a woman about to enter a cave. This is gonna be rough. Ichigo summoned up his bow, took aim, and fired. The spirit bolt pierced through trees, rocks and shot her leg off at the knee. Sorry about that. He muttered, trying to avoid killing. He agreed to protect the hideout, but he never said he'd kill for them. He knew he'd reap the souls anyway but he wanted to avoid killing them himself, killing was not something he wanted to make a habit out of. That didn't stop his reflexes from striking as hard as he could when he felt someone pop up from behind him, courtesy of Yamamoto's new training regime of having Zaraki attack the hybrid at any time. A sickening crack rang out as Ichigo's fist hit the guy's head, twisting it to an unsightly angle and killing the man instantly. Ichigo sighed in disappointment, not the first time he's killed intentionally or accidentally, and it likely won't be the last with the vast difference in strength and power between him and everyone else. Well, guess I made the right call making that deal with you. Nagenda said, entering the clearing with most of Night Raid, lit cigarette in hand. Lubbock was apparently taking care of that woman Ichigo shot. Lubbock thought his wire signal was going haywire for a bit. She said with a slight chuckle, without any prompting, she'll walked up to the scouts tied up in the horn keto and cleaved them all in half with her massive pair of scissors. And they were mostly alive. Mine said in a haughty arrogant tone. What kind of guard dog are Dash? Ichigo glared at her, looking her dead in the eyes, and she stopped breathing as an invisible weight came crashing down on her. The deal is that I protect the base, not that I kill for you. Ichigo reminded, letting up on his riatsu and leaving mine gasping for air. Do not mistake the bargain we have. He turned away from the irritating sniper and turned back to Nagenda. Budo is under heavy watch from the Prime Minister, so if Makoto is going to see the state of the empire then I'm going to need a certain tool to help get him out of the palace and without honest interfering. Can you make this tool? The assassin boss asked, getting a nod from the Shinigami. You'll be wanting our assistance in testing it out when you're done? Another nod. How long do you think that'll take? Depends on how long it'll take me to get back. Ichigo answered. Budo also informed me that his death is in the north, looking for me, and about how she treats her victims. Most of the members of Night Raid cringed at that, knowing the stories of his death's legendary sadism. I'll be stopping that from happening. The Soul Reaper informed, performing his conso on the scout souls as soon as they realized they were dead. Are you sure you can do that? Nagenda asked, remembering the rules Ichigo set out for them. Doesn't this mean that you're picking a side, that you're getting involved? Maybe. For now, I see it as picking my side which implores me to protect the civilians. He returned. Besides, 
I doubt your trip to your superiors didn't mention me in the slightest. Did it? Nagenda took a drag from her cigarette. They insist I try to either convince you to join us, or find a way to kill you. She answered, earning surprise from each of the assassins as they gauged their chances. You're right about your spot on the board Ichigo, you're either an invaluable asset or a threat that needs to be eliminated. This is an order I'll be ignoring since none of us are exactly suicidal. Good girl. Ichigo returned, getting ready to remove his Jigai ring. Don't get into too much trouble while I'm away. With the ring off, and his power unrestrained, the hybrid flew northward to find and fight the icy general. Capital city of the northern tribes. It was pathetically easy, at least for someone like her. Over the course of two months, she and her army made their way to the northern territory. She felt some mild nostalgia as the biting cold hit her, but she only had one goal in her mission to the north. Find and bring out the soul reaper Ichigo Kurosaki, her new obsession. When she and her army reached the fortified capital city, she showed no mercy. She destroyed the walls, froze everyone she came across, killed thousands, and very quickly crushed the hero of the north, Numa Saika. But the death god did not appear. Where is he? She thought in anger, not even bothering with her hobby of torturing the beaten prince. Did he not feel all the death here? What does it take to call him to me? Her mind raced for answers, maybe more should do it. She muttered out loud before grinning. Liver, Daidara, Nyao. Gather the rest of the northerners and put them inside a pit. Let's bury them alive. She ordered of an older man with long gray hair and a mustache, a man without pupils and long spiky blonde hair with horns and a beard, and a smaller boyish man with blonde hair and cat-like eyes and fangs. Yes, ladyest death. The three answered as they scrambled to obey. Next to the general was the bare and beaten Numa Saika, whose eyes shone a broken man. The general looked at the lean and dark-haired man, someone that was promised as a challenge for his title, but after fighting the Soul Reaper she wasn't even interested enough to be disappointed by the gap in their abilities. Now there he was, hanging on a cross with a collar on a chain leash, arms broken, and killed in spirit. She could have molded him to become a dog to lick her boots clean, but that held no appeal. All she wanted was the Soul Reaper, and hopefully all 400,000 of the remaining northerners dying might get his attention. Half an hour later, she was ready to make her sacrifice. This is your punishment for defying the Empire. She announced to the fearful and huddled masses. For daring to match our might, our power, when you are just so pathetically weak. But, fear not. For your lives may hold some use, to summon forth my beloved. My god of death. She said with a mad gleam in her eyes, such that even her own army was beginning to think she lost it. Ichigo Kurosaki. Come forth and either reap their souls or try to stop me. She called out as a giant ball of ice formed above the heads of the northerners, who were now either panicking, praying, or calmly accepting their fates as the ice descended upon them. Then the ball was engulfed in a beam of red screeching light and was disintegrated, shocking everyone into a stunned silence while his death smiled with glee. You finally decided to appear, she looked ahead to find her target on the other side of the pit, my love. To be honest, I didn't even leave the capital's region. Ichigo said, walking on air as he made his way to the general. I likely wouldn't have come if I didn't hear that you were in the north, looking for me. The general gave a hand gesture, making her whole army step back and away from the unknown figure. No one noticed Numa Saika getting some light in his eyes as hope returned. Now, you want to tell me what's going on here is death? I wanted to see you again. She answered, smiling brightly as she blushed. Seeing the man she decided to fall for bringing out the woman in her. I figured the best way to summon a death god is to be around death on a grand scale. This was the second try. She continued to smile, despite Ichigo's glare. What makes you think this pleases me? He asked, a slight pressure in the area appearing and growing little by little. 
I didn't think it would, I just wanted to see you again. She answered, unaffected but noticing the pressure. But why should you care anyway? You said it yourself that you weren't going to fight on behalf of the Empire or its enemies. You weren't going to involve yourself in a war. There's a difference between a war and a massacrous death. Ichigo returned. A war, no matter how one-sided, implies that there was fighting between the two. A massacre is the slaughter of those that can't fight or defend themselves. He grabbed onto one of his blades. And I'm not going to let you do as you please. Zangetsu. He called out, now holding a trench and kyber knife pair of blades and swinging them out to create a large noticeable gash in the ground. This is the line. You will not cross it. The ice general licked her lips as she unsheathed her blade. Illustrated Guide to Assassination Nagenda reports about Ichigo. And I believe Leon's report that he can and has fought on par with his death because, when threatened, he disarmed Akaim and had me and Lubbock at his mercy within an instant. The boss of Night Raid reported to her higher ups. The good news is that he claims to be neutral in this war, so we probably don't have to worry about fighting him. That said, he also won't be allying with us. This is most concerning. One of the leaders of the revolution said, cloaked in shadow because the author is too lazy to find an actual image of one of the leaders. But do you really believe he is a god? I believe he is godlike, but he insists on Soul Reaper. She responded. That, and he's shown to inhabit both the physical and spiritual planes. Either way, this can't be ignored. We'll look for anyone that is capable of joining Night Raid to strengthen your side. In the meantime, you find out anything you can about him. Prioritize vulnerabilities to kill him if necessary. Convince him to join if you can. Understood. Nagenda answered, smiling at the promise of new assassins to aid. Not that they do much against the Soul Reaper, but they didn't need to know that. Mine needs to learn. Is there something you want mine? Ichigo asked. The sniper in question was glaring at the Shinigami as he drank tea and read another book on the history of the Empire. How are you death? She demanded. No matter how I look at you, you're just an average teen boy. Aren't you supposed to be skeletal, grim-looking, actually scary? I doubt you could scare Dash, she shut up as Ichigo looked at her with pitch-black eyes with piercing gold pupils and every primal instinct in her body screamed at her to run. Then he blinked and his eyes returned to their normal brown. Scary enough for you? Mine said nothing as she went to change her underwear. Before we do this, answer me this is death. Ichigo demanded, holding the black blades of Zangetsu at the ready. Your mission was to subdue the northern tribes, was it not? The general nodded, readying herself for the coming fight at the slightest provocation. Their army has been crushed, is that not enough? Why continue to kill and slaughter, and don't say it was to summon me? I heard from Budo that you have a habit of torturing your victims, like a cat with her prey. His death looked the soul reaper in the eye and told him why. The strong live, the weak die. She said, stating what she felt was the most natural fact. Is that not the way of the world? Survival of the fittest? The weak will always be subjugated by the strong. She pointed with her chin to beaten Numa Saika and the group of civilians still trapped in the pit. They were weak and have no one to blame but themselves for their loss. By that reasoning, you'd have no right to complain if I defeated you. Ichigo returned, the prince keeping his eyes on the Soul Reaper. Not that I'd lose to someone so weak. His death glared at him, demanding an explanation. All I've ever heard is that you've destroyed, and I'm not impressed. The true measure of strength and power is not in what one destroys, any single person can do that, but by what they can protect and preserve because that is something only few can do. The duty of the strong is to protect and guide the weak so that they may become strong. That's why people become leaders and warriors. Is that what you, a death god, believes? She said, unable to imagine such a thing as duty in protecting the weak. 
I'm supposed to believe that. Ichigo held his blades at the ready, waiting for the clash of ice and death. Then prove it to me. She called as she charged at him, Ichigo met her with a thunderous clash. The strike caused a shock wave and gust of air strong enough to quell the winter winds and snowfall. They stayed in that blade lock for a few seconds, its death gaining an excited smirk for the rematch she was craving and Ichigo charging his rasher through his blades, making them glow with blackish red and whitish blue. You're going to regret asking me to do that. Ichigo promised before swinging his trench knife, cutting through her rapier before being pushed back by a sudden spike of ice she shot from her free hand. Ichigo grunted from the sudden stab, but never let up on the blood and he arrow that he learned to keep up at all times. The spear shattered, but she created dual blades of ice to make up for the loss of her sword before the two charged at each other again. He, he's matching the general with ease. One of the soldiers said in shock. He's on par with the strongest of the empire. No, not just that. Another said. The general is on par with a god. You're right, the general believes he's a god, but she's matching him blow for blow. With every slash and every clash, its death needed to use her power to restore her ice swords from their damage. Soon her army was chanting her name, cheering her on. Spurred on by her soldiers, she increased her speed and attack frequency before shooting an ice spire from beneath the two. She jumped away while the spire struck Ichigo's chin and uppercut him, sending the Soul Reaper skyward. The cheers of the soldiers rang out louder as he flew into the air finding a storm of ice shards and boulders aimed right at him. You're mightier than the gods themselves general. Another cried out, Numa Saika stuck between hope and hopeless, while Ichigo prepared his counter. Ye lord. Mask of blood and flesh, all creation, flutter of wings, ye who bears the name of man. On the wall of blue flame, inscribe a twin lotus. In the abyss of conflagration, wait at the far heavens. Hado No. 73, Soren Sokatsui. He said before firing a blast of fire so intense, it evaporated the ice and all the clouds. The soldiers were stunned silent, the northerners began praising their new god as he descended from the heavens. These cries fell on deaf ears as his death grinned, firing shards of ice as rapidly as she could, only to have each one shot down. She barely recognized the glowing bow in Ichigo's hand that he used to deflect her ice shards until he touched down. Got you. His death whispered as she activated her trap, freezing the ground beneath Ichigo and consuming his body instantly. I told this to the spirit of the ice danger beast whose blood I drank for my taigu, now I say it to you my beloved Shinigami, I am always the one to dominate, regardless of my enemy. She walked toward the ice-encased form of Ichigo Kurosaki, ignoring the cheers of her soldiers and the cries of her already broken enemy. God of Death! Numa Saika cried out. Please, I beg you, anything you want. My eternal soul, the lives of my children, the praise of my entire nation, anything. Just please. Save my people. He pleaded to the frozen statue, hoping that the prayer and sacrifice of his life and all else would be enough to empower the new god to defeat the invading army. His cries were met with a hard punch to his face. Shut up! One of the soldiers yelled out as he punched the prince. None are mightier than our general. The god of death himself fell before her. Now, time for a proper offering to a true goddess. He smiled savagely, cocking his gun as he and a few of his comrades marched to the edge of the pit holding the civilians. His death reached the frozen case that was meant to hold the Soul Reaper, there was just one problem. The ice prison was empty. How? When did he? She thought in shock, thinking back to her fight with him, before realizing that her soldiers were right the first time. She wasn't keeping up with the Soul Reaper, he was keeping up with her. She probably hasn't even seen how fast he really is. She turned to order her troops to hold, but they already set a single foot across Ichigo's line. The instant it landed on the ground, Ichigo reappeared in front of the man. His kyber blade raised high, 
burning with black energy, and a white mask with vertical lines over the eyes on the Soul Reaper's face. Getsuga Tensho. He called out before slamming his sword down directly on the man's head, cutting him in half. From Ichigo's blade was a wave of destruction that burned away anyone and anything caught in the blast. Isteth and her army watched as over a thousand of her troops were killed in an instant, the golden glare of Ichigo Kurosaki scanning over them in a manner familiar only to his death. An apex predator picking out its prey. He was holding back. She realized feeling a primal sense of fear she thought she had long forgotten come back at full force. Is this his real power? How strong is he? She wondered in fascination before looking to her troops again, stunned in fear. Damn you Ichigo. She cursed before making the one order she never thought she'd ever give in her military career. Full retreat. Fleeing from battle. He's done being merciful. Retreat, all of you. She yelled out, finally getting her soldiers to turn and run. She stayed behind, unleashing her full ice power on the Shinigami. Bakudo number 81, Danku. Ichigo calmly stated as the ice shattered against the barrier, unable to reach the Soul Reaper. I'm guessing you realize that I'm holding back. He said as she stopped the storm of ice shards, instead concentrating on creating a ball of ice so massive it would crush everything in the vicinity. I still am, just so you know. Now let's see how you stand up to this. Suddenly a blast of energy shot from his chest toward the general, forcing her to use all the energy she gathered to make an ice wall. The Ciro struck the ice, fracturing it, but it quickly faded as Ichigo got behind his death and slammed her head against the ice. If you're this powerful, why not kill me? She demanded, immediately refocusing her energy to create an ice spear beneath the Soul Reaper. She needed to buy time, and she was less concerned with making the death god hers and was more concerned with keeping herself alive. You can't say, because you aren't involving yourself in this war. You're pretty involved if you killed so many of my men. Her challenge was rewarded by Ichigo slamming her head against the ice again. Honestly? Because I'm also scouting soldiers for my own war. He answered, unknowingly piquing the general's interest. Enemies that have threatened existence itself and are the ancient enemies of the Shinigami. A grudge of a thousand years returning to destroy existence as we know it. Isteth stopped gathering her energy for the spire and smiled excitedly, despite her position. Are there many others that are strong like you? She asked, her desire for battle and bloodshed forcing their way to the top. They are definitely stronger than you, Isteth. The Soul Reaper replied. While I have a physical form, I am severely limited in my power. The Ice General felt her blood boil in anticipation, any promise to honest becoming meaningless if Ichigo could deliver that promise of such a war. Are you planning on recruiting me? She asked, Ichigo turning her to face him before wrapping a hand around her throat. You would definitely make a good addition to our forces, the Soul Reaper admitted, but unlike my teacher. I refuse to tolerate a bloodthirsty sadist that is just as willing to turn on me as she would fight for me. Ichigo's hand sparked with electricity. So I'm going to have to break and mold you into a fitting soul reaper. Hato number 11, Suzuri Raiden. Soon, Isteth felt thousands of volts of electricity charge through her body and began to scream in agony, feeling the worst pain of her life. The cries rang out, far and wide and Ichigo ascended into the air with her, flying to her army. He suddenly stopped the Kido, leaving the sadist on the verge of passing out. You've lost, and your brutal actions to civilians will no longer be tolerated. He said, before dropping her directly above her fleeing army. Fleeing army. I can't believe it. Is this divine punishment? General were among the many confused and fearful cries as the soldiers left their leader behind to face the god of death. Only three kept their wits about them, staying focused enough to lead the army from disarray. The three beasts, Istetha's direct underlings. Former General Liver kept the army organized as they fled, Daidara did what he could to keep morale up, 
and Niao played his hypnotic music to calm down the masses. I can't believe anyone could be stronger than Ladyus Death. Niao said, taking the recorder Taigu from his lips and trying to come to terms that anything could match his master. Was that really a god? A god came down to deliver punishment? Are we next? He felt afraid for the first time in a long time, the thought of divine punishment terrifying the sadist. Quiet Niao. Daidara growled, before he and the whole army cringed upon hearing a cry of agony. They all turned to the sky, seeing two people floating high above them. The soul reaper with their beloved general in his grasp, and she was screaming in pain. None of them could believe what they were hearing or seeing, that their mighty general, the strongest of the entire empire, was at the mercy of the figure in black. Her screams finally ended as she began to fall back to the earth. Lady is death. Liver and many others cried out in concern as their mistress fell. Quick, we have to catch her. Liver ordered as the army scrambled to save their leader. Liver took his taigu, a ring that controlled water, took all of their liquid provisions, and shot them to his death with the intention of catching and slowing her descent. The rest of the military took one of the shirts of the giant among Isdetha's army and held it out to catch her. Their efforts bore fruit as Isdetha was cushioned by the water and caught in the jacket of the giant, but her body was twitching, her breathing was labored, and her heartbeat became irregular. Medic. Liver cried out as the doctor forced his way to the general. Several tense minutes and hours passed as the doctor worked and the army re-established their base. Whatever that Kurosaki fellow did, he meant to stop the general. The doctor finally announced to the key army members. There might be some trouble, since her heart was damaged from the fight, but she's likely to recover. Especially if we can get her to that stylish fellow. He might be able to repair her heart. The three beasts looked to each other as Liver took the lead. We returned to the capital. He announced. We crushed the northern army, as were our orders, we haven't failed our mission. So the army began their march back to the capital, victorious over the northern tribes but bearing the weight of defeat for their general. With Ichigo. Thank you, Shinigami. Numa Saika said, now properly clothed and having his wounds dressed. You have done what I was unable to do. Protect my people. Ichigo, with the application of Kido and Raishir manipulation, created a path to freedom for the northerners. I pledged whatever you desired of me. Now dash. Stop. I didn't do this to be praised or to get offerings. Ichigo interrupted, silencing the prince. I did it because it was the right thing to do. That would it serve to aid my plans for his death was a bonus. If you want to show me your gratitude, then take your people and lead them somewhere safe. I have little doubt that the Empire would be generous enough to leave you be and I don't know if I'll be around to stop it next time. With that, Ichigo removed his Jigai ring and faced the hundreds that were still remaining after Ichigo defeated his death. The majority passed on peacefully after he defeated the general, but many refused to move on from their attachments. I've got plenty of work to do. If you are still around and don't know of it yet, might I suggest you look into the crushing mountain. Dot. Numa Saika offered. No one has ever reached its summit because it seems to have this oppressive weight all around it that brings anything to their knees. Sometimes worse. With that the northerners began to depart, searching for a new haven to call their home. Leaving Ichigo to reap the dead and wonder what might be the source of the mountain's tale back to the capital. It took the Soul Reaper the entire day to conso the hundreds of dead from the battle with his death and her army, all of whom either cursed Ichigo for not killing his death when he had the ability to do so or damning him for harming their beloved general. His compassion was spent, sending them all to the afterlife with little care for their final wishes if all they were going to do was rage at him for his choices. He didn't even put his ring back on, staying in spirit form as he wandered about the capital trying to think. His death would indeed be an impressive ally, but her sadistic personality and bloodthirsty nature makes her too much of a risk. He said, evaluating his first choice. 
I doubt what I did was enough to change her, so I should do more work there. That said, she'd be a good fit for Zaraki's squad. Of Night Raid's members. He stopped when he saw a soul with a scarred left eye, imperial police armor, and four braided ponytails, raging about his death and clawing at his soul chain. You think this is the end? The man roared out. You little bastard. Even if it's beyond the grave, I will kill you. I own this damn city. He kept yelling before his chain ate itself and fell off, making him glow and explode. I do not have the patience for this. Ichigo sighed while the man reformed as a hollow, an eight-foot-tall red figure with an oni mask. The hollow, newly born and blindly mad, charged at the hybrid. The very instant the hollow got close, he froze. Cut in twain instantly by the soul reaper. I'm going to punish whoever made that guy go hollow. He said as the gates of hell opened for the hollow, not the first thing I wanted to get involved with when I got back. Ichigo continued to walk, going until his feet brought him to the palace yet again. Hmm, maybe if I do this I can improve Budo's situation. He thought as he walked into the palace and searched for the child emperor. He eventually found him, enjoying a rather modest meal, with Honest stuffing his face with a giant hunk of steak with a full two-layer cake for dessert. Don't you think you should cut back a bit on your dietary habits Prime Minister? The young Makoto asked, cutting into his steak. The amount you eat daily cannot be healthy. Ichigo himself walked behind the emperor and got ready to move. No need to worry about me your majesty. Honest said with a smile before picking up the cake, blocking his view of the young monarch. I take very good care of myself. I intend to live a long and happy dash. I'm taking Makoto. Bye. He suddenly heard, prompting him to move the pastry. Unfortunately, the emperor was gone. Outside the palace, Makoto was dealing with vertigo from the very sudden movements that now put him floating in the air but held safe in Ichigo's arms. You alright kid? Ichigo Kurosaki. The emperor shouted in shock. What's going on here? I'm kidnapping you. The soul reaper said very bluntly. Budo was supposed to show you the state of the capital, but that fat ass is breathing down his neck. Honest doesn't want you to see how the empire really is, but why? He asked. What's wrong with me knowing the state of the kingdom? Because then you might think for yourself. Ichigo said, the young ruler looking to the death god as he began his little trip around the capital. With this death. The icy general rode on her steed, a mighty dragon-type danger beast, as her army marched back to the capital. A sense of defeat hung over them and moral was never lower for her troops, all linked to her. She was their unbeatable general, their unbroken pillar of strength, and she was crushed by one man. A man she openly declared was a god, so many took that as the heavens themselves deciding to punish her. But the worst of it was the news from her army doctor, a man she trusted and relied on with the lives of her troops, when he told her of the damage Ichigo did to her. Even if they lied, she could feel the damaged muscle in her chest as it ached every now and then. So besting him in combat isn't an option, that much is now evident. She thought as she began to strategize a plan B he's made it clear that he has far more power than I thought, so I'll need to move with a different angle. He always says a number along with that Hado and Bakudo before casting what seems to be magic, meaning that he has many different kinds of whatever those attacks are. He's fast meaning I'll have to get faster or somehow slow him down. And he's made it clear that if I want to let my army enjoy their spoils of war, he'll. She froze before smiling, thinking she found a way to make the Soul Reaper act on her terms. At least for a little while. But first things first, she needed to deal with her heart problem. Luckily, there was a doctor in the Empire's employ that likely had just the thing for her. With Makoto. The return to the palace was quiet, Makoto having cried enough after seeing what little Ichigo had to show, was tired. The emperor saw the poor, the desperate, those that took advantage of others, a few instances of bribery, those that faced a slow public execution, 
all in the more densely populated areas of the capital city. He almost couldn't believe the soul reaper when he said that it was worse than what he already saw. Why did the prime minister keep all this from him, keep him sequestered in that palace? Because you might think for yourself. The words of the Shinigami rang in his mind as he remembered that line. Anytime he ordered an execution or imprisonment, someone was criticizing or slowing down something of the empire that Honest approved of. There were so many people starving, selling their bodies for food and drugs, and the prime minister was always eating something. Was Makoto even the actual leader, or was Ichigo right and he was a figurehead? Ichigo brought him back to his room in the palace, easily getting into the royal bedchambers, with the thunderous sound of footsteps telling the pair that the royal guard were searching frantically. What should I do? Makoto asked, thinking it'd be best to let everyone know he's fine but stopping in front of the door. I don't know who to trust anymore. You do what Honest never wanted you to, Ichigo answered, think for yourself. You've got to make your own decisions, listen to your people, and choose what you think is right for your country. However, at the same time, you should probably play along with Honest. Let him think you're still his puppet but slowly drift from his control. I'd recommend having Budo near you, he's still loyal to the Empire and your safety is his top priority. Makoto looked to the Shinigami, who gave the child an encouraging smile. I felt it in his fists. He said before disappearing, leaving Makoto alone. Okay. He said, taking a deep breath. Let's do this. He pushed the door open, getting the guard's attention as they proceeded to ensure his good condition. Take me to the great general, I have some questions for him. The guards complied as they escorted the boy to the throne room, where Honest and Budo were arguing. The palace's defense is your responsibility. How did this happen? Honest demanded, tearing into a huge chunk of meat. Budo was not intimidated, rather annoyed. Someone decided to try to take command of my forces and waste time and resources to essentially watch and force me to always look over my shoulder. He countered. Maybe if that someone would let me do my job, that person wouldn't have had the emperor taken while he was stuffing his fat face. Enough. Makoto yelled out, thinking about what a strong ruler was like and imaging that on himself. Budo, what's this about you being unable to perform your duties as head of the guard? Budo stepped forward and knelt before the emperor. Forgive me, my emperor. The lightning user started. But it's been getting a little hard to focus on my duty when I'm under constant watch myself. I can't effectively command the guards because I don't know how many are waiting to stab me in the back. He said while giving a pointed glare to Honest, who was putting on his best face for the young lord. You were brought to us, defeated by that Ichigo Kurosaki fellow. The prime minister argued. This is the palace and the emperor himself, we can't afford to have a great general that's incapable of the task of keeping either safe. Prime Minister? Are you a general? Makoto suddenly asked, surprising the two adults. Did you get your position because you are a brilliant military soldier? I believe that Budo is and has been the head of the Imperial Guard and the much relied on great general from my father's time. Budo had to force down a smirk, knowing that a certain soul reaper had worked his magic. Let the general do his job, while you focus on yours. Budo? He turned to the still kneeling general. From now on, the Imperial Guard will answer to you and I as the top authorities. I give you full permission to recruit, fire, and imprison as you see fit among your ranks. Now if the two of you will excuse me, I'm going to bed. He said, heading for his room. The moment he entered and shut the door, his hand went to his racing heart. Do not back down, think for yourself. He repeated, changing for a night of rest, hopefully. Illustrated Guide to Assassination Tatsumi Afraid The fresh and young assassin had just finished his report to the rest of Night Raid, getting stripped and searched by Akeim, Leon, and Nagenda shortly after for any wounds he might have hidden, and was feeling pretty confident with himself and his accomplishment. Then he started shivering for reasons unknown to him, 
but he was confident that it had nothing to do with the drafty air, that he was now to be trained by mine, or that Bullet was checking him out. Ichigo tired. The Soul Reaper finally returned to the night raid base, feeling drained and exhausted from the entire day of fighting, reaping, and doing his own version of the Ghost of Christmas present for the Child Emperor. He made his way inside the base, looking to claim a bed and just sleep off everything he dealt with that day. That's when Tatsumi ran up to him excitedly. Hey Ichigo. I had my first mission. This captain of the Imperial Guard that was taking bribes and sentenced innocent people to death. He said, making Ichigo's eye twitch. I bet he went to dash, he didn't even finish as Ichigo backfisted him into a wall. I'm going to bed. Was the only thing the Soul Reaper said after punching the green-eyed assassin. The Soul Reaper spent an entire day searching for any information he could on the mountain Numa Saika told him about. The information he learned in the Imperial Library is that it was the one place the First Emperor was unable to conquer, seeking the power in the mountain to create a taigu with power over gravity. A lone mountain on the fringe of the Empire with a crushing weight of gravity denying anyone to claim it, no flora or fauna anywhere on it. Some people even began worshipping the mountain as some kind of god. Well, the hybrid was also here to study. Maybe he could learn to create a new Kido using the mountain's unique properties as a base. Those thoughts changed the moment he set foot within the gravity radius. This isn't just gravity. Ichigo thought as he felt the physical weight of gravity on his being, but there was something else that was scaring off all the animals. This is Riatsu. Hollow Riatsu. It was the first time he felt hollow rasure of this magnitude since coming to this world. Well, it's been a while since I tangled with Aminos Grande. The hybrid smiled, the hollow nature within him eager for a more appropriate challenge. Releasing his own power, the oppressive weight of the mountain faded. It was not stronger than a chibe's palace in the royal realm and no riatsu less than that of a transcendent being would make the hybrid bow. Let's fish you out, Minos. In an instant, Ichigo flashed to the mountain summit and scanned for either an entrance or to pinpoint where inside the mountain the hollow was hiding. He found no clear entrance at the summit, but he did find where inside the mountain his quarry was. Encasing his fist in rasure, Ichigo shot Ballas into the heart of the mountain. One after another, digging a widening hole in the mountain until it reached his target. He stopped as the hollow began to stir, instead throwing down a keto rope. Bakudo number 4, Hainoa. He chanted, shooting down the rope and soon lassoing the Minos. The moment he felt it latch on, he pulled and pulled, forcing the hollow to the surface. It didn't take long to tear the soul from his resting place as he exploded out of the ground. Vasto Lord. Ichigo said, finally seeing the hollow as it slowly stood back up. You ruined my nap. He growled, facing Ichigo. He was lean and muscular with long, spiky, dark orange hair, tanned skin, and black fur with a skeletal tail and saber-toothed tiger skull mask. Huh. What's a soul reaper doing here? I came here to get away from boring fights. Ichigo kept his focus on the Minos, sensing that he was roughly around Stark's level already. I'm here to be a soul reaper, study the world, gather anything and anyone that might be useful. Ichigo responded, clenching his hands in anticipation for a possible fight. We are in need of soldiers and I could use some extra hands in quelling hollows and reaping souls. You in or are we going to have to get sweaty? He asked, evidently surprising the Vasto Lord. Last I've heard, you Shinigami kill first and don't ask questions. The hollow returned. Why bother recruiting hollows? War is coming, war with the Quincy. There was a nod of understanding. Soul society has undergone many changes. One of the main is that hollows made into Arankar are welcomed among our ranks. Hollows with the powers of soul reapers. Ichigo explained before the tiger could ask. Come to my side, put your power to good use. And why should I join you? He asked before looking on in shock as a horned hollow mask materialized on Ichigo's face. I am Ichigo Kurosaki, 
future captain commander of the court guard squads of Soul Society and the King of Hueco Mundo. The hybrid declared, making the Vasto Lord grin in anticipation. You can either chose to join me, or I will force your obedience like a proper hollow. If you really believe in the second option, then you should understand. The Minos flexed his claws, shining blue in the rays of the sun. I refuse to kneel before anyone weaker than me. He appeared in front of Ichigo, throwing a kick at the hybrid's head. The hybrid blocked the attack effortlessly, but he didn't see the tiger's tail coming until after it stabbed into his chest. It failed to pierce his skin, but it did knock the wind out of him. Before the Minos could retract the skeletal appendage, Ichigo grabbed hold of it and slammed him into the ground a few times before throwing him away. How do you think I became king of the hollows? Ichigo growled before flashing in front of the Minos. Using my charisma? Then the gravity became much heavier making Ichigo pause in shock as he nearly buckled under the sudden change. The hollow twisted and tried to kick Ichigo in the head again, but the hybrid blocked and caught him by the ankle. I'm used to far heavier than this. Ichigo said, raising his foot to stomp down on the hollow's face. He managed to counter with a sudden turquoise-colored Ciro fired straight from his mouth and into Ichigo's face, causing him to release his opponent's ankle. The hollow swiftly got to his feet and charged forward with a sudden punch to Ichigo's stomach, the results were different than what he expected. Gah! What are you made of? He asked, nursing his bruised knuckles before Ichigo dropped a hammer blow to the top of his head and dazed him. Ichigo then got the hollow in a headlock and fell back to slam his skull into the earth, only to start floating in the air. My control over gravity works both ways. He said before twisting and increasing the gravity to slam Ichigo's head into the ground, then quickly backed away. In all the thousands of years I've been alive, I was hoping that the king would have been able to give me a proper fight. He grinned in delight as Ichigo rose to his feet once again and disappeared from sight. Please, I haven't even broken a sweat. Ichigo said, appearing behind the Vasto Lord. Before the hollow could fully turn, Ichigo slammed a fist into the masked face of the hollow. The force of the blow fractured the hollow's mask and cratered the ground of the mountain. The Minos attempted to push himself back up, only to have another punch to his spine force him back down. Before Ichigo could continue that assault, he felt the gravity change as he began to float. The hollow managed to push himself to his hands and knees, only to feel Ichigo slam him back into the ground. Had enough? He asked, using a racer construct to push him back to the ground and crush the hollow. Sleeping must have dulled my abilities more than I thought. The Vasto Lord admitted, muffled from his face being buried in the dirt. Probably what I get for not fighting for, I can't even remember how long I've slept. Especially since you haven't even gotten past Fei's fist. Ichigo told him, stepping off his head and walking some distance away. I can sense that you're as strong as the one I appointed as the guardian of the Arankar. But you've yet to actually prove you can fight him, let alone entertain me. So, we're ending this. Ichigo turned to watch his opponent rise to his feet, stumbling as the pain caught up to him. We'll end this with one last move. Try to survive. He said, grasping Zangetsu by the sheath. Well then, if I do, the name's Merrick. Merrick Mayamori. The Vasto Lord said as a black orb appeared in his hand. He then threw it at Ichigo, who thrust the end of Zangetsu at him. The ball blew apart and Merrick lost a chunk of his left side, coughing up blood before collapsing. My Onabi still needs some work. Ichigo said, rubbing his arm from using the technique as he made his way to Merrick. Let's see, fractured ribs, damaged spine, a few cracks in the skull, Ichigo never mastered his healing Kido but physical health was one thing all of his teachers made sure he learned. Missing parts of his intestines, left lung, stomach, kidney is gone. Good thing I have that Raisher printer. He said as Merrick began healing what parts of his body could regenerate. That last move of his was like a compressed ball of gravity. Managed to curve my attack enough to avoid killing him. 
well? He suddenly said, waking up and coughing out some more blood. What do you think? Ichigo grabbed him by the back of the neck and hoisted him to eye level. I think I just kicked your ass. Ichigo then put him in another headlock and began dragging him away, and I expect you to follow my orders from now on. When you fully recover and are back to peak condition, I want a rematch. I'm not yet satisfied. Merrick managed to chuckle while trying to keep up. By your command, my king. Back at the capital. That was, odd. Ichigo said as he returned to the city. To make a long a complicated story simple, he brought Merrick to the underground base, used the Hollow's own rasher to clone a new kidney, the drain of which knocked him out. And Ichigo spent the rest of the day and most of the next studying and performing the transplant surgery on Merrick, who is now sleeping comfortably under a large pile of rocks. Thank God I know how to translate Urahara's notes now. Otherwise I'd never be able to pull off even half of the technical crap I'm doing. He mused while making his patrol, finding many more souls than usual. What the hell did I miss? The Soul Reaper asked after performing twenty Konso in half an hour, his answer coming in a cry of anguish. No. He heard someone cry, immediately flashing to the new location. He found Tetsumi and Akame with a corpse of a man whose throat was slash while his soul was grasping at his ears. He had wild blonde hair, wore a dress shirt and tie with shoulder pads, and had the usual soul chain connected to his chest. I'm dead. Why have the voices returned? Why? He begged. Now you should be wary Zank. Akame said, speaking aloud without bothering to look for a spirit she couldn't see. Now you will face the judgment of the Shinigami. Then she and Tatsumi left, the boy bowing his head in slight prayer. Zank looked around until he found Ichigo, running at the Soul Reaper before dropping to his knees. God of death, I beg you. He cried out, bowing before Ichigo, and confusing the hell out of the team. In life, I was an executioner. I thought it was the only way I could be of any service to anyone, killing the guilty for their crimes. But, I've executed so many people proclaiming their innocence, I've begun to hear them all the time. Begging me for mercy, telling me that they've done nothing wrong, over and over. I just snapped and killed anyone, did anything I could to stop them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all of them. I can't take it anymore. I'll dive into hell itself and take all of damnation's punishment. Just please silence them. He cried out, tears pouring from his eyes. Ichigo reached down and lifted the man's chin. Are you sure? He asked the murderer. Are you sure that you'll take on all of their pain to repent for your crimes? I. I just wanted the voices to stop. Zank admitted. I'll face my punishment. Just let them pass on peacefully. He begged before closing his eyes, Ichigo performing the Konso. As he did so, the voice of Yamamoto spoke in his mind. No soul ever escapes the fate of their judgment Ichigo. He heard the old man say as the mark he stamped on Zank began to glow, shifting from blue to red rapidly. It is not in their actions, but their intent that is judged. Those that act out of purely selfish desire, the pleasure of self-indulgence no matter the suffering it brings, they will suffer for eternity. But those that repent, truly repent for their crimes, there is forgiveness. The light settled on blue as Zank faded into the purifying light, tears falling down his face. They've stopped. He said before disappearing for the cycle of rebirth. Back at Night Raid's base, one day later. Feeling better? Ichigo asked Merrick, kicking the pile of rocks off of the Vasto Lord. The tiger released a long yawn as he rose to his feet. I'm not going to get any more peaceful sleep under your command, am I? He asked, some measure of regret coloring his tone. The look from his king was all the answer he needed. Understood, and yes, I'm feeling much better. He admitted. Good, then it's time we turn you into an Aaron car. Ichigo said, 
heading over to his tech station and accessing all the knowledge it had on Arankar. Now if I had the Hogyoku with me, it should be a simple matter of willing it to happen. But I don't, so we need to try something else. He typed away, analyzing all the data he had and settling on the one Arankar they knew that formed without the power of the Hogyoku. Coyote Stark. And how are we going to do this? Merrick asked, looking over Ichigo's shoulder. Do what this guy did? Stark had the unique power to separate his soul into another being. The hybrid returned. As of yet, the researchers in the R&D department are still studying it with limited answers. For now, let's try giving you Soul Reaper abilities. Ichigo stood up and unsheathed Zangetsu, immediately diving into his inner world. Ichigo's inner world. Do you think this is actually going to work? Zangetsu, a photonegative version of Ichigo, asked as Ichigo appeared in the sideways city, every surface rippling like water with every step on it. You'll be sacrificing a sword to do this. They have no personality or freedom anyway. Kyoka Suijetsu, a female version of Aizen, rose from the glass windows and took a place by Ichigo's side. It's no different than cutting a nail to this boy. Besides, how else can I create more soul reapers in Arankar? Ichigo asked of his main Zanpakuto spirit. Zangetsu sighed as a katana formed in his hands, black and white racer bleeding away and being reabsorbed into the sword spirit. It'll feel just like that time when you used Mujetsu. He warned before Ichigo left his inner world. Back outside. There it is. Ichigo grunted out, feeling a part of his soul separate from himself, while a completely blank Zanpakuto formed in his other hand. That should do it. Merrick took gentle hold of his king's shoulders as the disorientation of the act caught up to the teen. I'm fine now, Merrick. He told the Vasto Lord returning to stand tall and dignified before presenting the sword to his latest vassal. Take this blade, mix your rasher into it, let it become part of you, and evolve into an Arankar. Yes, my king. Merrick said, taking the sword into his hands and began pouring his rasher into it. Ichigo watched as the process began, strong winds blowing out as the sword began absorbing his rasher, taking his hollow form, leaving him bare of his fur and his mask reduced to the saber-tooth fangs on his cheeks. The sword itself began to change into a dual-bladed Najinata glaive. Then the pair began to glow. Come on. Work. Ichigo thought, demanding and hoping the process would result in a success. There was a bright flash, revealing that Merrick was now in a full-body cast of the same material as a hollow mask. Ichigo walked up to the statue and placed his hand upon it, feeling out the rasher. Well, guess all that's left is to let you stabilize as a new Arankar. He said, leaving the soon-to-be-evolved hollow to undergo his change, after setting up a couple of scanners and a camera. Hey, he needed data. Illustrated Guide to Assassination Leon's Failed Seduction So, is there anything special you can share with us? Leon asked, hugging the Soul Reaper from behind and purposefully rubbing her chest against him. Boss said that the higher-ups wanted us to either recruit or kill him, but getting information should be enough. He does seem like he can go wherever he wants and has made a few trips to the palace if certain intel can be believed. She thought as she continued to rub her assets against him, and getting no reaction. I mean, any information that can help us spare that young emperor you're so keen on having us let live, right? She said, moving in front and bending over to show off her cleavage. I'll let his actions speak for him Leon. Ichigo said, not even looking up from his book and the various danger beasts in the world. Also, I've seen bigger and better. He told her, and Leon felt her confidence shatter. Tatsumi's love life begins. What the hell does he mean, bigger and better? Leon yelled out, clearly drunk and rambling to the others about her failure with Ichigo. Aren't I Shexi? Well, we don't know who he spends time with. Bullet reasoned while Leon chugged another pint. It's entirely possible he's met with a love goddess or even has beautiful women's sacrifices he took as his brides. 
Who are we to question God like beings? Are you saying I'm not good enough to be his bitch? Leon demanded from her teammate. USH gay anyway, show what do you know? Well I still think you're sexy Leon. Lubbock declared without shame. Yeah, whatever, pervert. The lion girl immediately dismissed. Well. I still think you're beautiful big sis. Tatsumi admitted, looking embarrassed but happy to say it. Oh Tatsumi, your show hick sweet. She cried, hugging the boy into her boobs. Why does he get a face full of that rack? Lubbock demanded. Normally she'd be a picture of power and grace, normally she'd let her soldiers indulge in their primal wants and desires after conquering a nation or village, normally she'd present herself in that perfect standard of the strongest in the empire after returning to the capital after such a victory, and normally she'd go through the torture chambers to indulge in the screams of the weak. Things that were once normal were quickly fading ever since that soul reaper appeared. She still held herself to the same grace, as was expected of her, when she marched through the streets of the capital with her dragon and three beasts but immediately made her way to the castle to give her report. You look like shit. Budo said, being the one inside the castle walls to give the icy general her welcome. Were the northern tribes stronger than you expected? He taunted as his death chose to ignore him, electing to make her way into the throne room, where the prime minister and the emperor waited. When she finally arrived, she noticed that the emperor seemed to have a different air about him. She said nothing but continued to observe before kneeling before the monarch. Seeing the prime minister seem a bit more agitated than usual helped her conclude that Honest may be losing control of many things. Likely Ichigo was to blame, he even said that Budo told him about her sadistic nature. Welcome back generalist death. Makoto greeted, his usual tone that was ingrained in him to hold when dealing with matters of state. Your conquest of the north was excellent and will be rewarded with 10,000 gold pieces. Though, I'm somewhat concerned with the news that your army is on the march back. Care to explain? The enemy army was utterly crushed and not a single soldier was left alive. She answered. Shortly after that, the soul reaper appeared and tested my strength. There were, casualties and I did not have the military force left to keep hold of the territory. Not a lie, but not the whole truth. He knew she was effective and thorough, he didn't need to know of her sadistic tendencies. My lord, this requires action. Honest cried out. If what the general says is true, then Ichigo has broken his word on his neutrality. What's to stop him from siding with the rebels or strike at any of us? I agree with Honest. Budo spoke up. With Estetha's army cut to size, and her own condition, the military might of the empire has taken considerable damage. Honest and Estetha both glared at the military leader, but said nothing in the presence of the emperor. Her own condition? Are you badly injured general? Makoto asked, genuinely concerned for the woman. My fight with Ichigo Kurosaki has left a lasting injury that my medics insist I get looked at by one of the palace doctors. Isteth answered, tensing up after another cardiac episode before starting to wheeze from the pain. I felt that making my report was more important to the morale of the soldiers and people than to see me displaying any sort of weakness. She admitted before standing up to alleviate the pain to her damaged heart and lungs. Unacceptable. Makoto yelled out, standing from his throne. While in this time of crisis, you are expected to keep in good health generalist death. I order you to see our top doctors and get this fixed. I have need of you to deal with this night raid epidemic. Those assassins have been causing us no end of grief. Honest had a smug smirk, Budo seemed to be patiently waiting. Understood your majesty. His death said, bowing to the emperor as he sat back down. However, I've heard that this group has many Taiga users and would like to request Taiga users for my own force to combat them. Anything less than a Taigu would only result in failure in this endeavor your majesty. Budo chimed in. If anyone can handle this night raid group, it would be her. You can trust her judgment. 
Makoto seemed to ponder the words of the generals, honest gnashing his teeth silently while glaring at the lightning user. If you say so, Budo. The young emperor finally said. Honest. I'll leave the matter of gathering his death as Taigu users to you. Honest forced himself to put his gentle mask back on and was ready to say something, but never got the chance to. Budo, I request you set up your own investigative team. Try to find anything that connects the victims together and bring that information to us. The ice general was shocked, the change in the air of the palace now explained. Honest's careful control of the capital seemed to be falling apart. With Ichigo. I've been in this world for almost two months, Ichigo said aloud as he typed away at his computer and keeping his journal audio logs, and I've only just recently begun the secondary aspects of my being here, recruitment and study of the discoveries of this realm. He turned to the calcified statue of the new Arankar. First actual recruit is a Vasto Lord, turning Arankar, named Merrick Mayamori. Special abilities involve gravity manipulation, will work on training those skills and development to improve. He typed away a command on the keys and deactivated a scanner, revealing the green eye of the Taigu, spectator. Second, I've begun my full analysis into this world's ultimate weapons, Taigu. He grabbed the eye-based tool and looked deep into its emerald gaze. Forty-eight of these were in existence, with half being destroyed in a previous civil war, and the remaining 24 being used in the current civil war. The abilities of the Taigu are quite varied, some control elements, some are armor, some are support types, and a general rule in this world seems to be only a Taigu user can fight another Taigu user. I've seen eight Taigu in action, with a few proving to be useful. The Taigu, spectator, is a very dangerous one in the right hands as it pushes the power of sight to its maximum. Abilities include seeing great distances, seeing through objects, seeing into people's minds, allowing some measure of precognition, and controlling what someone sees. Aizen has displayed how dangerous such a power can be, but the power of a taigu requires compatibility. He said before putting the taigu down. I've analyzed the other taigu among the group, Night Raid, and am convinced that some can be replicated, but others require more samples to study. Maybe Taigu can be used to empower the mod souls in Project Spearhead, but require more testing. Ichigo then sensed someone entering his underground facility. The Rasher printer proves to be invaluable to my needs, easily creating anything I need so long as I can visualize it and can supply the Rasher necessary. The latest creation is a device Ulquiora revealed to me that Aizen invented, a bracelet that covers one in a shell of spirit energy that makes one invisible to anyone but the creatures that supplied the rasher to make it. In this case, only I can sense whoever wears this bracelet. It also allows for intangibility at will, making it a perfect stealth tool for this world. However, I feel more tests should be done. Ichigo said before suddenly reaching out and grabbing Lubbock by the arm. HH that hurts. The green-haired pervert cried out as Ichigo squeezed on the arm and removed the bracelet from the assassin's wrist. End log. The hybrid said before closing the audio logs and turning back to Lubbock. So, how was the test? The string user grinned as Ichigo released him. It was amazing. He exclaimed, clearly very impressed. This is definitely on par with a taigu. I spent the whole day using it, and no one ever noticed me, I even got to spy on all the girls in the group. Lubbock got a nosebleed. Leon's luscious curves, Shield's elegant bod, Akame's toned form, I saw it all. It was glorious. Except for the boss, I respect her too much to peep on her. He said, Ichigo nodding along and recording the data, knowing that Lubbock's going to hate him later. With these, we could dash. Stopping you there, the answer is no. Ichigo said, quickly shooting down the request before Lubbock could really ask it. I didn't make this to give you guys an edge. I will repeat this Lubbock, I'm not on your side. I'm not on the Empire's side, I'm on my side, the side with the least number of innocent people dying. Not helping assassins or a tyrannical government. 
This is for me to use as I see fit. But what's the point? The string user asked. Once you go spirit, you're invisible to the world. Why would you need this? That's for me to know. The hybrid said, pocketing the bracelet for later while returning the Itaigu. Now get out. I've still got things I need to do. He returned to his computer, typing away and recording more data before grabbing onto the thread of the Taigu cross tail that Lubbock had around the bracelet the instant it began to move. I'm not an idiot Lubbock. He called out, severing the string with a single slash of his Zanpakuto, followed by the pervert cursing and hurriedly running away. Idiot. Ichigo whispered as he ensured that the Ryamaku bracelet was in fact in his possession, releasing a Pesquisa pulse to finalize that it was there. Good, he stayed inside the base. He said before placing the thread into the scanner, but before he could pay any attention to the data he was receiving from the Taigu, Merrick's shell began to crack. That took long enough. The Soul Reaper sighed, setting his computer to the Rasher printer and began printing out white fabric. With that done, he walked over to his soon-to-be Aaron car as the cracks continued to spread until the white shell exploded, leaving a naked Merrick kneeling on the ground and his dual-blade Najinata in front of him. Do you remember who you are? Ichigo asked. Yes, my lord. Merrick answered, grabbing his blade and pushing himself up. I am Merrick Mayamori, Aaron car knight to the king of Hueco Mundo, Ichigo Kurosaki. He stood to his full height, tall and strong with a tiger tattoo appearing on his left side. I am ready to serve you my king. Good. We'll discuss what to do later. For now, get dressed. Ichigo ordered, pointing to the hundred feet of white cloth and sewing kits. I'm heading out, wait for my return. He said before flashing away to reap the dead. In the palace. Hours had passed and the day once more gave way to night, bathing the world in a crimson glow before the streets became alighted with the night life of the capital. The number of spirits occupying the city was nearing more manageable levels, having his intense speed was always helpful, but it was just one city and the number of people dying hasn't declined enough in his opinion. He needed more help, more Shinigami. He'd have Merrick assist, but he still doesn't know the results of that experiment Mayuri and Urahara were working on. The only other option was to recruit a soul with the potential of being a soul reaper, then train them to become soul reapers. The question is who it could be. Ichigo asked himself, entering the palace with impunity yet again. Easy to infiltrate when there is literally no way to stop him. The closest thing he found to empowered humans were those with Taigu, and there were not enough Taigu in the world to mount a defense against spirits. He stopped in his tracks as he noticed a familiar icy presence in the area. Guess's death finally made it back. The hybrid mused as he made his way through the palace. I've assembled my team and they are starting with those that Night Raid have already killed recently my lord. Budo said as Ichigo came upon a trio of him, Makoto, and Honest, with the young emperor heading for his bedroom. They began their search with a wealthy family when people began noting some wretched odors on the property, finding a warehouse full of corpses. All of the victims appeared to have been tortured to death, and this was happening directly under our noses? Makoto demanded, sounding furious. Many things are slipping under the cracks my lord. Honest said, masking his agitation. The rebellion is distracting us all and they knew how to cover their tracks, I would assume. Maybe I should decree surprise searches among the upper-class citizens. The emperor contemplated. See if any more dirty secrets are in the works. I must advise against it your majesty. Honest voiced. One case does not set the standard. Such an act might encourage discontent. I agree. Wait until further evidence is obtained your majesty. Budo told his lord. Rest assured we will protect this nation. Makoto smiled gratefully before shutting the door. Honest and Budo went their separate ways and Ichigo phased right through that door. Look at you, Ichigo said after putting on his Jigai ring, acting like a proper emperor now. Makoto jumped as Ichigo came in, 
but sighed in relief at the sight of the Shinigami. You've definitely made a lot of progress from the naive little puppet I first met. Not enough progress. The emperor argued back. I'd like to start projects to help the common people, but even Budo advised against it. Said to hold off until any threats to such policies have been dealt with. Narcotics and any organized crime group that may take advantage of the situation. It did make sense, ensure the country and people were safe before anything else. What good was food or medicine if they could easily be stolen and replaced with drugs? So, are we going on another tour of the capital? Makoto asked, bracing himself for more of the rotten city that was his home. Something similar actually. Ichigo said, fishing out the Riyamaku bracelet. Put this on. He ordered, letting the child slip the silver band onto his wrist. So long as you wear that, you are invisible to the world. Only I can see and hear you and there are no barriers that can stop you. Ichigo pointed to the door. Try it. Makoto took a breath, walked up to the door, placed his hand on it, and sank through like it was not even there. Wow. That was amazing. He said, muffled by the wall between them. Ichigo removed his jigai ring and followed after the monarch, who was phasing through walls and being unnoticed by the guards. Ichigo. This is more impressive than any taigu I've seen. He cheered, running up to the soul reaper and taking his hand. Can I keep it? The emperor begged, holding on to and seeing Ichigo despite him being in spirit form. This requires further study. The hybrid thought before kneeling before Makoto. No Makoto, I should hold on to it when you're not using it. The kid looked sad, but seemed to start catching on. To keep it out of dangerous hands, right? Ichigo smiled and nodded, proud that the boy was growing into his own. Okay. So what was it that you wanted to show me? Let's go see Honest without the mask he wears around you. The emperor nodded and began leading Ichigo through the castle, listening to the staff and searching for the fat ass that was the prime minister. They heard someone say that he was visiting with Generalist Death and began making their way to the hospital wing of the palace. It didn't take the pair long before they found their quarry. Is Death in a hospital bed with a near invisible scar on her chest and Honest sitting at her bedside? Didn't think that he'd care so much. The Prime Minister said when they got into earshot. In retrospect, we should have expected that he'd be stronger than what we saw. God is still in his title, even if he prefers Soul Reaper. Still, to cause you so much damage. He whispered, rubbing his beard in contemplation. If we could get any kind of sample of him, we could find something that could quell him. If you can secure such a sample for yourself, you're welcome to try. Is death returned, scratching at her nearly invisible scar and staring directly at Ichigo. But, I doubt you'd be capable of succeeding there. You'd never know if death is watching. Ichigo's eyes narrowed at the ice user, reminding himself how sharp her instincts were and wondering why she wasn't saying anything about him being there. He could be making frequent trips here to talk to the emperor. He doesn't seem as mindless as you'd like him to be. She sent a smirk to Honest, who growled in irritation. That brat is getting annoying independent. I didn't spend all this time to lose control this easily. He admitted, frowning all the while. And now Budo is actually doing something about this instead of focusing on the rebellion. I may have to frame Budo for treason. He might be supplying information to our enemies so it might work. Makoto had a look of betrayal on his face as he listened, both he and Ichigo remaining silent as the exchange continued. I doubt him telling Ichigo about my habits counts as treason. Is death said, despite honest and not paying attention. And if worse comes to worse, I'll just poison that brat. Makoto felt his heart break. Have to be more careful than when I killed his parents. Children are just so fragile, I might kill him by accident. Need him to be the puppet I want. You fat bastard. Makoto screeched, charging at Honest before Ichigo pulled him back. Let me go Ichigo. 
quiet. The hybrid roared, instilling fear into the boy with the gravity of his presence. There may be more and you must learn to control your emotions. Makoto growled furiously as they continued to watch. By the way, I need you to make some people disappear. Dot. Honest told the general. They may threaten my ruling here if they manage to come. Very well, Isteth agreed, I'll see what I can do. In exchange, I want to organize a tournament. Honest looked at her questioningly. My latest scheme to get Ichigo to come to me. Fighting him backfired, so I'll hold the audience hostage. In exchange for their safety, he'll do something for me. Both smiled sadistically before his death frowned. I'll repeat this honest. Trying to secure any kind of sample off of him will be your responsibility. I want something else from the Soul Reaper. Honest smile faded into a frown and glare, but he agreed and left. Ichigo released the child monarch, who was shaking furiously. This is the face of corruption. Ichigo said, before Makoto ran off. Ichigo easily followed the emperor as they phased through walls until reaching Budo's private study, where the kid pulled off the bracelet. General Budo. Makoto shouted, surprising the general as his master appeared literally out of thin air. I want Honest arrested and executed for high treason. Ichigo appeared in the room himself, putting on his Jigai ring. I'd be happy to do so my lord, but what brought this on? Budo asked, already accepting what was happening because Ichigo was involved. He murdered my parents, plans to frame you for treason, and plans to poison me. The emperor growled out. We watched Honest while invisible. Ichigo quickly explained. Budo merely nodding in understanding. Any time away from Makoto to watch the Prime Minister show his true colors was enough to justify the child's actions. It took all of Budo's power to keep his own emotions under control as he knelt before his leader. Your Highness, I would be glad to have him arrested and executed for his actions, but forgive me for this. He said while Makoto looked furious at the thought of Budo betraying him too. Do you have any evidence? Evidence. I don't need evidence. The kid roared. I'm the emperor. If I want him dead, your only concern is killing him. Then you're not any different from him. Ichigo suddenly said, shocking Makoto with the accusation. Doing things like that, because I said so, is no different than how honest is doing things. You need to gather evidence to justify your claims, that's what separates just kings from tyrants. You want to be a proper king, yes? Makoto nodded, tears falling down his face from the thought of just how much he must have failed his people. Then you need to do things the right way. Budo will gather the evidence for you, when that is done then you may have him face his judgment. Makoto reluctantly nodded as Ichigo slipped the bracelet back on and took the emperor back to his room. He had faced enough for today. Days later. Ichigo wished he could say that the end of the empire's corruption was within sight, wished that there would be substantially fewer deaths all around. Unfortunately for him and those involved it wasn't to be. Mainly because Honest knew how to cover his tracks and, without reasonable evidence, they couldn't sanction more in-death searches. Makoto seemed to be getting smarter, much to Ichigo and Budo's pleasure and Honest's chagrin, by keeping his death and her three beasts in the capital to recruit and train new soldiers to join her army and they had to stick around until the recruits were satisfactory with Budo and his death as judges. During that time, Budo made a list of possible targets that he gave to Ichigo, who gave it to Nagenda, to give to the rebellion leaders, on orders of the emperor. Not that the rebels knew all the details and were just happy for the intel. Ichigo also made it a point to find and recover Estetha's damaged organs from this really flamboyant scientist called Dr. Stylish. Wasn't sure which made him more uncomfortable, the heart and lungs he stole or the campy scientist. The point of that was that Estetha's taigu was mixed with her blood and he didn't want to risk another person with Estetha's powers running around. One unstable cryomancer was enough in his opinion. During that time, Tatsumi was trained by Shiel and Leon, failed to be compatible with Spectator, 
and Night Raid continued their assassinations. Merrick had a bit of a fashion disaster that was later rectified by mine after an accidental activation of the soul projector gave her quite a show, now he wore a white vest with a black tank top and white pants. Since then, Merrick was patrolling the outskirts of the capital for any useful hollows or other spirits while Ichigo continued to reap souls and pray that someone had the potential of becoming a soul reaper to aid him. This mess vexes me greatly. Ichigo thought in annoyance, despite having a relatively slow day. He did send a pimpe to hell, though he was beginning to feel something odd from the gates of hell as of late. Suddenly he noticed a bright flash of light, along with a dying life force. One more, then I'll call it a night. He thought to himself as he made his way to where the light flashed. He sensed no hollows and thus no urgency. He soon found a large force of imperial guard, each looking horrified, loud crunching, and some rather demented laughter. That's when he saw them, a giant plush-like dog eating an arm and a brown-haired girl that was missing both of hers. Papa, I defeated the evil villain on my own. She said happily. The light of justice shines on this world. Ah ha She continued to laugh. Ichigo glanced at the arm that was soon swallowed by the beast, recognizing the pale purple sleeve. If I had any regrets, Ichigo heard a familiar voice from beside him, it's that I can't hug Tatsumi anymore. Could you let me say goodbye to everyone myself Ichigo? He turned to see Sheil, with bloodied bite marks on her body and a bullet hole on her chest, directly over her soul chain. Illustrated Guide to Assassination Why Lubbock Hates Ichigo Jackass has no idea the amount of good we could do if we all had those bracelets. He grumbled while stomping his way through the base. Then he was sucker punched by a transformed Leon, with mine and shield glaring at him. Akame was just there. What was that for? Do the words, Leon's luscious curves, Shield's elegant bod, Akame's toned form, I saw it all, mean anything? Leon growled, cracking her knuckles while Lubbock broke into a cold sweat. Ichigo said you were testing something for him, but he never said you were supposed to peep. And what about me? Nothing. Mine roared before they began mercilessly beating on the pervert. Ichigo you traitor. Ichigo steals Estetha's heart. The heart of General Death. Stylish said gleefully, looking at the prized organ he took from the general. He was a tall man with spiky black hair with a white patch in it, wore a yellow suit under his white lab coat, and glasses over his blue eyes. Such a graceful creature, to power through such extensive damage and completely adapt to that danger beast transplant. It would be my great pleasure to work further with you, dear general. He looked away for a second to write something down. Maybe I'll make you a personal squad of lesser ice users to co-dash, he froze when all of the organs were missing, ahhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
Sheil said, smiling that her sacrifice wasn't in vain as the pair scanned the faces of the assassins. There were tears, rage, disbelief, and sorrow. All things that Ichigo expected to find when he considered how much everyone there loved Sheil, but the only comfort he could provide now was simply the chance to say goodbye. Merrick was already conveniently waiting with the soul projector ready. Probably got it started the moment he saw mine return without her partner. Where's the person that did this mine? Tatsumi growled, rage and hate evident in his voice. Ichigo slipped on his Jigai ring while Merrick brought the projector over for Sheil. What are you planning on doing Tatsumi? Nagenda asked her green subordinate, probably knowing full well what he was planning, just as Ichigo manifested on the physical plane. Get revenge. He growled out, looking downright vicious. But a vicious cub was still a cub all the same. Anger makes you stupid Tatsumi. Ichigo calmly stated, getting the group's attention. A proper warrior, especially an assassin, must be in full control of their emotions at all times. Oh you dare. Tatsumi whispered out a growl before storming up to the Soul Reaper. Don't you dare lecture me about anything. For all that talk of inaction, you have been getting pretty involved. Fighting is death, gathering information, do you simply decide on a whim what you can or can't do? Did you stand by and watch Shield die because you can't involve yourself? Do you even know what it's like to lose a free dash? Ichigo silenced him with a harsh backfist, sending Tatsumi tumbling into the dirt. I am all too familiar with that. Ichigo admitted, thinking back to when Sena died as the Shinenju, to when Khan died protecting his mother and sisters, to when his sisters were still captured despite Khan's efforts. But all I've ever done was prevent a massacre in my name and slowly free a child from his prison of naivety. Don't mistake me for what I am not, because I am a soul reaper. I'm on no one's side but my own. He looked to Merrick and nodded, prompting the Erencar to activate the projector and reveal Sheil. Say your goodbyes, and follow me to the underground. I don't think they can handle watching you fade away. He said as he began to move, already bringing out another Aswachi blade and going into his underground cavern to wait for Sheil and Merrick. Almost an hour passed before the pair finally made their way down to the underground, Shil standing tall with all the dignity and grace she could muster, only for that to be ruined as she tripped and fell over. Hopefully I'm not so clumsy in my next life, be it heaven or hell. She said, trying to pass it off like a joke. Merrick helped the poor airhead back up while Ichigo himself walked over. Shil had a look of quiet acceptance and closed her eyes, waiting for the tap that would decide her eternal fate. When it never came, she opened her eyes to the sight of the Shinigami holding out a katana. I actually have a different plan for you Shiel. Ichigo said, noting the confusion on the girl's face. As you know, I am but one man and only one reaper trying to help all the souls of the dead in this world. This is not something I can do alone. I've only just recently made the capital manageable with helping Makoto care for his people and limiting the number of those executed in prison, but the dead keep coming. I've still the rest of the empire to worry about, but I can't leave the capital without a soul reaper and Merrick can't perform the necessary duties. Are you suggesting that I? She started, shocked by the suggestion, and even more when Ichigo nodded. But, the only things I've ever been good at was killing and comforting Tatsumi. I don't think I can be a proper Shinigami. Why do you think I carry a Zanpakuto, or why it transforms? Ichigo asked, demanding the girl's attention. Because it looks nice? Because it's cool? No, I carry these blades because there are foes only those with high spiritual power can fight. The corrupted souls of the dead, hollows. Those large, white-masked danger beasts that appeared when you first showed up. She asked, managing to remember the various monsters that flashed into existence for a short while when Ichigo first came to their world. Yes, and like any other soul of the dead, they too deserve their judgment and rest. The Reaper admitted. They just require some rougher treatment, like fighting and killing them. I'm not forcing this on you, this is my offer. Become a soul Reaper, 
slay the hollows that will appear when I leave the city, reap the dead that I can't. She'll pause to think before reaching for the blade, only to freeze when Ichigo spoke again. But know that you can't interact with Night Raid. If you did, they'll start making annoying demands of me, or requests of you. You are no longer part of that war, but now part of mine. The equal treatment of all souls and exclusion from the affairs of the living. If you break this rule, I'll devour your soul. It may be harsh, but that's the way he needed to be. She'd break the rules and try to help Night Raid in any way she could, but that's not the world of the Shinigami. She eventually grabbed onto the sheath of the blade. If I can be useful, I will take that chance. The former assassin finally admitted. I will join you in your mission. Ichigo smiled, partly relieved to finally have some help, successfully recruiting his first soul reaper, and because, yeah he was also fond of Sheil. She seemed like she needed an older brother, despite the fact that she was older. Good girl. Your training begins now. He said before ripping the Zanpakuto out of her hands and tossing it to Merrick. Sheil, go retrieve your sword. Merrick, keep her from doing so, but not too harshly. He said before heading over to his computer while the budding Shinigami and Erenkar Knight played, keep away. Time skip, back at the capital. A couple days passed since Sheil's death and acceptance to become a soul reaper. Though her retrieval of her blade was clever, it was also out of pity because how that attempt went. Her training began in earnest and Tatsumi began to push himself in his own training after Akame let her mask of indifference slip. Ichigo had to wonder just what kind of life she had to live up to this point and how many comrades she must have lost before thinking of how many the other captains in the Godii must have lost themselves. He pushed himself to be as strong as he was so that he wouldn't have to know that pain. Not everyone was allowed that luxury and it was close to affecting his judgment. He wanted to comfort Akame, he wanted to help train Tatsumi, but was it his right to do so? Meanwhile, away from the assassins and the Shinigami, the Prime Minister informed Makoto and his death that her Taiga users have arrived and Budo gave his death as military recruits his blessing on their ability and her army was back to full strength again. His death could now send her three beasts to assassinate Honest's political opponents, however, it wouldn't do to leave without testing her new team members. In a room designated as the special police meeting room, the team had gathered, a dark-haired man in heavy clothing from the Imperial Navy named Wave, a shirtless man with a mask from the incineration squad named Bors, a black-haired girl with a massive sweet tooth named Kurom a brown-haired girl with cybernetic arms named Seriu and her dog Taiga Koro, who ushered in Dr. Stylish, and finally a blonde and fair-looking man with the air of a scholar about him named Ran. So, before we go hunt some new prey, Lady Esteth wants us to test her new subordinates? Nyao asked his team members, all three wearing different types of masks. Why doesn't she do that herself? I think she's waiting to make sure she's ready to go round two with that Shinigami bastard. Daidara suggested as they reached the door. Wouldn't mind getting a few hits on that guy myself for what he did to Lady's death. Now now you two, it's time to focus. River scolded as they prepared their little surprise. Nyao took his place on the far side of the hall and brought his recorder Taigu to his lips, ready to play its hypnotic and dangerous tunes. Daidara and River stormed into the room, surprising a few among the group, with Wave acting on that surprise. What the hell is with these weaklings? The battle fanatic demanded, purposefully goading them into action. Wave took the bait. Hey, we were all called here to dash, he didn't even finish his statement before Daidara slammed his fist into the boy's gut, sending him flying. Why are you so open? River demanded as he pulled out a sword and began attacking Ran, who nimbly dodged. There's one that has potential. The former general thought as he felt a spike of killing intent appear behind him, only for Daidara to knock Seriu aside. You need to control your bloodlust girly. He scolded as a faint hum began to play. Surprisingly enough, Ran immediately sprouted wings and shot feathers through the wall, roughly around Niao's location. Kuro moved on the offensive herself, moving so quickly that she nearly decapitated River. 
The only thing stopping that was fast reflexes and quick use of his black marlin to control water, pushing her away from him at the last moment. Definitely need some work, but you'll do for now. River finally said, giving the six a passing grade as the three beasts revealed themselves. The reveal surprised the new team, though Wave was the most vocal and demanded answers. Did you really think that we'd let a bunch of untested nobodies be our beloved general's teammates without proving themselves? Daidara answered, angering Wave easily while the rest kept their composure. Some of you barely make the cut. That's for me to decide. They heard someone speak out as his death appeared in the room. I hope the three of you had fun and they passed your test. She asked, getting nods from her bodyguards. Good, now you have your own mission, so get to it. The Ice Master ordered, prompting the three of them to leave. Meanwhile, the rest of you will have to go through a test of mine. She announced, the entire team getting ready for action. But that will come later. For now, we must go present ourselves to the Emperor and I have a tournament to host. She pulled out one of the posters made for the event. The mark of her taigu with crossed blades and a skull mask with vertical red lines over the eyes. I'm sure it'll be quite the show. The next day, the good news is that our decoy plan managed to succeed and we've a few more allies. Budo informed the emperor as they traveled to the audience chamber. Bad news is that they caught on and still eliminated most of them, and my forces are getting spread a little thin in trying to protect our side. After hearing about Honest's desire to get rid of some people, Budo made a list of possible targets and tried to contact them to get them to the capital safely or with the revolutionaries as the alternative. Most important of which was the previous prime minister, a man named Cho Yuri, and his daughter-slash-bodyguard named Spear. They successfully reached the capital, but they knew that Honest wouldn't give up so they have a constant watch of bodyguards. Normal assassins are of mild concern Budo, Makoto told his leading general, the bigger concern is if Honest will conscript a Taiga user to act against us. How many Taiga users in the capital could he use as assassins? Budo took a moment to think. Night Raid would be concerned with keeping them alive so they're out. He quickly said. Two of the Jaegers would do it outright while the rest would be tricked. Then there's Estetha's three beasts, who seem to be the assassins Honest is currently using. Makoto bit his thumb, trying to judge his position. Despite Honest's poisoned words being dripped in his ear, the kid did have what it took to be a good leader. He just needed to lose his naive trust and blind faith. The killer, Zank the Beheader, what was his taigu? He suddenly asked, getting an idea. Spectator? Yes your majesty, wait, are you planning? Budo asked, knowing that the Ai Taigu was either with Night Raid or the Rebellion. What do you think it'll take to get them to give a spectator? Budo's eyes widened in shock, the rebel army and Night Raid were still traitors despite aiming for the same goals. His prejudice about those that threatened the kingdom still held on, against his better judgment. If anything my lord, we should leave that to Ichigo. He knows where they are and can negotiate for both sides. Then keep up your guard until we speak with him again. Do whatever it takes to keep them safe. The monarch ordered as he and Budo entered the audience chamber. Old man Choyuri. Makoto said cheerfully, putting on the mask of a child rather quickly. So good to see you again. Are you coming out of retirement? While the young lord and retired civil servant spoke, Budo's eyes met with Honest's. A smug and victorious grin came on the general's face while the prime minister glared and ripped into a large bird drumstick. Yes my lord, the outskirts of the empire gave a little perspective to this old man and ideas that would be put to better use in serving the realm. Choyuri smiled, charmed by his adorable monarch and eager to help him on restoring the kingdom. That's wonderful. But, what should you do? He said before wondering. Honest is still the acting prime minister and I can't just hand that position back to you automatically. To most others, it was just a child facing a conundrum, to Budo it was a code. How to get him to do his job and keep him safe from anything Honest can do. 
well, why not appoint him to a parliamentary position? Budo suggested. The members of the imperial civil offices are among the most secure. Someone on the inside would have to actively conspire against another member to get one killed. Honest began gnashing his teeth as Makoto agreed and appointed the former prime minister to co-prime minister until a better sounding name could be decided. Istetha's Tournament The day Isteth waited for finally came, the stands were full, the prize money enticed many to apply, the grand prize of the Taigu Ekstase and a guaranteed position in the newly established Jaegers would ensure that the competitors give it their all. But that was all pointless to her real goal, getting to Ichigo. She had to contain her excitement when his name appeared on the roster and it was clear that he was going to win the whole tournament. She knew he'd come, but she still felt her heart pound at the chance to reunite with him, even if it meant possibly painful repercussions by his hand. In the east corner, Ichigo Kurosaki. Wave announced, being given that job by the general and did so with enthusiasm. In the west corner, Nabunaga of the dry goods store. The soul reaper walked onto the stage with his opponent facing opposite of him, who seemed to be a feudal samurai with a pointed mustache and goatee. And. B dash, he almost said before Ichigo held up his hand and waved wave over to him. The young navy man saw nothing wrong with that and went over, Ichigo immediately snatching the microphone away. Hello again, is death. He said, focusing on the general. How about we save us all some time, and I just fight everyone all at once. I promise not to kill them. This, predictably, infuriated the other contestants with his cockiness while his death smiled at the chance to study Ichigo's ability yet again. Fine, the general announced to the public, and I'll pay ten times the prize money to each of the other contestants if you lose. This shocked the entire group for a moment before they crowded around Ichigo, who took center stage of the arena. Wave had to get off before announcing the battle to start. And begin. He called out, triggering the start of the battle. The instant they began to move, a crushing pressure came down over everyone within the combat area. Even Wave was caught up in it, though this confused the entire audience. Is death, however, was familiar with what happened. The sheer weight of power of her chosen one. Soon enough, each and every person in the arena passed out from the strain and collapsed before Ichigo let up his Riatsu. Wave was the only one still conscious. Dis disqualified. He called out, gasping for air. I don't know how but that was cheating. Take a break wave. Is death called down, descending from her place in the stands. I'll examine him for any tool he may have used. The young man did as ordered and went over to the entrance, where Bors came out with water and concern for his teammate. You do know that this was supposed to entertain the masses right? She asked with a knowing smile. Ichigo watched a fine mist appear around the people as they talked about what they just saw. Don't be coy with me you icy bitch, the hybrid growled, you and I both know what you're doing. Now what do you want? She smiled and got in close, acting like she was looking for evidence of cheating despite knowing that there was nothing to find. I want two things actually. She finally said while patting him down, I wanted to see you fight for starters, didn't get a good enough idea before you decided to end our tryst back in the north. But, I want it from an outside perspective this time, with the added benefit of testing my new recruits. Or at least two of them. And the other? Is death rose to her feet, looking the soul reaper in his eyes. I want to see the world you inhabit. She admitted. I want to see the enemies you fight, the work you do, I want to see the Shinigami in action. She backed away for him. He was not cheating, merely used a unique style and technique that is unknown to the Empire. However, he has agreed to a rematch fight since you all came for a show. This time, he'll actually fight. She announced to the public, earning a round of cheers and applause. This time, Ichigo saw ice forming at the feet of the people. However, since every other competitor is down, Wave and Kurome. Come up here and fight. The general ordered as the two Jaegers took the stage. 
I'm getting an odd sense of deja vu Ichigo thought as he examined the two, reminding him of Tatsumi and Akame respectively. He kept a hand on one of his Zanpakuto and reinforced his hands and feet, sensing their strength but not wanting to kill them. Wave unsheathed a short black cutlass while Kurom had a long katana, similar to Akame's own taigu. Ichigo immediately sensed something very wrong with Kurom's sword, almost like there were voices crying out for release. He ran out of time for guessing when his death made the call. Begin. She ordered, prompting Wave to charge straight at the hybrid. The boy swung his blade, purposefully slow enough for him to think Ichigo had enough time to block it with his own blade. Instead, the Soul Reaper caught the blade and tossed him aside. Kurom was clearly the more aggressive of the two and went for a killing strike directly at Ichigo's neck. He once again blocks the blade with his bare hand, but this time he heard something crying out to him very clearly. He forgot the fight entirely and focused on the sword, now convinced it was a taigu, and knocked Kurom back with a solid strike to her gut. This blade. Ichigo listened, hearing five different voices crying out for freedom. He gripped the sword blade with both hands, intent on shattering the weapon and freeing the trapped souls, before getting sucker punched in the face by a figure in black armor. What the, why does that resemble Incursio? He thought, after shaking off the sudden blow, the taigu was taken from him and returned to Kurom's hands who then clutched it desperately. You all right Kurom? Wave asked from inside his armor, Kurom managing to put up a strong front. Never thought I'd have to pull out my taigu for something like this. He's definitely no joke. Ichigo worked his jaw for a bit, getting rid of the sudden shock of the surprise attack he suffered. I'll keep his attention, you aim for any opening I can make. Ready? The pair planned before Ichigo flashed in front of Wave. Wadash, he started before the hybrid threw an Ikatsu punch into his gut. Wave felt like his ribs were about to shatter from the strike and was sent flying through the walls between the audience and the arena and through the walls around the courtyard. Kurom was about to attack herself, but was stopped when the Soul Reaper shot Kyoka Suijetsu out of the sheath like a bullet and nailed her in the stomach, stopping her in mid-flight. What is that sort of yours? Ichigo growled, still hearing the cries from the blade, as Kurom fell to the ground. Wave, to his stubborn credit, came flying at Ichigo again. The Shinigami summoned his Zanpakuto to his hand and swung at the armored youth as he fell toward him, Kyoka sparking against the armor before slowly biting through. Before he could cut Wave and do any more damage, Ichigo let go of the sword punched him in the chest. Once again, Wave was shot backwards, but not before Ichigo caught his sword and pried it free. Before he could continue, he was trapped in a block of ice. Thank you everyone for your assistance. Is death called out, making her way on stage and next to the frozen hybrid. This man happens to be a person of high interest to the Empire and this whole tournament was a trap to lure him out and eventually capture him. He is quite crafty and dangerous. Escape now, and everyone here dies. She whispered to Ichigo, knowing he could hear her through the ice. Sorry if the show wasn't to your liking, but you can all expect a full reimbursement on your admission fees. My assistants, Run and Dr. Stylish will return your money. Everyone else, let's get him back to our headquarters. She ordered, letting two of her soldiers get mobbed while the others came to retrieve Ichigo. The entire time, she admired the fierce and defiant glare in his eyes. Illustrated Guide to Assassination Shield Zanpakuto Retrieval. I'll catch yo ah. The girl shouted before tripping and falling on some rocks. This was her fifth time doing so while chasing Merrick for the day. Merrick waited for the girl to get back up because the point was chasing, not hide and seek. When she didn't, he got a little concerned and went over to check on her. The second he got within a foot of her, she sprung up and made a grab for him. Finally. I succeeded. She shouted, singing her victory. Yes. You managed to rip my pants off. Merrick said dryly, the Aswachi gripped tightly in his hand, 
and missing some clothes below his waist. She'll drop to her knees and started crying. Hey, it's not that bad. You've got some nice reflexes and grip strength to do that. He said, trying to cheer her up, which wasn't working. The main point was to get you comfortable as a soul and you seem as lively as when you were alive. Still nothing. I'll give you the sword and not mention this to Ichigo. K? Okay. okay. She sniffed, finally taking her future Zanpakuto in hand. Shield's next training. So, when I said, get her something to practice with, why this? Ichigo watching Shield run from elephant sized hollows that Merrick captured. Well, didn't you say optimal soul growth happened and the subject was in a life or death situation? The Aaron car returned. That's still an Aswachi. Not even a Zanpakuto, and I'd feel safer throwing her against something she can actually fight. Ichigo scolded as they continued to watch Shil run and scream. I think it's a miracle she didn't trip yet, so. To say that the majority of the special police force was confused would be an understatement, not expecting their first mission to turn out as such. Isteth had the frozen Ichigo brought to their base while the Jaegers, San Stylish and Run, watched in puzzlement while she admired the man in the ice. What's going on Captain? Bowles finally asked. Who is this Ichigo person and why did we need such an elaborate trap? That boy is not human. Honest shouted, coming into the headquarters with stylish and run in tow, the former having several tools for sample extraction ready and looking absolutely ecstatic, while the latter was just very curious. You've really outdone yourself this time general. To successfully capture the capital's own reaper. He said, struggling between his excitement at victory and a calm smugness that the biggest obstacle was out of his way. The carcass of such a powerful being would offer a massive boon to the empire, and more importantly to him. Maybe even the keys to immortality itself was within his grasp, the man thought while reaching out to the hybrid while Stylish prepared to drill through the ice. That's not smart. His death warned, though it was ignored. Just as she expected, Ichigo's arms broke free with his veins glowing crimson, and struck at the two men. Stylish got his hand and tool crushed in Ichigo's right hand while his left quickly dislocated Honest's wrist, shoulder, then grabbed his skull in a crushing grip. A second later, the ice fell off of Ichigo as he shook himself free. I agreed to come along by your terms as death, but I didn't agree to this. The Soul Reaper growled as the two began to wail in pain. You should know, I'm not particularly fond of being a test subject without consent. He lightened up his grip and both men fell to the floor, clutching their still throbbing hand and head, and Merrick came in through the door. Well, if I need consent, Stylish started in between pain squeals, then may I have some Sam Dash, the errand car kicked the doctor right out the door, Saryu running after him. My answer is no. Ichigo plainly said, swiping the odd crown Honest had on his head, a ring with three black diamonds. I will not allow you to have me in any experiments. I've had to send plenty of failed test subjects to their much needed rest and I personally don't trust your scientists. Is this a taigu? Certainly has a feel of power to it. The reaper thought as he examined the trinket, sitting himself in a chair. Also, I'm still going to have to punish you for this as death. Just not here because I'd like to avoid collateral damage. And that is very much appreciated, Lord Shinigami. Honest said, finally getting back up, I do hope you were successful in your duties. His Majesty has been making an effort to try to preserve life in the capital, but are you sure you should make such compassion known? It would be a shame if death itself were to dash, he was saying while Ichigo and Merrick shared a glance, before Ichigo poked his finger toward Honest. Merrick immediately punched the fat man in the exact spot Ichigo pointed, not enough to kill him but definitely knock the wind out. I said I'd like to avoid collateral damage, not that I wouldn't fight when push comes to shove. Merrick returned to his king's side and waited. Now, is death. You said you wanted to see the world through the eyes of a soul, correct? He returned his vision to the icy general, who smiled. 
Yes indeed, and my Jaegers are a fellow offering if they pass your test. She announced, shocking all the humans in the room, even Saryu and Stylish who just returned. There is a great chance that we may die in the line of duty, fighting against the enemies of the Empire. Either we pass on to a peaceful rest or join our resident Shinigami in the service of something greater. I fully plan on doing the latter when this war is over, but your choices are your own. Some seem to ponder the possibility, partially convinced of Ichigo's divinity, after surviving being frozen solid and throwing people around without touching them. Kurom was clutching her sword tightly, terrified of what the Soul Reaper would do to the friend she refused to let rest because of the taiga's power. Hmm. Ichigo hummed as he appeared in front of her, staring deep into her black eyes. You remind me of the Wild One. He said, trying to be vague so that others wouldn't understand. Kurom's eyes, however, widened in a sense of recognition. I'll have to ask Akame about this girl, even their names sound alike. He thought before his phone and soul tracker vibrated in his pocket, which he left off since reaching this world until he made Sheil a soul reaper. The idea was that she was the standard level of strength for future possible recruits. He pulled it out to check, and it was pointing out to the opening of the Empire's Grand Canal and further into the waters. Lucky me, I hope. Looks like something has come up. I'm going to check it out. What about letting me come? Isteth suddenly asked. This is related to your duty, is it not? Ichigo tossed the possible taigu he had onto the couch, keeping an eye on it all the same by Rasher sense. I don't yet have the means to let you do that, short of killing you Isteth. He said, making note of the Prime Minister subtly taking the crown back. He had a feeling of distress ever since Ichigo took it that only calmed down by a fraction when he reclaimed it, the possibility of that crown being a taigu went up. I'll do it when I have the time. Just as he was about to leave, a messenger appeared in the doorway. Is there an Ichigo Kurosaki here? He asked, Ichigo raising his hand. His Majesty would like to request your presence at your earliest convenience sir. Noted. Ichigo took off his Jigai ring and disappeared from human sight shortly before leaving with Merrick in tow. Head back to base and continue training Sheil. Thanks for coming as we planned. Of course my lord. He said just before sighing. Can't wait till that girl can hold her own so I can take my naps again. The Arankar made his way back to Night Raid's base while Ichigo continued on to the waters, where a fight was taking place. Over the cruise ship. The big ones always tend to bring trouble, don't they? Ichigo asked, floating over the cruise ship, a massive vessel with a dragon's head at the helm. On the deck were dozens of unconscious forms of various people, someone that was split in half with a soul floating a bit above that was cheering an ally apparently, Tatsumi was injured and clutching his stomach, and Bullet was crossing blades with an older man. Do I know that guy from somewhere? He wondered as the fight continued and a third person, about Tatsumi's age, appeared. Where have I seen them? Secret skill. The older man yelled, despite a deep cut in his stomach. Blades of blood. He roared as his blood shot at bullet like bullets, some he deflected, others piercing into his flesh. He's a stubborn one, I'll give him that. The hybrid said before descending, believing that the fighting was either over or close to being. As he dropped to the ship, he grabbed onto the floating soul. Okay, time, too. Huh. He just barely recognized the man, but the man clearly remembered Ichigo. You. He said, pointing a trembling hand at the Soul Reaper. You're that Shinigami that General death is so infatuated with. I am. And you are? I'm Daidara of the Three Beasts, Isdeth's personal guard. He proudly proclaimed, reaching for a weapon that was no longer there. In the name of my master, I'll. I'll. He kept reaching until he remembered that he was dead and in the presence of a death god. It wouldn't have made any difference even if you had your taiga Daidara. The soul of the older man said after his mortal life ended, somewhat struggling in the transition. 
We were all there and watched as even Ladius' death was brought low by him. None of us can fare any better than the general. He walked up to Ichigo and bowed in respect. Please forgive my colleague, all of us in the Three Beasts have our own reasons to follow our general. She saved my life, for example, so while I don't like some of my actions, I still did so out of loyalty to my savior. Rivers right. Daidara admitted. I thought I was the strongest, until she proved me wrong. I respected her power and strength. And what about that one? Ichigo asked, pointed at the now buffed up blonde man while Bullet was yelling at Tatsumi to focus. He respects his death as the greater sadist. Daidara told him. Kid collects faces, from people that are still alive. It's creepy as hell. The three shuddered at the odd and sick hobby of the boy named Nyao as Tetsumi called upon the power of the Taigu in Curcio. The armor of the Taigu manifested as a giant avatar before it began shifting into something more beast-like. That thing, it's still alive. Ichigo realized while watching the armor change in a mixture of awe and horror. Awe at the creature's life force and horror at what life must be like for it. The next exchange of blows was the last as Tatsumi and Nyao punched at each other, with Nyao getting sent right into a wall on the ship and made a crater before falling to the ground dead. Stay here, all of you. I've something I need to do. He put on his Jigai ring just as Tatsumi dispelled his armor and ran back to Bullet. Ichigo. Him too? Really? Tatsumi said, tears welling up in his eyes as Bullet died. I can't even say goodbye this time can I? Ichigo looked to the side as Bullet got himself together, now dealing with the fact he was dead. We just lost Sheil, now bro? Why do they have to dash? Punch him. Bullet said, knowing that he couldn't do so anymore. Thus, Ichigo punched Tatsumi right on top of his head. Before either could say anything else, the hybrid held up a finger. Tatsumi, I do not control when people die. He said as it began to rain. I don't even get to decide where they go afterward. All I do is send them to where they will go, I put souls to rest. Letting them say goodbye is a final courtesy that I don't have to actually do. I didn't have to allow Shiel to say goodbye to Night Raid, I didn't need to let your two friends say their final goodbyes, or anyone for that matter. So why do I? It doesn't change the outcome of where they'll go, it doesn't change that they're dead, all it actually does is provide closure, which is all I can do. He shouted, scaring the assembled figures. I have been the most generous Shinigami of my entire ilk, because I don't hear of any other that bothers enough to give any soul any closure. Senna's words came back to him, when they first helped that young boy's soul find his dad despite his disinterest at first. Now Bullet has some final words for you, after that, get back to your mission. Stop crying. I'll speak for him. Ichigo said, turning to the dead assassin and nodding. Right. Tatsumi, don't worry. He said with Ichigo relaying the words, the kind of power you just showed, you'll surpass me in no time. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather pass on Incursio to. Train hard, make Incursio evolve further than I could ever hope to, and make sure you keep your promise Tatsumi. Survive for your sake, for your village, and for your promise to Akaim. He reached out a hand to place on Tatsumi's shoulder, which the boy somehow felt. I might not stick around, but I'll always be with you. Lil, bro. Tatsumi couldn't help but cry, and still promised his mentor that he'd keep pushing himself harder and harder. Ichigo removed his Jigai ring and marched back to Daidara and River, with a trembling meow. All right, time to do this. Ichigo cracked his knuckled before pulling out one of his Zanpakuto. Before we start, I'm recruiting people to become soul reapers with me. This drew the expected surprise, and hope from Meow that he was expecting. I have a war of my own that I'm facing, and I need to build my own forces. You will be trained, you will retain your memories, you will grow stronger than you ever could before, and Bullet, you can continue to watch over Tetsumi. The price. You will abandon old allegiances, 
the affairs you have with the living are over. So, you say you don't choose whether people go to hell or not. Niao said, stepping forward with some confidence. Can we still go to hell and puni sh the sinners? Ichigo's response was to tap his forehead and summon the gates of hell. Wait. I I I can be useful. I can serve you well. The chains wrapped around him and dragged him into the burning depths, shocking everyone but the Shinigami who had grown too used to seeing those doors opening. I do have standards, let that be known. Ichigo said as he looked to the remaining three. River stepped forward next, the fight was long gone in his eyes. I gave my life to my mistress, I've done things that I rather I didn't do, killed people that would have done well for the empire because of the prime minister, and I won't run for my just dues. He declared. I'm done fighting Shinigami. Heaven or hell, send me on my way. Ichigo tapped his head, and the blue light glow as he slowly faded. Maybe we'll have that drink next time we see each other bullet, if we ever meet. He smiled before disappearing, leaving the two warriors, who were looking quite conflicted. I've sworn my life to the general because of her strength, so I don't know if I'd be willing to abandon her just like that. Ichigo looked skyward and swung his sword, cleaving the clouds apart and ending the rain and overcast. Both Bullet and Daidara could only stare, completely stunned. I will follow you wherever you command. That left Bullet, whom Ichigo looked at expectantly. Honestly, working with any former member of the Empire's army is gonna leave a bad taste in my mouth, and I don't know if I can toss aside my previous loyalties to Night Raid and Revolution. The warrior admitted, shaking his head in thought. But I promise to watch over Tatsumi. And I will keep it. I will keep to your rules, but I'll be keeping an eye on Tatsumi as well. Back at the capital, later in the day. Ichigo dropped off his new recruits back at the night raid hideout, told Merrick to watch them, and sealed them in his underground base with a high-level barrier spell with the same training Shiel went through. Shiel was happy to have an old teammate of hers with her now, but had also shed a few tears that he was now dead like her. The last thing Ichigo did at his base was retrieve the other thing he was working on, a glove with the soul ejection Kido laced into it, and grabbed some hollow bait. If his death wanted to see his world, she'll see all he had to show. His power, the hollows, and how she'd stack up against them. With that done, he reappeared at the Jaeger's HQ. Soul Reaper. Run called out, being the only other one in the meeting room. Stylish and Seryu were working on patching up the former's hand, Wave was helping Bowles cook and bring dinner to Kurom, who locked herself in her room for some reason, and his death was in a meeting. I was hoping to speak with you alone. I have, some questions. The man said, looking around the room to make sure they were alone. I have a request, and am willing to pay Dash, he started before his death came in with the other Jaegers. Listen up people, our first big job as the Jaegers is here. She announced, heading for the table in the middle of the room. Run seemed agitated, but joined his teammates at the table. Nice to see you here Ichigo, are you going to join us on this mission? You'll have to tend to them after we're done anyway, and it would be a perfect chance for me to see the spirit side of things. She said with a smile. Ichigo wanted to wipe that smirk off her face, but waited. That would come later. I wonder what kind of hollows will appear. Ichigo thought to himself, rolling the bait around between his fingers. His death continued to brief her soldiers and ask their resolve. Stylish, for some reason, felt necessary to denounce Ichigo as any sort of god and that his death was a more fitting goddess. Right. You guys go on ahead, I said I'd meet with the emperor. He said before flashing away to do just that. Ichigo appeared in the throne room, with Honest, Budo, some new old guy, and Makoto discussing the affairs of state. Before anyone could react, he was directly in front of the emperor and slipping the spirit bracelet on the kid before removing his own jigai ring. Okay, what is it kid? Was that wise to do? Makoto asked, still trying to catch up mentally to what just happened. 
the look from Ichigo prompted him to continue. Right, I was wondering if you could get Night Raid to give us the Taigu Spectator. If they need a reason, tell them it's to protect the former Prime Minister Cho Yuri, who now serves on my staff. He said pointing at the new older man while Budo tried to restore order in the palace. Honest noted him as a threat to his authority and power, and he was always a good and honest man to the people. I'm sure he's a person of interest that the rebels would rather see alive. And why would they trust you? I have been vague about you being freed from Honest. Ichigo asked, making Makoto reach into his pocket. This is the Emperor's seal. He said, handing the golden stamp to the Shinigami. Only high-ranking officials and other generals will recognize that and it is always kept on the Emperor. Show it to whoever it is that you talk to. Ichigo bounced the gold seal a few times in his hand before pocketing it. I'll see what I can do. With that, Ichigo took the bracelet back and left the throne room, leaving the job of explaining things to Budo and Makoto. Which he doubted that either appreciated having to do, but his concerns laid elsewhere. He traced Estetha's presence to a high ledge overlooking the fortress that the Jaegers were tasked with eliminating as a bandit hideout. Did I miss anything? Nope, just in time to watch them in action. Esteth answered, not even shocked at Ichigo's sudden appearance. How will they fare in your eyes? Ichigo wondered the same as he watched them attack the fortress. The first up was the cyborg girl with the dog Taigu, Seriu if he remembered correctly. She certainly proved adaptive with the different weapons she could switch out her arms with, Mayuri would have a field day with her if she let him do the same body modification, but one look at that savage and predatory grin told the Soul Reaper enough. That girl was a murderer and with how she always used the word justice for every other word probably means she's unstable, she'd probably decide to kill souls rather than use Konso because she'd consider herself the judge. So she's out. He decided as he moved on to the doctor. Stylish was more of a support type, though Yurahara and Mayuri have proven how dangerous a smart man can be, so he'd probably do well in Squad 12. However, he seemed like this disturbing mix of Yumichika's aesthetic demands and Mayuri's morality and desire to experiment. He'd require more analysis, but Ichigo doubted he could stomach the man being a soul reaper. He displayed modified humans, but was Project Spearhead any better, maybe, but that wasn't an argument he wanted to have. Next were Kurom and Wave who once again seemed like a weaker Akame and stronger Tatsumi, the resemblance was still odd to the hybrid. Bowls and Run were the last and they mainly showcased the power of their Taigu, nothing he couldn't do with his Kido or Quincy Bao against Bowl's flamethrower and Run's wings. Well? Isteth asked as her team finished up and started to return to their rendezvous. Ichigo didn't answer as some of the newly made souls already started turning into hollows, even attacking each other. Being the person he was, he went into action. Grabbing his death by the waist, causing her to blush for the first time in a while, before flashing down to the Jaegers. Catch. Spiritual bitch slap. He said, tossing the general toward her subordinates before donning the soul ejection glove and pushing his death's soul from her body. She's alive, just comatose while her soul is out of her. He quickly explained before turning to soul form and making quick work of the spirits in the base. Well? He asked, reappearing before his death, who was watching in shock. That, that, how fast, are you? She gasped, suddenly noting how hard it was to breath. What is this? Taiga users seem to adapt more easily to being souls. Ichigo thought as she already began to steady her breathing. More research into the spiritual requirement of Taigu. This is the first time you became a spirit, is it not? You need to relearn how to live in a new body, breathing first, and movement second. She nodded in understanding as she quickly reached a more comfortable state. As for how fast, not too sure. I've never bothered to measure it, but it's never fast enough. He took out the bait and crushed it. Now watch his death this is my life as a soul reaper. He said as dozens upon dozens of holes opened in the sky with hundreds of hollows, 
and one massive tear slowly appearing. With honest. Damn that soul reaper. He raged, not even able to enjoy his usual snacks after Choyuri talked Makoto into making cutbacks on certain expenses to fund a new project to clean up the district, removing litter, repairing buildings, providing medical care, removing drugs, and all out of the secret funds he had from bribe money and tax evasion. He had a hand in this. I know it. The problem is, he was losing his resources. Night Raid is killing off his pawns, Budo would start making arrests if he made a move in the wrong direction, his death is too infatuated with that soul reaper, and he's losing his grasp on the child emperor. If he doesn't do something in soon, then his carefully laid out plans will be completely unsalvageable. Maybe it's time I have those two move. He suddenly decided. He should be close to done with his travels and the other is just one position away from taking over that little cult. Just need to move quickly. He began writing a pair of secret letters, one to a man named Sayura and one to a Balak. Illustrated Guide to the Special Police. Jaeger's Reaction to Ichigo. Wave, T. Gus. I can deal with. Quirky teammates, I can deal with. Crazy boss lady. Fine. A literal reaper of souls? What the hell is going on? The capital is insane. Kurom, he's going to take them away. He's going to take them all away. I can't let that happen. I can't let them go. Sister. I'm scared. Why can't we be together again like we used to be? Run, if I can get his help, then I can certainly achieve my vengeance. But can I persuade a god of death to help me? I know I have to change the empire, but I must avenge my students. Please Shinigami, grant me your favor and help remove a monster from this world. Bowls, so that was the god of death. I know I shouldn't think like this, but the general is right and I may die in the line of duty. I should ask him what hell is like so I can be prepared, because I know heaven won't have me. Seryu, I wonder if he'll let me join him if I die in the line of duty. That sounds good, serving justice to the sinners for all eternity. But, then why did Captain Ogre have to die? Stylish, he's certainly a cutie, but just so not my type at the same time. I want nothing more than to experiment on him, a genuine godly entity. But how? Maybe I'll strike when he's in human form, he should be vulnerable. I'll need to prepare my army, all of my dear experiments should be able to help. His death, I want his babies, 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 I want his babies. Ichigo, I'm not a Jaeger. Leave me alone, so these are hollows. She said, watching with a sense of awe at the many different sizes and shapes of the masked creatures. How did they fight, how did they determine strength, would any of them present as challenge, these thoughts flowed from her mind as she continued to watch the sky fill with them. It was only when she saw some begin to attack each other that she felt a sense of kinship among them, that the weak are the food of the strong. Their howls resonated within her and her heart leaped in her chest when a minotaur-like hollow set its eyes on her, roughly three times her size. Her first hunt of the creatures of the spirit realm. Instinctively, she held out her hand and summoned a barrage of ice shards to pierce the monster. But nothing happened, shocking her that the long-time power she wielded was gone. What were you expecting? Ichigo asked, gaining her attention. You're a spirit now. You've lost your weapons, why are you just standing there? Almost immediately, she turned back to the hollow and received a hard punch to her gut with a fist that was half the size of her torso. She was sent flying a few dozen feet before the chain connecting her to her physical body ran out and stopped her momentum. It was a few feelings that she forgot over the years, pain, vulnerability, she was no longer the strongest predator. That said, she refused to be prey. I will dominate. She thought, charging back at the hollow. It made another swing with its fist, only for the general to dodge it and show that she was used to being a spirit. 
She closed the distance and thrust a kick into the hollow's knee, creating a sickening snap as the limb shattered. At least I still have my strength. She thought while the hollow toppled over, howling in pain, before she caught the beast by the throat and threw it over her shoulder with the mask slamming into the ground. She turned for her next opponent, only for something to wrap around her leg and swing her about like a ragdoll. While she could, she trailed the tentacle back to the hollow it can from and found a ball of tendrils with sharp pointed teeth and naught else in the wriggling mass. There are as many different hollows as there are flakes of snow, General. Ichigo told her, standing next to her mortal body. Many have unique abilities or different attributes to their beings. You must be ready for any possibility. She didn't even see him unsheathe his blade as the tentacles holding her suddenly went slack, cut from the main body. That's your one time is death. Try to survive. He ordered as she fell to the ground, the hollow seeming to be frozen in fear looking at Ichigo. She took her chance. Just like any other hunt. Kill or be killed. Torture would be pointless. She reminded herself, charging forward and grabbing onto the tendrils of the hollow. This is M.Y. Hunt. She pulled and spun, twisting the hollow along with her, throwing it into the distance. She was about to continue her assault, but something sharp cut at her side and she found a huge crab-like hollow trying to pin her down with its feet and it was still stabbing at her. She felt pain, she felt vulnerable, she was without her power and her weapon, she felt, afraid. She wouldn't be able to beat the armored tank above her, and it wasn't even the biggest hollow there. She had to run. A boar mask, multi-armed gorilla hollow tackled the crab, goring its mask with a tusk, and shoved it aside before tearing into it. She took the chance to try and run, only to be stopped by the chain connected to her body. She turned back, embarrassed by this defeat, but also finding hope in a possible escape as the hollows continued to attack each other. She had to return to her body, that's how she'd escape, then she'd train herself to be able to stand against these monsters. But the moment she got within arm's length of her body, stylish quickly patching up the injuries that appeared on her body while the others try to help however they could, she was caught. Another tall, lean, gangly hollow with a weird tusked fish mask had her in its grasp and began to squeeze her, bringing the general to its waiting maw. So this is how I die. She thought, finding it somewhat fitting that only the monsters of the dead would be the one to finish her in this world of the strong devouring the weak. She waited for the snapping of jaws like a falling guillotine blade, only it never came. Instead, she was pulled away from the hollow's mouth before being dropped unceremoniously on the ground. When she looked back to them, they began bowing, praying, and singing some twisted hymn of worship, all directed to another hollow. A massive pillar cloaked in ragged blackness that stood taller than any tree or tower she saw in her life with a long spike nose on a white mask, but it wasn't that hollow the others seemed to be praising. It was the small humanoid figure, seated like a king, in the hands of the massive hollow that all the others seemed to worship. That figure's mask may have had horns, but she recognized everything else about it. Ichigo was acting like a king and the hollows were revering him like a god. How? She called out, hoping he could hear her over the warped symphony of the hollows, you've seen it for yourself, have you not? Ichigo answered, moving his hand and having the Jillian lower him to speak easier with the living soul of his death. The rule of the hollows is that the strong devour the weak, but they are cursed with an endless hunger for other souls. Some successfully evolve into a new state, very few are ever freed from their hunger, but only the strongest rules them all. He said, just before unleashing his Ryatsu and forcing his death and dozens of the weaker hollows to their knees. She tried to get up, only for the pressure to grow as more and more hollows were forced to submissive positions. Now she understood a fraction of the kind of beast the Shinigami was. I took the throne of the hollows, and I have only a select few hollows turned Erenkar to serve at my side. They are hollows that were granted the powers of soul reapers. He held out a hand and an aswachi covered in black and red flames came out. Catch! He said before flicking his wrist and sending the blade to her, and the general managed to catch it effortlessly after he released the pressure. 
What is this? She asked, feeling a dark power coursing through the sword. Vast and consuming, not insane like her demon's extract, but terrifying in how it burned. Take that sword and thrust it into your heart. Ichigo ordered, the sadist looking up to the hybrid. Once you do, you will take a portion of my power into you. It will transform you into a Shinigami and I will train you to be one of my soldiers. But understand this death. The chain connected to her chest rattled and went taunt, as if Ichigo was pulling it to him. She could even see tiny threads from the links going to him. I can take that power back. You may train with me and battle hollows, but break my rules, and I will take my power away. Do I make myself clear? He asked as she examined the blade, still burning with his power. To accept was to have a guarantee of more battles and the promise of greater power to fight, at the cost of her freedom. With honest, it was easy. She had more sway in that deal, more power, so long as he could give her fights then she'd support him. Here. Ichigo had all the power. She played nice, or she'd lose it and her chance for a grand war. Course she could walk away, but could she really? I'll follow your orders. She finally said, taking up the Aswachi and stabbing it into her heart. It was followed by a shockwave with a flash of light, with Ichigo flashing down and catching her hand before she could do anything. Aren't Shinigami meant to kill hollows? She asked, in traditional Shinigami attire with a low-cut top that would have displayed her taigu if she still had it, wielding a long and thin Nodachi Zanpakuto with her clan symbol as the guard of the blade. You against this many? Even with the small amount I gave you, it wouldn't be enough. He said, just before the giant hollow opened its mouth and stabbed through all of the smaller hollows with its tongue. Just wanted to remind you. Ichigo flicked his wrist and destroyed the Mino's head with a quick bala. The difference in power. Now get back into your body. He ordered before looking out to the distance, his death complying with his order. Were those Quincy I felt? Better step up security just in case. He decided as his death returned to the realm of the living and was welcomed with joy by her subordinates. Time skip, with Ichigo. It was an entire day after the siege on that bandit fortress and his death becoming a substitute soul reaper. Whether or not that was legal was not a concern to the hybrid as it was the only way to keep a leash on the sadist. She still didn't know that if he took back the power he gave then she would die, now was not the time for that. Eventually, but not at the present time. When the Jaegers returned to the capital that night, Ichigo went out to search. Hunting for whatever spiritual disturbance that was during the hollow attack, but found nothing. Almost as if it was both there and not, like a spirit Schrodinger's cat dilemma. After searching for most of the night, he returned to the Jaeger HQ and slept while in spirit form. When morning came, he tried talking to some of the Jaegers to get a better idea of who they were. Run was the first, and his questions really threw Ichigo through a loop. If I sacrificed my life, would you help me kill a monster? No one else was in the room or the base, so it was likely the question that Run tried to ask him yesterday before the mission interrupted him. He didn't even hide much else, so either he really hated whatever this monster was or he believed he wasn't strong enough to fight it. Ichigo had to explain that he didn't take offerings like that, Run nodding in understanding before asking if he'd kill a human if they were vile enough. Ichigo didn't answer. He wasn't supposed to make those calls. If he did, what gave him the right to do so? Run changed the topic after a bit of silence and they spoke of different matters. Ichigo got a sense of righteousness from the man, someone that would be a better teacher or politician than special forces soldier, but beneath that was a burning hatred of something or someone. What did this would-be monster do to the man? Next was Bowles, who arrived and prepared lunch for his teammates. Despite an appearance that would scare off a lot of people, he had the impression of a gentle giant despite his job and weapon. He purposefully avoided topics that related to his time in the incineration squad of the army and spoke fondly of his wife and child. Ichigo guessed that he was haunted by the lives he took, likely screaming they were innocent if the corruption of the empire had any part. 
In a way, Bowles reminded him of his teacher Yamamoto, a man that felt his list of sins far exceeded any good he may have done. Likely thought that he might go to hell for the things he did in life. The hybrid wanted to free him of that fear, but put it on hold. Would Bowles even believe him if he told him the true requirements to go to hell, or does he wish hell upon himself? Wave was next and Kurom was with him, hiding behind the former Navy officer the moment she saw the Soul Reaper. That, was not a productive conversation. Wave continued to prove himself similar to Tatsumi in so many ways, the two could be brothers. He was even the butt of a few jokes from the other Jaegers and the universe's sick sense of humor. Kurom, however, admitted to being Akame's sister and that they were part of the same assassination training course and that was all she said before munching on some of her candy. Which Ichigo took it and scolded her for her unhealthy eating habits before returning it after getting called a bully by everyone else in the room. Though he did keep a few pieces of candy for himself, wondering about the sweets after eating nothing but Akame and Tatsumi's cooking all this time. Saryu and Stylish came together as well, though Saryu did most of the talking. She wanted to know what happened to sinners, how justice is done in the afterlife, and if he already sent Captain Ogre to heaven yet, to which he responded with asking if she remembered every criminal she killed. When she went silent, Stylish changed the topic to how she's helped people as of late. That actually gave him some new insight into the girl, someone that wanted to help, but then why did she have the face of a savage in battle? What kind of damage must she have to be the way she is? Stylish, kept observing him, and he spent enough time with Kisuk and Mayuri to know that look. Dissecting, examining, undoing a puzzle and hypothesizing, he only asked Ichigo one question and it was to confirm his own suspicions of the relation between the soul and the body after its death as injuries. And back to the hideout. The Shinigami thought as he flew back to his and Night Raid's base. First thing he did was break the seal on the underground base and check on things there. Sheil was developing nicely, her blade changing to match her body with the guard resembling, scissors? Looks like that taigu of hers left quite the impression on her soul. Bullet and Daidara were sparring and recovered their aswachi, so all that was left was for the blades to change to their wielders. Maybe he'd let Shil perform Kanso unsupervised in the city soon. But for now, he shared a glance with Merrick and put a stronger barrier over the underground and added an illusory concealment keto to keep it hidden. Now, time for us to talk Akame. He whispered to himself, but someone heard him. About what Ichigo? Akame asked, appearing right behind the Soul Reaper. Ichigo looked to the girl in surprise and shock by how she pulled that off. I know she can mask her presence and remove killing intent, but how did I not sense her erasure? He wondered as he stood back up. You have a sister. He said, making her nod. And I have to kill her. She admitted, throwing Ichigo through a loop. The way she said it carried a tone of sadness and regret, anger and hate, but also pain. None of which Ichigo cared about because she just said she was going to kill her little sister. I tried to convince her to come with me when I chose to defect, but she chose to stay. She would probably say I abandoned her. Was she constantly eating something while you were there? Ichigo pulled out some of Kurom's candy, which she sniffed and tasted before sighing in disappointment. Drugs. She's too far dash Ichigo didn't let her finish slapping her really hard with a furious glare. What the hell is family to you Akame? He demanded, the assassin looking at him in shock. Do you really think you can just give up on your sister like that? How close were the two of you before you defected? If the answer is that you relied on each other, then how the hell can you just give up on her like that? Because I don't know any other way. She answered, crying out in anguish with tears running down her face. I'd do anything to save her if I could, but I can't if she won't let me. The only way I can think of is to give her a quick end, not letting those drugs destroy her. Then you aren't trying hard enough. He growled, making her look at him. The job of an older sibling is to protect the younger ones. When I have the time, I'm dragging the both of you to a neutral space, 
and you will talk it out. As for the drugs, Ichigo looked at the candy. I'll see what I can do. Now Akane was stunned. Can, can you save her? Ichigo merely looked at her and nodded. He was about to dispel the barrier and head down when Akane told him something else. Last I heard, Kurom should have a taigu called Yatsufusa. It reanimates the bodies of those killed by the sword-like puppets. That actually explained a lot to Ichigo, and became another matter on his to-do list. Then you can tell Knight Raid this, the Jaeger's number of six consist entirely of Taiga users. Not including his death. He warned, dropping into the underground cavern and heading for his lab station. Time to put Mayuri's chemistry set to work. Sometime later. Almost, there. The hybrid thought as he prepared to add a new chemical to a possible detox cure that would clean out Kurom's system from the performance enhancers that the Empire created to make her even with the other top candidates in that assassination program Akane told him about. He put the candy in the scanner, was told the exact chemical composition, and was given instructions on how to counteract it with easy-to-follow tips, almost as if Mayuri and Urahara were contacting him through the other side. Wouldn't surprise him if that were the case and he's not sure how he should feel about it, he's just happy to nearly be done with making the medicine. It had been a long time since he did anything chemistry related and it was not like riding a bicycle, muscle memory played no part in it. He did keep a steady hand, thanks to all the calligraphy practice with Yamamoto, now to add the final few drops to complete his project, then the ground started shaking. What the dash? He asked before a couple glass containers fell over and broke, mixing together haphazardly. Oh no. He said before it quickly blew up in his face, a flash of light, heat, and minor chemical burns that he healed from pretty quickly. His budding squad of spirits rushed to his side, about to ask what happened, when Ichigo silenced them with a single raised finger and they listened as the shaking continued. The hybrid flashed to the exit and left the underground chamber. Soon coming to face a rather large army of large thick muscled humanoids with what he could only describe as melted faces. Relief. Good. He said before holding out a Zanpakuto lengthwise. Hato number 32, Okasan. A ball light appeared before spreading along the blade and shooting out a beam of rasher, cutting through many of the freaks of nature. When he did, he heard a multitude of voices calling out, Thank you. He saw dozens of human souls appearing and fleeing from the battle, drawing a sickening conclusion of what this was to Ichigo. These used to be people and only one person had the means and ability to do something like this in the Empire. Next time he saw Stylish, would likely be the last. He sensed Night Raid's members coming out, but he sealed them and the base behind a barrier with a flick of his wrist. I'm cutting loose. Stay. He ordered, releasing the Shirkai of Zangetsu and facing the misshapen horde. He could sense that there were more, many more, this was just the mindless cannon fodder to start. If that were to be the case, then they would die as such. Let's see if I can't get this right. He said, sticking the kyber blade into the ground and raised his hand for a chop. Yura Hado, Sonoto, Tepazatsu. He called out, an eastern dragon's head with puffed up cheeks appearing as he chopped down. The dragon blew out a gust of wind that blasted most of the abominations back, along with a few broken bones if those snaps were any indication, but Ichigo felt his arm go numb and the creatures got back up and kept coming. Should have practiced that more. He sighed as feeling returned to his arm when he picked his blade back up. Getsuga Tensho. He roared, swinging a wave of black destructive energy that vaporized the horde. Impressive. He heard from behind as a blade hit the back of his neck. But you left yourself exposed. The voice sounded cocky, before gasping when he noticed Ichigo wasn't bleeding. He remembered a lesson continuously drilled into his skull. Never drop your guard. He said before twisting his trench knife blade and stabbing back impaling whoever on his Zanpakuto. That's something I learned the hard way. He tossed the body back to the horde remains and threw another Getsuga at them, just to ensure the abominations were destroyed. 
That's when Stylish's army appeared all around him and swarmed the Soul Reaper, catching nothing when he flashed above them with his bow at the ready and unleashing a barrage of arrows. The results were gruesome as the gathered pawns were shredded and then pulped by the arrows, Ichigo soon landing in the torn up and bloodied ground. Stylish's army was now fleeing, but before Ichigo could give chase, a large and thick muscled man with a dapper mustache, green jacket, and armored hands with a familiar pair of scissors on his back. Sorry, Soul Reaper, you won't be getting dash, he started to say before Ichigo appeared in front of him, punching with both fists. The result was a massive hole in the man's body as he fell dead, Ichigo continuing to his intended target. You made a bad mistake doc. Ichigo said to himself, seeing stylish with three others. A man with a ridiculous nose, a man with giant eyes, and a girl with giant ears. Ichigo may have been wrong about him having Yumichika's aesthetic sense. The mad doc seemed to think that now would be a good time to run, but Ichigo removed his Jigai ring and cut off his escape route before reappearing on the physical plane. Did you really think you could run? Stylish now looked scared. P please, Lord Shinigami. I just wanted to research the spiritual plane. I couldn't resist coming. He pleaded. A weak defense, the both of them knew it was. A and why are you protecting Night Raid? I heard that you weren't planning to involve yourself. He tried desperately for any way to avoid his coming doom. Same reason why I bother with his death. We made a deal. He answered before swinging his blade and letting the wind pressure from the swing send him and his cronies flying off into the forest. After that, he dispelled the barrier around the base and erected another few to box Stylish in. Night Raid, your own monsters, or me. Pick your poison you bastard. He roared, clearly not happy with the doctor after fighting his army. All those people that were modified humans, how many still had their minds or survived compared to how many must have been failures in comparison. He personally didn't want his own discount Mayuri, no matter how useful he may be. He watched as the danger beast humans charged at the doctor's location, what remaining soldiers he had trying to fight them off with one that looked like a cyborg with multiple weapons hidden in his body, but that was a losing battle. Stylish seemed to notice that and did something Ichigo didn't expect to happen. He pulled out a syringe and injected himself with whatever chemicals was inside. The effects were instantaneous as his body mutated, the upper half of his torso taking the place of a head and the rest appearing to be a crude suit of a monster's body that continued to grow larger and larger. I'll kill you. I'll kill all of you. Stylish roared as the change continued, starting to eat his own forces for nutrients as he grew bigger and bigger. When he stopped, he was the height of a Jillian Minos with the muscle of that Ion Chimera that Halibel's girls showed him some time back. A robot arm, that made no sense of how it was there but the Goliath monster had mechanical parts, and stylish himself like a zit on the creature's forehead. I will not fall here. He turned to face Ichigo, who was concentrating his power. Just what is humanity to you, stylish? He asked silently, flashing away at the last second when Stylish brought his fist down and was now standing level with the sole remaining human part, that bore a rage-filled look at the Soul Reaper. Just a word? Something to experiment with, to easily throw away? Ichigo's arms glowed red as he channeled his blood artery and got into a quick-draw stance. You make me sad. He whispered before the upper half of his clothes were shredded by pure energy. Hidetsum, Natajiri. He then slashed so quickly, no one saw it and he dispelled his poor attempt at Shunko, grimacing as his body stitched his muscles and bones back together with his clothes doing the same. Stylish's body split in half seconds later, along with leaving a gash in Night Raid's mountain base. Wow, what did I miss? Nagenda asked, flying in on a manta ray with two cloaked figures at her side. Illustrated Guide to Assassination Where was Night Raid? So Ichigo is basically going to force you to make amends with your sister? Tatsumi summed up after Akane told the group what the resident Soul Reaper told her. And that the Jaeger's police force is entirely made up of Taiga users. 
Does anyone else feel that he's doing more than he said he would? Ah, leave him to it. Leon shouted, drinking a pint of beer because why not? He's just doing whatever he wants and it's not like we can really stop him. She downed about half her drink when some of them noticed something off. Hey, is something shaking? First impressions. Susanu, he is certainly powerful, I wonder if that is even his full power. Are his clothes, regenerating? I must get that fabric. Chelsea, so that must be the guy that the boss says is the death god and a neutral force. Gotta say, he's certainly imperholy abs. Abs. Abs for days. I think I'm completely straight again. It's a miracle. Nagenda catching up. I know we have that agreement with Ichigo where he protects our base and all. But why didn't you lot do anything? The former general exploded at her team while her new humanoid Taigu, Susanu, packed the base up for the move to a new location. I know we're still reeling from the loss of Shiel and Bullet, said spirits looked at their former team while getting plenty of practice in Konso, but that is absolutely no excuse to just sit around and do nothing. Not like there was much they could do Nagenda. Ichigo said, coming to their rescue. I sealed them behind a barrier so they wouldn't get involved. I had some. Ichigo looked to the lab kit briefcase Merrick carried along with a restrained stylish, aggression to work out. By the way, I need spectator back. I told Makoto I'd get it to him. What? The boss roared, looking furious at Ichigo while he pulled out the Emperor's seal. It's so he can keep Choyuri alive. Nagenda looked at the seal, back to Ichigo, and sighed. I'll see what I can do. The hybrid was silent while the entire group from the night raid base made its way to a new location, the assassins on their flying manta ray danger beasts and Ichigo's team on a platform of rasher he made. Some of the group were enjoying the flight, some getting airsick, Susanu didn't react, and Daidara kept challenging Bullet and Merrick to arm wrestling matches. He had better luck against Bullet than Merrick, who was sitting on the restrained soul of Stylish while Ichigo physically carried the human head that was removed from the mutated danger beast body. Please, Lord Kurosaki, I can be of use. Stylish continued to plead, desperate to change what he thought his judgment and sentence to be. There are many things of this world I could teach you, make for you, just let me be your servant and dash. Merrick. Ichigo said, prompting the Aaron car to punch Stylish into unconsciousness, and leaving Ichigo to his thoughts. Ridding himself of Stylish would definitely be a negative in the practical sense, but his morals refused to allow him to have such a man at his side. Stylish was too reminiscent of Mayuri for his liking and he wasn't sure of yet who was worse. Not something he wanted to consider either. Nagenda eventually had them land in the Margu Plateau, 800 kilometers away from the capital, an incredibly hostile environment for humans that remains unexplored and unknown. A good place to hide, but he wasn't sticking around for long. This will be a good place to train until the situation in the capital dies down. Nagenda announced the game plan to her team while Bullet and Daidara helped Ichigo set up his lab, if only to get the analyzer slash teleporter ready. Thanks for honoring our deal Ichigo, but maybe you should be more careful if following you exposed us. Nagenda shot at the Shinigami. I could just go to the Empire and make my base there. Ichigo returned just as quickly, while cutting out stylish brain from his skull. I do spend a lot of time in the capital anyway. At least they've been respecting my privacy. Lubbock. Ever since he tested that intangibility bracelet, he kept trying to sneak in and take it for more peeping. The others were also guilty of trying to sneak about his training ground and lab, but due to their weak spiritual awareness they were unable to see anything not in the physical plane, though that didn't stop Merrick from punching them in the head every time they came down. Ichigo. It's done. Bullet called prompting Ichigo to ignore Night Raid from that moment on by removing his Jigai ring. He made his way over to the computer and started it up, the machines humming to life as he supplied them with Rasher. The glass tank opened up, ready to receive the first sample. Ichigo placed Stylish's physical, 
and slightly mutated, brain inside and started the analysis before typing in a message. If this is being received by Mayuri or Kasuk, I've got more body parts for you. Let me know if you're there. He said as he typed it out and waited. Within seconds, Stylish's brain was engulfed in light and disappeared from the world with the word, thanks, appearing. Next. Ichigo called out, causing Merrick to grab the squirming Stylish. The doctor woke up after they landed, but was gagged with a mouthful of Merrick's shirt. Dr. Stylish, I've ultimately decided to grant your wish. Try not to die. Mayuri is not gentle. Ichigo warned as the Aaron car stuffed Stylish into the tank, the man screaming all the while until the light flashed and he was gone. Well that was certainly gruesome. Daidara commented as Ichigo put his ring back on and grabbed Stylish's head, gesturing at Shield to come to his side. I'm heading back to the capital for a while. Might as well tell us death what happened to this guy. The hybrid said as a racer platform appeared under his feet, raising him and Shield into the air. Let's see how this goes. He said, just before they flew away at high speeds. Jaeger headquarters. It was morning at the base of the special police, Bowles and Wave were cooking meals for the team with Kurom, taste testing the food before anyone else, Run was reading a new book, only two other members were notably distracted, Isdeth and Saryu. The latter because she was concerned for a certain doctor that hadn't made any appearance since yesterday and the former because her favorite symphony of pain and torture was slowly becoming an irritation. Ever since Ichigo gave her some of his own spiritual power, she was exposed to the spirits of the world and there was no shortage of death still in the palace. Hundreds of voices crying out in anger at the prime minister, at her, at the cruelty of the empire, and she couldn't shut them out. It was the trial of her taigu all over again, only endless and she couldn't overpower it with her own will. The sounds of pain and suffering were becoming boring and annoying. Was it because she wasn't the one causing them or because they just kept on ringing in her ears? Either way, she didn't get much sleep last night as a result. She was looking into her cup of coffee, a desperate effort to fight off her tiredness, when she felt him coming. Ichigo is here. She announced, quickly standing up and heading for the door. Run and Saryu followed her while Bowles and Wave needed to put their cooking on pause so the meal wouldn't get ruined and joined their teammates as Ichigo descended like an angel from on high. Only as death could see the construct of Raishir and the former knight raid assassin at his side. What prompted this visit? The general asked before noticing a severed head in Ichigo's hands that he soon tossed to her. The hair had changed in length and color, but it was undeniably Dr. Stylish. He followed and attacked me. Ichigo answered the unasked question while shock and confusion ran through the rest of the Jaegers, Saryu feeling heartbreak and anger. I fought and killed him for that, especially when he threw his remaining humanity away in an effort to kill me. His sins are manifold and the fate I subjected him to is truly a hell for his black heart. His death could only sigh in acceptance and was about to order an investigation into the doctor, when a white blur flew past her and struck Ichigo, embedding him in the wall around the base courtyard. Koro, kill him. Sari roared, nothing but rage and hate in her eyes. There is no justice with him. The Shinigami doesn't understand justice. I'll ensure death knows justice. Koro turned big and bulky, punching at Ichigo with furious abandon. She'll wanted to stop this, help her comrade and commander, but Ichigo forbade her from interfering since he expected this would happen. The Jaegers wanted to act as well, but his death stopped them. This was Saryu's matter and if Ichigo didn't kill her, then she would. The poor girl fully cracked and to kill her would be a mercy. In a way, she pitted the poor soul. Koro, Numbers 2, 7, and 8. Saryu called out after Ichigo was sent flying into the middle of the street, making the Taigu jump back to her and switch out her right arm with a massive anti-tank barrel with her left arm gaining an arm-mounted missile pod and an additional four missile pods hanging on her back. Justice Volley Fire She roared, firing a barrage of missiles and anti-tank shells at the Soul Reaper. In the middle of the capital. 
Is she that crazy? Ichigo wondered in shock as the attack closed in on him. Bakudo number 81, Danku. He chanted, creating three long clear walls that he used to concentrate the volley and keep the populace safe. He didn't have the chance to focus on deflecting the attack on him and strengthened his hiero and blood defenses instead. The tank shell struck him like a punch with every hit and the explosions engulfed him in flames with every strike, Seryu laughing madly at bathing the man in fire. Take that, false Shinigami. She cackled madly, firing until she ran out of missiles. Koro. Number 6. The dog Taiga bit onto her entire upper body and spat her back out, with a massive armor reinforced missile with a large six on the body. Burn in the flames of justice. She shouted as she fired the missile, flying it straight down the path of Kido and straight to what she was sure was a pile of black viscera. The bomb exploded on contact, sending a tower of flame and pressure skyward and back to the Jaegers as the only places for it to escape. Its death generated a shield of ice to protect her and the others as they watched, the Jaegers and Sheel in shock, but herself with indifference. She wasn't even surprised to see Ichigo still standing and walking through the flames. Have to admit, that last one tickled. The hybrid said, marching down the path with a finger in his ear to quell the ringing. His body was burned and his clothes in tatters, but both were regenerating quickly. Seryu was stunned silent before growling in anger. Koro. Number 1. She shouted, having Koro bite onto her right arm and replacing it with a massive spiked ball. Die. She roared, throwing the ball at the Soul Reaper. Ichigo took hold of Zangetsu in its sealed state and flicked the steel ball aside, shattering it in the process. Seryu was undeterred. Number 4 and 5. Koro bit onto her again, replacing her left arm with a four-flanged hook shot and her right arm with a giant drill. Ichigo raised an eyebrow as she shot the hook past him and started flying toward him, the drill spinning at full capacity. As she closed the gap, Ichigo reinforced his right hand and caught the drill, stopping it in mid-spin. Upon doing so, Seryu released both arms and shot back seconds before the drill suddenly exploded. Seriously, how many explosives do you have? Ichigo asked, making his way through the smoke and fire once again. Seryu was panting from the rage and effort that was beginning to seem completely pointless with each one of her ten kings broken and out of ammo. Gritting her teeth in frustration, she was about to activate her last resort before Ichigo's next words froze her. Is killing me so important that you disregard everything around you? She looked around to see that the buildings were fine. No one was dead, but the street was in pieces. I've been containing the damage you would have caused in your rampage, so I demand you calm down. The keto he kept up was dispelled by his will and Seryu forced herself back from using the bomb in her head, cursing herself for her rage letting her forget about the innocents that might get involved. Koro, number 3 in Go Berserk. She ordered, having her taigu bite down on her right arm and switch it out for a large blade. Koro himself bulked up and went red, ready to fight at full force. The pair charged at the lone soul reaper, whose back exploded with power and cut both of them in half. Seryu fell, her last weapon broken in half, her body from the waist down was gone, and Koro was at Ichigo's mercy. The taigu started regenerating but was slashed to pieces until the core, a red orb the size of a baseball, was revealed and snatched away. Without its power source, the taiga's body shriveled up and withered away into dust. Captain, Doctor, Father. I'm sorry. She started crying with what remained of her strength, the thought of justice failing to match the death god flowing in her mind. For your sake, I hope you find soul society. Ichigo said as he reached Seria's body, gently took hold of her head, and snapped her neck to end her suffering. She'll ran up to his side and before she could say anything, he gave her his orders. I want you to deal with her. Remember what I said about unconditional equality and kindness. She doesn't get the chance to join us. He said, rising to his feet and going over to the Jaegers. 
most of whom seem conflicted about the situation. That's two of my subordinates you've killed. Is death said plainly to him, Stylish made a stupid choice in attacking you, but you caused Seriu to crack like that. How do you plan to make up for this? Ichigo raised his eyebrow at the general's audaciousness while she thought about how to make Ichigo pay. If I'm going to be a proper soul reaper, I'll need training. Why don't we discuss that while you take me on a date? She offered, shocking the Jaegers at the massive mood shift and surprising Ichigo. Say wa. He very intelligently responded, just before his death hooked an arm around Ichigo's and began to pull him away. Don't you remember? She said teasingly as she dragged him away. I choose you to fall in love with. Ichigo had to think for a moment before remembering what she wanted during their first fight. How does this keep happening? He sighed before going along with her. The rest of the Jaegers were stuck with damage control in the aftermath of the fight, Kurome and Run keeping the populace calm while Wave organized the repair job. Bowles was back in the kitchen when people kept running scared of him. With Sheil and Seriu, damned soul reaper. Seriu cursed as her soul left her lifeless body, gasping for breath as the struggles of a newly formed soul began. Nothing I did worked, it was pointless, what good is justice now? She wondered as tears started falling from her eyes. I. I even lost Koro. She struggled to hold it back, but she couldn't and began sobbing. I failed justice. I failed everyone. She cried out in anguish, more chains appearing and wrapping around her body while the one on her heart started pulling away and making a hole. She heard footsteps and saw someone she killed some time ago, the night raid assassin Sheil. Still with her purple hair and glasses, with a black Chongsam and a katana at her side, showing that the assassin was like Ichigo. A Shinigami. You, you're a soul reaper. How cruel is that Ichigo? You should be in hell. She roared, getting to her feet and charging at Sheil, who pointed two fingers at the former Jaeger. Bakudo number one, Sai. She calmly chanted, forcing Saryu's arms to lock behind her. The action threw off the girl's balance and she fell down, roaring and growling as she struggled to break free of the spell. She'll released a sigh in relief, thankful that her usual klutziness didn't affect her this time, and walked over to the thrashing girl. Even now you fight to try and condemn those you call evil, Saryu ubiquitous, even though those very emotions could turn you into a monster. She grabbed hold of Saryu's shoulders and lifted her to eye level. Kill me and get it over with, but don't dash, she started before freezing as she'll hugged her. It wasn't the act itself, but the feeling she felt in that hug. Nothing less than care and comfort could be found in that embrace, so warm and gentle that Saryu felt like she could melt away in those arms, and it terrified her to no end. She tried to fight back, but couldn't even find it in her to struggle. When I was growing up, I lived in the lower districts of the capital. Sheil said, holding Saryu gently in her arms. I was always clumsy and was called useless by pretty much everyone, but I did have one friend who didn't mind that part of me. One day, her ex-boyfriend came and attacked us. To protect her, I killed him and discovered the one thing I was good at. So I kept killing, always aiming my blade at criminals and those that hurt others. Eventually I was scouted by the Revolutionary Army, who showed me just how corrupt the Empire is and where I should direct my blade. She squeezed Saryu a little tighter, who felt more tears escape from her eyes. Maybe if we met sooner, we may have led different lives. She'll reached for her Zanpakuto and performed the Konso, lightly tapping Saryu's head and sending the former police girl off on the soul's journey. Find peace, Saryu ubiquitous. She'll said with a smile, rising to her feet and following after Ichigo. Unknown location. I'll be honest, if I didn't see your power in action first, then I wouldn't believe a single thing you just told me. A man in a hooded trench coat said to another figure clad in a white and blue military uniform. The pair were talking over a fire and roasting a boar-type danger beast, discussing the future of the world. But let me see if I understand this. There are powerful spirit beings in this world, 
with power so great that no taigu can threaten them, and the strongest of them is currently in the capital. You tell me that this person is a soul reaper and pretends to be all-powerful when he is just as mortal as anyone else, and that your kind, the Quincy, are trying to kill him. Am I correct? That certainly seems to be the gist of what is happening. The Quincy returned. If you are willing to help us in this mission, we will grant you the powers and abilities of the Quincy. Prove to be strong enough and our Lord may find it fitting to grant you greater power. The hooded man leaned back and thought about it, looking to a decimated village that held a battalion of the rebel army. All dead by that one Quincy, I did get a letter from my old man telling me to bring home something stronger than a taigu. He said before looking back to his companion, adopting a malicious grin. Can I do whatever I want? Our only desire is the death of Ichigo Kurosaki. If you can succeed with that, you can do whatever you want. Then I believe we have a deal. Illustrated Guide to Soul Reapers Stylish Fate Ichigo said he'd grant his wish, to research the realm of spirits and souls. Now here he was, in a lab with technology he never even dreamed of, more sophisticated than anything the Empire could have supplied him with. It was supposed to be his heaven, but Ichigo did warn that Mayuri was not gentle, now he wondered if he was in hell. I would compliment you on your accomplishments, but most of these were things I've finished before I was even a captain. The deranged skeletal clown man said before pushing another needle into stylish skull. But, you might prove somewhat useful to the members of Project Spearhead. Let's see how that will go, after we test if you can be turned into an AI. Mayuri drove another needle in, making stylish cry out in agony. Don't worry, the data will definitely be secured. But you'll die. Painfully. The lieutenant promised before activating the device and stylish could feel his mind getting drained, slowly. Memories, ideas, all of it was disappearing and he couldn't do a thing to stop it. He screamed in horror seconds before he began to forget the faces of the other Jaegers. Justice lives on. Get back here. Ganja yelled out, riding his boar. He was chasing a short bald thief from the lower districts and has been avoiding capture for a long time. Now they found him and Ganju wasn't about to let the little bastard escape. Now if only Bonnie was better at getting around corners. You can't run forever you thief. Ganju roared as the man ran into the winding alleys, laughing the whole way. I'll never be caught by a goof like you. He said before getting kicked in the face and falling flat on his back. Filthy criminal. Have you no shame? A girl yelled out, quickly moving into a practiced submission hold. I got him sir. She called out to Ganju, who analyzed the girl. She seemed to be in her mid-twenties, had auburn hair that was kept in a ponytail that reached her shoulders, and wore a green shirt and shorts. Thanks Mississippi. Ganju said as he cuffed the criminal before throwing him onto Bonnie's back, punching the man unconscious for good measure. You seem new around here. What's your name? Ganju asked her, killing her earlier good mood. I. I can't remember. I don't remember anything. She admitted, looking depressed as she couldn't recall a thing from her past. I just know that I can't stand criminals and injustice. Ganju smiled and placed a hand on her shoulder. Well, if you can't remember your name, pick a new one. As for the other thing, you're in luck. He proudly announced before pointing at himself. I'm Ganju Shiba, third seat of Squad 14 and head of the West Rukon Division. Our squad dedicates ourselves to keeping the peace in the Rukon districts, and there's always a need for new recruits. The girl smiled at the idea of being able to help keep the peace. Come on, I'll take you to one of the training facilities so you can get started. He climbed onto his boar and held out a hand. The girl thought for a moment before grabbing it. Call me Masayoshi. She said with a smile. The icy general led him to one of her favorite stops in the capital, a simple ice cream stand. Apparently a regular as when the owner spotted her, 
he immediately scooped out two balls of white and green and gave it to her despite the line. Ichigo wasn't surprised, not when he thought of the corruption in the capital and the terrifying reputation that his death maintained. The hybrid got himself a chocolate cone and the pair sat down, ready for a potentially lengthy discussion. Shiel wasn't with them as Ichigo ordered her to patrol the city for wandering souls. So, his death started. I've seen soul reapers and I've seen hollows. I watched as you commanded the latter with absolute authority and apparently make more of the former at your leisure. Ichigo watched her as the two licked their frozen treats. You've already told me that regular souls can become hollows and I'm guessing that any soul has the potential to become a shinigami, but some are closer to unlocking that potential than others. The only thing you haven't told me is the so-called enemy that you're facing. The general surmised, going over everything she's observed. Did I miss anything or can you tell me what kind of enemy it is that you need to gather your own forces? There is something I didn't tell you about hollows, but that's not important. For now at least. Ichigo started, getting that out of the way now since he doubted the different levels of Minos Grande would ever be relevant for the general to know. As for the enemy I face, they are called Quincy. Ichigo held out his hand and manifested a Quincy bow. Quincy are spiritually aware humans that learn to manipulate ambient spirit energy into weapons like this bow. Seems like something useful, but unfortunately they were unable to purify souls and instead often destroyed them. One Quincy in particular became their king and somehow made it so any Quincy connected to him could feed him power with every soul they slay. This forced the soul reapers into action with committing genocide on nearly all Quincy, except for two families as far as I know my mother's and my cousin's. The first tried to stay out of the fighting while my cousin's family wanted to work with the Shinigami. But if Soul Reapers tried to destroy all the Quincy, why would they want to work with their destroyers? She asked, confused since Ichigo was against her strong devour the weak philosophy. And how are you a Soul Reaper if you're also a Quincy? My soul has the powers of a Soul Reaper, Quincy, and Hollow making me a hybrid being. Ichigo answered, dispelling his bow. As for why my cousin wanted to do that, why I wanted to help in that, is because our grandfather and previous Quincy master was among the last of the Quincy that supported coexistence, since the Shinigami were more of a reactive force rather than an active force. Not enough in the world of the living to protect all the souls. And the enemy Quincy survived the war and are building an army? Is death guessed. To think a war on such a scale happened and no one knows about it. I'll tell her later. Ichigo thought, not wanting to reveal the multiple dimensions beyond the realms of the dead just yet. And their king is still alive. He said, surprising his death. The ultimate enemy of my mentor, the current commander of all Shinigami, for over a thousand years he's been building his strength and biding his time. Ichigo clenched his fists thinking of what he almost lost and what Yawach tried to take from him. And I will end this war once and for all. He promised. His death just watched him, breathing in his killing intent. Sounds like Ichigo's promise of a good battle will be kept. Enemies that threaten the balance of existence itself, that would be a grand battle to be a part of. Time skip. Because. A month had passed since that day, nothing of great note occupying the time. The training Ichigo had Shiel, Bullet and Daidara go through finally paying off as each one managed to attain their respective Shirkai. Shields and Daidara resembled their Tigus while Bullet had a spear with a large blade, explaining to Ichigo that it was similar to Incursio's auxiliary weapon that could be summoned. With that power under their belts, Ichigo gave them a pass to join in the patrols of the capital. Bullet and Daidara were in a pair, searching the outskirts and edges of the capital while Ichigo and Shiel mainly patrolled the city itself. Despite his declared loyalty to the hybrid, Ichigo still didn't trust Daidara to not report Night Raid's location to his death when he learns she can now see spirits. Speaking of his death, her training was going much slower. Since her humiliation with the Hollows, she realized her over-reliance on her Taigu. Without it, she wasn't nearly as effective in combat. 
To fix that, Ichigo set up a some simple rules. When they're training, she cannot use her taigu at all. If she breaks that rule, then the training is over. No spirit form for either of them until she can battle without using her taigu. In two weeks, she only managed to get ten minutes of actual training time with him. To fix that, she trained with Wave and Kurome to make up for the lack of training with Ichigo as her partner. She ordered them not to hold back, wanting it to be as close to her training with the Shinigami as possible. It had the added benefit of helping Wave and Kurome improve their skills as well, becoming trusted partners on the battlefield. Kurome also got a lot closer to Wave, since the armor user also tended to get beat up pretty badly and she helped patch him up. That training did bear results as his death had become less reliant on her taigu, managing to get up to an hour by the end of the month. That was enough for Ichigo to decide it was time for proper Soul Reaper training, but he needed to take care of some other things first. The first thing was the one he felt the most uneasy about, suspecting that some Vandenray Quincy made their way into the dimension. If they did, then that means Yawach found him and sent an assassination squad after him. That, or the Quincy would start recruiting from other dimensions like he was doing. Either way, he needed to put a stop to them before they gained too much of a foothold in this world. The only problem was finding them and Ichigo was unable to find even a trace of their presence since that bandit fort. There was also that second matter he's been meaning to get to, forcing the two sisters to talk. During what free time he had between patrols and training, he stole some more of Kurom's drugged cookies and began working on an antidote. It took him a few days to set his lab back up and a couple of weeks to make the detox medicine, but he was eventually successful. The next step was to get the sisters to actually sit down and talk, without trying to kill each other. Akane would be easy to convince to do this, she wants to save her sister. Kurom, might need to be forced, on second thought, he'll probably restrain and drag her there. When Ichigo told Akame it was time, she said she'd be waiting at the ruins that lie in the Gyu forest in the outskirts of the empire. It was an important place to her and Kurome. Now Ichigo just needed to get Kurome. Gyu forest, later that night. Akame was sitting amongst the ruins in the forest, just like she told Ichigo where to be. It was a nostalgic place, her old training ground with her sister while they were still together in service to the Empire. Now it was either the last chance they might have to be together as siblings or Ichigo would pull off a miracle and bring them together again for good. This place was neutral ground, she had no weapons with her and all she had to do was wait. You ready to talk it out? She heard him say, appearing out of nowhere with that insane speed of his. The assassin turned to see him, carrying an unconscious Kurome over his shoulder. Don't worry, she's fine. I've just been running out of patience lately and... I was less than generous with giving her a choice. The hybrid informed her as he sat Kurome against a wall. Ready? He asked her, came nodding in response. Ichigo snapped his fingers in front of her face, waking the girl up. Only he saw the small flash of Kido from the wake-up spell. Wa, where? Kurom asked, tired and groggy, as she tried to stand up. What happened? She got to her feet and froze as she slowly recognized her sister, the most precious person in her world. Sis, big sis. She cheered with happiness at seeing her dearest sibling, while reaching for her weapon and only grabbing air. What? Ichigo wanted us to talk. Akame told her younger sister. And he said we weren't going to kill each other. Kurome looked to the side to see the Shinigami and then analyzed her sister to find no weapons. I never told him that we already said all that we could to each other, and he insisted on this meeting. Ichigo perked up slightly, not knowing the extent of what Akame tried to do already. I already tried asking you to leave the empire behind. Leave the drugs and the killing, try to find a way to extend your life from the damage your training did to you. And what was your response? Akame asked her sister, who looked away, knowing the extent of the damage to her being. I told you that leaving the Empire would be a betrayal of our fallen comrades. Kurome finally answered. 
It would also make our comrades at the time my enemies, and I couldn't bear to lose our comrades. Losing you was rough, but I found a way to keep you with me forever when I kill you. And I thought the only way I could save you was by ending your life. Akame admitted, looking to Ichigo. But someone reminded me that the job of the older sibling is to protect the younger ones, and I've done a pretty poor job of that in retrospect, haven't I? Her hand went to her forehead, as if trying to hold back her tears. I have should have tried to save you sooner. Should have tried harder to get you away from that place, even if I had to force you. Kicking and screaming. I could never abandon my allies, even if the capital is mired in as much sin as it is. Kurom admitted, twitching and feeling her own head as it started to throb. I can't leave my allies, can't leave the empire. She started to shake, it had been too long since her last dose. Okay, I'm starting to think there was a little bit more than drugs and trauma at play. Ichigo suddenly said, walking up to Kurom. Tell me, was there a special facility during your training? He asked, Kurom desperately trying to remember all the details. A room. A room where we were put to sleep sometimes. She said, picking out bits and pieces from her memory. Then she doubled over and started screaming in pain. Kurom. Akeem cried out, terrified for her little sister and being torn by her own inability to help. Guess that's out of time. Ichigo muttered, pulling out a syringe and stabbing it into Kurom's neck. He quickly injected the specialized detoxification antidote into her bloodstream and waited for it to take effect. It was quick in coming with the girl gagging before violently vomiting up a disgusting yellow and black bile from her stomach. Kurom. Akame cried out, running to her sister's side as she began shaking rapidly and occasionally coughing up more bile. The color of which also shifting to green and red as years of poisons were forcibly expelled from her body. The assassin took her little sister into her arms, holding her to herself as she began to sweat profusely. She's burning up. Akeem said, feeling her sister's forehead. What did you do to her? She demanded from Ichigo as he took her away from the night raid member. Full and rapid detoxification. Ichigo answered, his own brotherly instincts compelling him to hold the girl in a comforting manner. I said I'd help, but I never said it'd be pleasant. This is too many years of too many drugs being forcibly expelled from her system. To say nothing of her rehabilitation, she's going to be in for a rough few weeks to months. Ichigo began to turn and walk away when Akane grabbed his cloak. You told me to talk it out with her, and we did. She said, holding tight onto the Soul Reaper. Now you're taking her away? You're taking her back to the Empire? Why? Did you do this just to take her away from me again? Are we going to have to be enemies Aga Dash? Just be patient I came. Ichigo suddenly said. If it wasn't for my insistence that he do things fairly and justly, demanding he has evidence before publicly condemning the Prime Minister, Makoto would have had Honest's head on a spike long ago. He turned and smiled at the red-eyed assassin. Don't worry I came, I promise you that you'll be reunited as sisters. I came felt her face heat up, the Shinigami seeming like her own guardian angel and the promise making her place her full faith in him. The only other sound was Kurom throwing up on Ichigo's chest. Unknown Mountain Range Two days passed since the talk between the sisters and Kurom's forced detox treatment. Isdeth was not so pleased with the condition her subordinate was returned in, sickly and weak, but was willing to ignore it in favor of it saving the poor girl's life. Wave and Bowles were on nursing duties while Kurom recovered from the ordeal and his death was calmed with Ichigo's offer to have a full day of training with him instead of the small portions she's been forced to make do with. Makoto was also informed of what happened to Kurom and he ordered Budo to launch a surprise investigation into the matter, intending to shut down the drug and brainwashing operations with due haste. Till then, his death was enjoying her time with Ichigo. Here I come. The general shouted, in her Shinigami state with her body laying off to the side. 
Both her and Ichigo were at the summit of a random mountain in the outskirts of the capital, giving the general the combat she craved for. She charged at him with a downward swing, only for it to get brushed aside with ease and pushed back in the same motion. She turned and let the momentum help with the next swing, only for it to be caught in his fingers. I can't help but feel like this isn't helping you make any progress. Ichigo said before ripping the nodachi from her hands and striking her in the gut, knocking the air out of her and making her drop to her knees. Take 5. The hybrid casually ordered before returning her blade. He was about to take a seat when three danger beasts made their presence known, slowly stalking toward Isdetha's body. He put his jigai ring on and quickly killed the beasts with a single swing of one of his zampakuto before tossing them aside. All the while, Isdeth watched his two blades with interest. When we fought the first time, you only used one sword. I think it was called, Kyoka Suijetsu. The general suddenly said, gaining Ichigo attention as he removed his ring. The second time you used the other, said Zengetsu, and it became two blades. Is there something I should know about these swords of ours? Ichigo looked at her before unsheathing Zengetsu. Did you, even for a second, wonder why the sword you plunged into your chest changed so much? He asked, holding the single sealed blade in front of her. The Zampakuto is more than just the sword you wield as a soul reaper, it's a reflection of yourself. Each blade unique to its master and its abilities represent that. My Zangetsu, the blade splitting into its dual knives, represents the two parts of my soul, Quincy and Shinigami. The hollow is mixed with the Shinigami, before you ask. He said, making his death close her mouth. When you learn the name of your Zampakuto, you release its Shirkai and the special abilities of that Zampakuto. But if the Zampakuto is unique to its wielder, why do you have two? She asked, pointing to his sheathed blade. Is that because of the vast amount of power you command? Yes and no. Ichigo answered, resealing Zangetsu and sheathing it while grabbing Kyoka's hilt. I have this blade from someone I fought to the death, using a forbidden technique of my Zangetsu. Doing so took his Zampakuto away from him and made it my own, which I didn't see coming at the time. Does that mean you have a way to continually grow stronger? She asked, fascinated by the unlimited potential it represents. At the cost of another's life. Ichigo insisted. And I don't like doing so. I am content with the blades I currently have. Isdeth stayed her tongue, knowing better than to try to push the angle. Instead she held out her blade, wondered, and changed the topic. How does a Zampakuto get its name? The spirit of the Zampakuto will tell you in time. She blinked in surprise at that information. The Zampakuto has its own spirit, like her devil's extract had the remnants of the danger beast's mind? When the Zampakuto deems you worthy of its power, then it will speak to you. But you just told me that the Zampakuto is a reflection of the wielder. Why would it hold its power back from the rightful master? Just because it's a reflection, doesn't mean you know what's looking back. Ichigo answered, thinking back to some of his comrades that held their own powers back. The strongest fighter I've known was unable to summon the power of his Zampakuto for the longest time until he learned to accept his own power. He was terrified of his own strength because no one was ever strong enough to match him, so he subconsciously held back. If you want to hear the voice of your own Zampakuto, is death, you'll have to be willing to accept everything about yourself, even the parts you might hate. The general looked to her long katana and thought back on her life, believing that it was all pretty simple for her. I can't hear anything. She admitted, gazing deep into the blade. Just then, underneath their feet, a yin yang symbol flashed into life with four li trigrams surrounding it. The sudden appearance surprised the pair and soon made them vanish. No trace of the Shinigami, or Isdetha's body. They were gone. That ought to take him out of the picture. A man said while removing his hooded trench coat, revealing a lean and fit tan skinned man with an X scar between his eyes. He also had white hair and golden eyes and wore a small skin tight shirt. But that's only temporary. 
I thought you guys wanted him dead. It's only by my power that we're even alive. The man's companion said as he put on his uniform, though the man himself was transparently clear. Though they were out of danger, his voice still shuddered in fear. Ichigo Kurosaki is not someone to underestimate Sayura. It's better to secure our standing among the court now and wait for the proper moment to strike. If anyone has a chance to best that monster, it would be my king. I still haven't met this king of yours, but fine. The name Sayura acquiesced as they began to head for the capital. I was planning to wait until my team got here to announce myself, but I can't wait to show you guys off. He said with a twisted smile. Ichigo and his death stood on a beach, the latter slipping into her body while the former examined their surroundings. What the hell happened? Illustrated Guide to Special Police Kurom's Kidnapping Kurom and Wave were at the meeting table, the former cleaning out the latter's wounds from their latest training session with his death, Run was reading in the corner, and Bowles was making a nice dinner to help cheer up his teammates. Isteth was making notes of strategy and her progress in making herself independent of her taigu. Hey guys. I'm taking Kurom. Ichigo announced, suddenly appearing in the meeting room. Before anyone could react, he held a hand in front of Kurom's face and the girl slumped over unconscious. I'll return her later. He said, throwing her over his shoulder and disappearing. What? Wave shouted. Captain. We need to go dash. It'll be fine. Not like any of us can stop him. The general said, casually dismissing the kidnapping. But. I just finished baking cookies. Bowl said sadly, holding a steaming tray of cookies. Kurom's return. Wave was pacing about nervously, worried about his teammate and partner. He was torn between going after his partner and obeying his superior. Just as he was about to don his grand chariot and run out, Ichigo reappeared with Kurom in his arms. Take her. He said, passing the girl to Wave. She's detoxing from all the steroids and drugs in her systems. She'll be out for a while. He turned to his death, who was about to confiscate Wave's taigu before Ichigo showed up. She'll also be drastically weakened without the drugs to boost her strength, but she'll have a longer life. I need to go clean my clothes. He said before disappearing again. What do you think he meant by that? Wave asked, just before Kurom coughed up some bile into his face. Never mind. Ichigo's cleaner. Susanoo was setting his team's laundry out to dry when something fell on his head. Clean that up for me, would ya? Ichigo called down from high above before flashing to the hot spring. The living taigu pulled the thing off his head, glaring to the sky before realizing what was in his hands. The regenerating fabric. The taigu thought in awe as he beamed, looking at the clothes. What the hell happened? Ichigo asked, taking in the sight around him. The smell of the ocean, the warmth of the sun, the feel of the breeze, the tropical scenery behind them, and it all felt too real to be an illusion. His training with Kyoka Suijetsu made him intimately familiar with such things and he doubted any illusion of this world would hold him for long. He knelt down to the ground and tried to feel it out, sensing a large amount of rasure now in the earth. Hey is death, is there a taigu that can transport people great distances? He asked the general as she went to his side. Now in her body. I've heard that there are taigu with spatial abilities. She answered, also trying to figure out where they were. Unless you know of some abilities that can do that. A couple actually. Ichigo admitted, making his death sigh as she expected that answer. But the one that's similar to this is not one that I have mastered as of yet. He guessed this might have been a sign that he's been neglecting his own studies, Hachi did include plenty of his own barrier spells in that mix and they've always been useful. Especially his works with, time regression. No telling when Ichigo might need that ability. Before anything else, we should get an idea of our surroundings. On it. Is death said, placing her hand on the ground and creating a pillar of ice that shot them high into the sky. 
The end result confirmed what the pair already suspected, they were on an uninhabited island in the middle of who knows where. Quite the beautiful sight. Almost as if this were a date. You're certainly thirsty. Ichigo sighed, just before noticing a mountain suddenly moving. Ichigo quickly recognized it as the same kind of creature Stylish turned himself into in a desperate attempt to kill him. Should have figured Stylish might have had more of those abominations hidden away. He muttered, glad that he sentenced the mad doctor to Mayuri's care. The colossal monster turned toward them and began to charge, desperate to kill its targets. This should be fun. Isteth said with a smile, crossing her arms and readying the power of her taigu to create a barrage of icicles, only to get chopped on the head by Ichigo's hand. No taigu. He told her, you kill it without your ice powers. Is now really the time for that? She growled as the giant beast came bearing down on them. Trial by fire. Prove your strength. The hybrid answered, walking off the ice pillar, just as the behemoth slammed into it. The pillar snapped just above the monster's shoulder, with his death running down the length and toward the danger beast. Aim for the person on the forehead. Ichigo called down, seeing a smirk on the general's face. She may get annoyed by being limited in her weaponry, but she couldn't deny the thrill of the challenge it forced on her. Enjoying the title of Empire's Strongest, and the Taigu that could be called the strongest of them all, made her forget the proper rush of battle. This is my path, she thought to herself while charging toward the vulnerable human body on the head, I chose this path in order to fight in grander battles. Was I the strongest because of my powerful Taigu? No. I got my Taigu for being the strongest. The colossal danger beast swung its massive hand toward her, attempting to crush her like an ant. At the last moment, she jumped in between the beast's fingers and threw the attack to land on its arm. I didn't need my Taigu when I was rising in the ranks, I don't need it for every battle, when did I get so reliant on it? She thought while fighting down the urge to summon a massive spear of ice to impale the danger beast through the head, instead jumping with all her might toward her target. She closed the distance in seconds and swung at the restrained human body that was her target on the beast, cutting the figure in half. Ichigo nodding as he evaluated from high above. Hmm, six out of ten. Ichigo said to himself, watching the beast fall over dead with his death riding it the way down. She already had an advantageous position and it looked like she was about to use her taigu for a moment. Not to mention, that was a pretty obvious weak point if you could get to it. He then noticed another colossal danger beast, only without the human on the forehead, looked like it was partially melted, had two normal arms instead of one mechanical one, and wearing armor on its chest. That should be more interesting. He commented as it charged toward Isdetha's location. Another one? She asked, panting from the effort in killing the first colossal danger beast. Fine. Come to your death. She roared as the behemoth came to her, bringing its hand down to grab and crush her. She ran underneath the hand and toward the legs of the beast just before it struck the ground. The ground shook with the force of his strike, making his death trip up a bit with the sudden seismic shakes but she managed to keep her stride despite the tumble. When she regained her balance, she jumped up to the beast's arm and stabbed her blade into its flesh. She grunted from the thick resistance in the monster's flesh, though it gave her a good hand hold as it brought its arm up to look at her. She pried her blade free and charged to the head, the danger beast swinging its hand down to smash her. The process went on like that, she dodges the crushing blow, jumps onto the other arm, and continued on her way. From the beast's left forearm to the right wrist, running from the wrist to the elbow and bicep, jumping from the bicep onto the back of the left hand and jumping into the armored collar from a very narrow window of opportunity. Die! She roared out, aiming her saber at where one would assume would be a vital artery of the beast. Unfortunately, her waning patience and physical exhaustion caused her thrust to be off and affected her judgment in the thickness of the monster's flesh, causing the saber to bend and snap. Damn it! She growled, throwing the hilt aside while avoiding some of the blade fragments. I said die. 
She roared out again, giving up on killing it without her taigu and summoned up some ice spires. Three massive icicles speared into the beast, into the stomach, chest, and head, killing the beast and ending the fight. Damn it! I failed. She continued to growl, the bitter taste of defeat on her tongue. To be fair, we didn't know of the second one. Ichigo said, suddenly appearing in front of her. He held out a hand, that she took, and he led her onto the racer platform he was using to fly before bringing them back down. That was actually a little unfair to you, and I only said to kill the first one without your taigu. Which you did, you also said I shouldn't rely on it so much. She said back to him. That doing so would only hinder me while in spirit form. Because you don't have your taigu with you in that state. Ichigo returned. When you achieve your shirkai, it will likely be an ice elemental type. Type? I thought you said every Zanpakuto is unique to its wielder. She said as they reached the ground, Ichigo grabbing a few fruits along the way. And they are. Every Zanpakuto takes a different form, but they usually end up in one of three categories. Melee, Keto, and Elemental. The first is usually a full change in the weapon used, like a katana turning into a large axe or spear or something new for a new melee style. Keto types use specialized abilities, like Kyoka Suijetsu's ability of complete hypnosis, or this one I know that turns children's games into attacks. The last is the elemental class, which you are already familiar with since your taigu is similar to my master Zanpakuto. My master Zanpakuto is a fire elemental and is considered the strongest offensive power among the 16 squads of soul reapers, with complete control of fire. So same principle but a different element. She concluded, wondering what powers might reveal themselves in the future. As much as I'm enjoying learning about my potential, we should explore our surroundings to figure out where we are exactly. And our escape? Ichigo asked, already thinking about how much energy he might expend flying himself back to the capital before adding his death to that equation. Tame a flying danger beast, or that taigu that sent us here might have a return effect. Isdeth answered. Let's look around first to gather information first. Damn. Damn. Damn it. The good prime minister growled while he was stuffing his face on what resembled a large turkey leg, furiously chewing away and attempting to savor every bite while he poured over his reports, but his agitation made the meat taste bland. I'm losing more funds, two more nobles that pay me are arrested, the assassination unit is getting purged because I wanted to ensure their loyalty and effectiveness, and that damn brat is wasting money on those beneath us. He growled, furious that Makoto took more of the coffers to fund his clean-up programs. Three full meals, healthcare, and a generous day's wages for the job of cleaning up the city streets and repairing damaged buildings in the capital. With tools and equipment all supplied by the government. Fewer people were buying drugs from his dealers, less people were entertaining some of his friends among the nobility and courts, and the quality of the gourmet they enjoy in the palace dropped significantly. All because that brat cares about his people, the worthless masses and not the people that actually run the government. How could this all fall apart, trouble father? He heard a familiar voice call out, turning to find a face he had not seen in quite some time. Maybe I could be of assistance. Sayura, my son, you finally returned. Honest said with a smile, not in joy of his child's return but at the addition of another useful pawn. How were your travels and did you follow my instructions? He asked, praying that his son managed to secure something that will be an ace against the soul reaper that's been ruining his life. The rest of the world proved to be an interesting place with the only other advanced nation being the Western Kingdom. The scarred face man answered. The North and South nations don't even have firearms and I was unable to reach the Eastern country, but I did manage to find plenty of talented people to serve as a new team and secured most of us a taigu. As for the last thing, find something to kill a god of death, that one pretty much fell into my lap. Honest leaned in, interested in hearing what his son had found. A group that came from another world, called the Quincy. 
They have a strong battalion and can make more Quincy if the people are willing to fight for them. And they have an interest in killing your Shinigami troublemaker. Ichigo Kurosaki, I think his name is? That's wonderful news my boy. Honest shouted, smiling madly at the thought of finally being rid of his ultimate problem. When can I meet them? My team will be here after they meet with the boss of the Quincy and get extra powered up. The dark-skinned man said. As for a representative of the Quincy, he's been here the whole time. Honest was surprised and looked around the room, searching for the representative before settling on his son. I think. I can never keep track of that guy. Sayura admitted. I'm only seen when I want to be seen. A voice suddenly said as the father and son finally saw a man in a white military uniform standing between them. He had wavy, slicked back blue hair, a hard and chiseled face, and pale white skin. Sternritter H., The Hidden. Makiri Zaljan, at your service. He said, with a slight bow. You must be honest. He faced the Prime Minister, hiding a look of disgust and contempt for the fat man. My comrades and I have no issue with assisting you, but I'll need to know what we can expect in the way of assets. Ichigo Kurosaki is more dangerous than you think. I understand. Honest admits, already thinking of how he might be able to worm his way into a good position with this new group. I still have a few of the head civil officers in my pockets and I am the prime minister, though that position is currently being shared. If my partner could disappear, I could have full authority again, especially if you have some way to put that brat back under my control. Zaljan was nodding as he tucked the information away in his mind. Several martial arts masters and plenty of thugs willing to fight anyone for coin. Also, if that fool will do his job, I have a man that will be taking over this religious movement called the Path of Peace. Plenty of people are part of that sect and could give us plenty of fodder to use. And finally, my own taigu. He said, pointing to his headwear. Aristone, able to destroy any other taigu. That may be useful in the future, should the matter come to that. He finished, the Quincy nodding the whole while. I won't say anything about his death. I'm starting to think her battle lust is leading her away from me. Though, for the chance to fight him again, I'm hoping she'd take this opportunity. He thought to himself. I see. Makiri finally said before disappearing from sight. I'll bring this up with my king. He may have some use of you, but you'll have to declare your undying devotion. He's generous to his vassals, but unforgiving to his enemies. And just like that, the man was gone. So long as I can enjoy my long life to the fullest, I don't care about anything else. Honest thought with a satisfied smirk the turkey leg tasting delicious to him again. With Ichigo and his death. The two continued to gather information about the island they were stuck on, studying the flora and fauna, learning the new time zone, hunting and fishing for meals, and using his death as present knowledge of the geology of the empire gave them a rough idea of their present location. Her best estimate was somewhere along the southeastern edge of the empire, though the distance from the mainland was unknown. During this entire time Ichigo kept watching and studying his death, trying to satisfy his curiosity of the general. While they did talk of their history, Ichigo was reluctant to share too much about his family but he did get a lot more information on her in exchange. I've compared her to Zaraki, but it's probably more accurate to compare her to Unohana during her time as the Kenpachi. Ichigo thought while the general stripped off her top, showing off her swimwear and taking a relaxing dip in the ocean water. But where she killed to soothe her bloodlust, Isteth has always enjoyed torturing her victims. He thought back to the story she told him of the Parda's clan and the hunts she was part of, how some of her favorite hunts required the prey to still be alive while she carved out her prize. She's perfectly sane, but an amoral sadist. Well, if she follows the animal mindset then I can and will tame her. I am the king of hollows, he thought in finality, but there was still something he needed to know from her. Hey is death. He called, gaining her attention while she held up a shell, why did you want to fall in love? 
why? Let's see. She said, putting a finger to her chin as she thought. I guess it was simple curiosity at first. Like I said the first time we met, I wondered what it would be like to fall in love. You appeared and met every single criteria I was thinking of in a lover, almost as if we were destined for each other. I'll admit, I was planning to be the more dominant partner in this relationship, but you've matched and exceeded me at every step. I want you, to make you mine, I desire to stand on your level, to make you look at me in a way to let me know we are each other's. The general said, blushing more and more before raising her hand to her chest, smiling the whole while. You have so much to offer. And what are you willing to do to make it work? Ichigo asked, surprising her. You've made a gamble in the sacrifice for power when I gave you the power of a soul reaper, which was a little unfair when I think about it. Will you abandon the empire if I ask? Will you stop torturing people I say shouldn't be tortured? What are you willing to do with and for me that proves your commitment to being my lover? She didn't know what to say, the concept of what he was saying was pretty alien to her. Your desire for a mate is instinctual, to find a worthy partner with the best genes to ensure strong and healthy offspring. Your feelings toward me are more infatuation and admiration, not of love. Love is something else and I am willing to teach you. But there's something I'll have to do first. He said, walking toward her. And what is that? She asked, feeling herself get hot. Right now she could tell that the man before her was an apex predator, and he was going to take what he desired. He reached her and cupped her cheek. I will make you mine. He growled before pulling her in for a kiss and the general felt her body submit. Hours passed, Ichigo standing vigilant in the place where they first appeared on the island, waiting for either the portal to appear or for a flying steed. There was a rustling in the leaves as his death came out, her hair still wet from bathing in a freshwater stream and adjusting her clothes. She unashamedly displayed a dark hickey on her neck with a slight limp in her step as she went to his side, her hand slipping into his seamlessly. They remained silent and scanned the area, waiting for the time to be right. When Ichigo felt the rasure in that area dissipate, he resolved to get the matter done himself. Would likely move faster than any danger beast they could catch too. He took his hand out of his deathas and wrapped his arm around her shoulders, with her leaning into him before he swept her off her feet. Once firmly held in his arms, Ichigo started to float up and create a shield of rasure around them. He then released a massive pesquisa pulse and focused, waiting for a response. It took a few minutes, but he got the familiar sense of his subordinate's rasure and thus the general direction back to the capital. There was something else that caught his attention, in a region far to the east of the capital. A particularly unusual spirit for this world, not a Quincy or Hollow, but something else. Then that light suddenly dimmed, almost fading away. Eastern City of Kairok I was hoping to enjoy myself a bit more, but the Prime Minister apparently thought I needed to speed things up. A man said, dressed like a priest in fine robes and a wide hat. He had a thick chin curtain beard with two extending points on the sides of his chin, smiling cruelly at the other man in the room. A slender and pale man with long white hair, slumped over on a table with his eyes rolled to the back of his head and foam coming out of his mouth. Oh well, I'm sure I won't be too busy after I take over. You'll be deified and I'll have plenty of love to share with the lost lambs of your flock, or should I say, my flock. He said, laughing happily, as he went to enjoy himself with his the flock. Back with Ichigo. I should probably check that out at some point. Ichigo thought as he and his death flew through the night sky, accelerating a little bit more in response to the dimming light.